Williams Sass. Well, a special good morning to you, Grenada, Caracu, PD, Martinique, the rest of the Eastern Caribbean, to you, wherever you are. Welcome to this special, really special, it is day two of what is, in fact, the Arisa National Championships. And we want to say thanks for being part of this broadcast, a TNI communication production. And certainly we say thanks, thank you for joining us wherever you are. It's, it's early days yet, and certainly... As you can well appreciate, we the expectation is that we'll be having a really, really super packed stadium as the evening progresses. Uh, certainly, we want to say thank you as we look at the beautiful, pict picturesque um, settings here at the Kirani James Athletics Stadium. Let's give an appreciation as to how the day is going to be set as we speak. There we have events in the heptathlon, uh, specifically in the girls' long jump that's in progress, and we also have events in the octathlon uh, that's event number five that's you see some of that uh, we're expecting the girls long jump open the boys 100 meters hurdle yet to come and certainly we can see the teams making preparation for that and it promises to be a really really great day um we've seen mostly blue blue, blue skies as it is and certainly it augurs well for what is going to be a really really great day of athletics progress here at the kirani james athletic stadium and for those of you joining us as we said welcome to the Arisa Credit Union National Championships 2023. And we want to say thanks to Arisa for their support, their patronage of this really, really great event which serves really and truly as a precursor to the selection of the character teams. And certainly, not just for the character team, but certainly gives an appreciate, gives us an opportunity to highlight some of our really great, great talents uh, that has emerged over the years right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadiums. 
and the likes, of course, of the Arlene Francie, the Kirani James, um, the George Motang, and others are certainly Anderson Peters um, that have certainly put their name, not just their name, but Grenada on the map. To give an appreciation of what's happening today, it is about the clubs and teams. I know some of you, you probably might be thinking, so uh, there's a, some uh, 23 uh, teams participating. Um, some, of course, they've, they've combined it, but as we get, we got, we got some speed for day number two. Um, we just we can tell you that St. David's track blazers. Uh, in terms of points, they're up front. They've accumulated 73 points uh, thus far. South City Rising Stars, they've accumulated 66. 473 MVP, 45 points. Uh, finish Line Sports Club, 35 uh, Boca Secondary 6. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go through uh, the rest of the particulars as the day really progresses. It's promises to be a really, really fun full event. The first half of the day, uh, Session 1, there uh, should be a number of final events. Among the final events would be the Heptathlon, and which is actually is in progress, the long, long jump. Finals as well in the Octathlon. And in case you probably, to give you an appreciation, these are some of the um, new events that have been added as what has you can no doubt see say as a growing portfolio of events a growing us as we grow at track and field on the island um, so certainly that's you can we can expect that as we go as we go forward right so there's finals in, in those events uh, there's the boys this discuss throw among the other finals is the girls 100 meters dash on the 17 um, so it promises to be a really great day wherever you are. We certainly hope that you've planned your day quite well. Uh, for those of you probably just making your way from, from, from church and trying to head home maybe to have yourself your family family lunch and certainly hoping that you can spare your, yourself a couple hours in the afternoon. If not to be part of this broadcast as we hear, as I said, it's a TNR communication production. And we want to say thanks to the entire team, the entire kit and kibbutz that's here with us, ensuring that wherever you are, this broadcast comes to you with high quality. And certainly you can appreciate what's happening here at the National Stadium. It is day two. And later on, the man Leslie Smith is going to join us. And it promises me to keep you informed and up to date on what's happening here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Kirani James, among others, who at some point in time, would have graced us with their presence at these very grounds and this very meet here that would serve as a mecca um, for emerging talents, the birth of new heroes, and certainly, no, no doubt, as you look at the national, picturesque national stadium, we can't help but see shadows of, of course, of clouds just gracing us as they glaze across the field. Uh, but it promises to be really, 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 really great. I'll be looking at the sudden, the far sudden stand where you see a number of the athletes there, there. But it is early days yet. Uh, we're looking at, as we said, there is action that's going to that we're expecting in the the girls. That's in event number 43, the girls javelin throw on the 17. Um, among the, the, the lineup in there, there's Boca, Sass, McDonald College Trail, uh, tr Track Blazers. Um, so certainly we keep you informed, um, just to let you know who's representing who as they get ready for the, the continue that is in action in the under 17 girls. Um, we see up there, there is Azalea Francis from Boca, uh, Casey Charles representing SAS, uh, Kimora Andrew from McDonald College, Eski uh, Thomas from Track Blazers. And you can appreciate that what you get here is a mixture of clubs and schools in case you probably not to intimate with how the games are um so some at least while you may you may recognize them in certain uniforms but certainly some of them they are representing their tra their their clubs and not necessarily the school but i mean most people would, would argue that this augurs well for the growth of the club for athletics on the island uh, certainly you've seen over the years the emergence of a lot of clubs that allows for uh, the de developmental structure and the sort of planning that is needed at the club level and that is then augmented and supported by what's happening at schools and as such you can well appreciate so keep your eyes open you'll be hearing schools and clubs um of both schools and clubs as the evening progresses we'll update you as to exactly where some of the clubs are located they are the traditional clubs that we've we've come to 
to appreciate over the years the likes of the track blazers and other speed zones and certainly in more recent times we've seen the emergence of a number of other clubs uh, which actually provide support technical support um, definitely for a lot of the athletes and i think it is one of the elements that certainly that has helped to propel and grow the sports of track and field in more recent times and uh, we can tell you that as the governing body for track and field the Grenada Athletics Association they have certainly uh, concentrated their events in more recent times and a lot of the field events I mean certainly Grenada has held has, has held its own um, but what we if the attempt has been is to provide a more balanced support not just to what's happening on the track and certainly this, this has been evident in what we've seen over the years um, with the likes of Anderson Peters, uh, certainly who was really, really, really I mean, holding his own as a world leader, Commonwealth um, champion, and really, really has taken the world by storm. Pretty young, uh, certainly, um, but certainly what they have done in more recent times is to ensure that you get an, a more steady um, appreciation for these sports. Um, you would see also today the, um, the huddles, and that is one of the, 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 the events that has been slowly, gradually introduced into um, the listing of events that you'll find, not just here at the national, the national Championships, sponsored by Arisa. And certainly for Arisa, the, this is the sixth year they have been doing it since they have rebranded. That rebranding took place back in 2016. And one of the initiatives that they've added to the, today is that any athlete who breaks a record, they will receive $150 in cash, compliments a riser. So in, indeed, they not just throwing it out there in terms of, they're saying to the owners of the games, the Greater Athletic Association, but as an added incentive uh, to the athletes, they get $150 in cash, compliments a riser, and we say thanks to a riser. And certainly as the day progresses, we would be chit-chatting with some of the other principals, persons, within the organization that has come to make uh, this Arisa Credit Union National Championships that's what it is expected to be. So uh, the Suns is out, the technical team is here, um, Richie and the gang, Nazi on, on the inside, the entire kit and kibbutz, and certainly we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of this TNR communication production, and it promises to be a really, 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 really great day, and I hope wherever you are, you would share the link, you would tell a friend. And if you can't, we prefer if you can, you can come to the National Stadium. Uh, but to you outside of the region, wherever you are, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, we've seen activity on the field. Activity on the field, which is the event 43, uh, which is the girls under 17 javelin. And that is in progress at the time. We can tell you the game record. Uh, for this event was set by Surana Alexander and that was set that's a, a through a distance of 39.44 meters yes so so you can of course continue we see now the athlete there from SAS um, that is in the person of Cassie Charles uh, she just given it through we've seen we give it the distances in just a bit but um, for what's happening on the field, it's uh, it is a legal throw, and certainly you you want to appreciate because I know sometimes we can be critical of when we see uh, these sort of sort of performances. You want to get an appreciation of some of these these athletes. They some of them are, if no doubt, at the introductory stage uh, to the game, and certainly this part of a developmental process that would allow for the emergence of the likes of um, Anderson Peters. Um, the javelin certainly I know a lot of these young athletes they have been inspired they no doubt they have been inspired by the performance of Anderson Peters and what he has done to catapult um, javelin as an iconic sport not just a sport certainly but to be able to represent Grenada and uh, at an international regional local regional and international level and so then we want to say thanks to him, thanks to coach, the, the coach Paul, and all of the other teams at the personals and team members at the Green Union Athletics Association that have certainly come together to ensure that the sport, the, the event of javelin and others can become a sport that many athletes can inspire 
and no doubt Addison Peters has become an inspiration. You know, years ago, there was always a conversation of, of many athletes wanting to be like Kirani James. Yes, but certainly you can appreciate now that Javelin has now been brought into that conversation and you would really get an appreciation of what is it, the growth of the sport and some of the techniques, some of the, a lot of the athletes. As you can see that while the technique is not quite there, um, what you can appreciate though is that the interest, because that's how the sport is going to grow, it starts first with the interest and then that would be followed by getting the technique right. Uh, but certainly it's good that we've seen a number of young athletes, so these are the under 17s, a number of young athletes, are also expecting to be taken because the different events are taking place simultaneously and my team is going to assist me with that. Uh, there is also expecting to be um, the long jump. It's expected to be on at this time as well. Um, we will just, of course, for the, for the purpose of the my crew, they would help us to to confirm whether or not that is in the is is in fact the case, but we can tell you who you are following us here live. This is part of a TNR communication production. It is day two, uh, early days yet though, of the Arise Credit Union National Championship, and in progress, event number forty three, the girls javelin throw. It's in the, that's in the under seventeen category. Uh, the game's record being that of 39.44 meters, a record that's been held by, as held by Serena Alexander, yes, and that record was set last year. So, wherever you are, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We do want to, as we go through, we're going to share some of the results from yesterday. Yesterday was a, was a really extraordinary day. Um, here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, there's a number of records that were set, number of course, athletes being able to add their name to the history books. And you have to say for many of the athletes, while many would come, you know, it's not always about the gold or silver, but I remember my old principal would always say, the prize in fact goes to the one who wins it. Participation is key, being able to say that in the year 2023 at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, you, you were part of an event, you were part of the you were part of the national meet uh, put on it here by the well not just put on by the athletic association who is in fact um the parent organization that, that has given this sanctioned this of this this meet and given it their blessings uh, but certainly for a riser for again coming forward and throwing their financial support behind the meet Yes, so we're going to go through some of the you know, up-to-date from, from last evening. Um, we have um, St. David Track Blazer, they out front on 70, 73 points, and six falling close to behind, South City Rising Star. And again, most of these clubs, as you can well appreciate, um, it's a collection. What they have is a mixture of the athletes who represent different schools, and certainly... And if, if, I'm not, if my eyes are not playing tricks with me, I think that's not Coach Paul Phillip, I think I'm seeing on the field. I know Richie has a more, um, his lens are probably stronger than mine. He has, he has assistance. I'm not sure if that's, over, if that's deliberate or that's probably because of function of the times, age that is catching up with him. With me, I'm still just on my own, so I, <laughs> but I think that looks like Coach Paul that is there. And certainly he has done a really, 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 really phenomenal job in not just Anderson Peters, but getting garnering interest in the sport of javelin. And certainly we've come a really, really long way. Um, as I said, you want to say a really, really special, special thanks to TNR Communication, um, where you can have these sporting events with multiple camera setups that, al that allows us to be able um, to capture the events as it happens here. Uh, again, what you're looking at, event number 43, girls javelin throw in the under 17 category. Just to give an appreciation as to what are some of the events um, that is still in the pipe, immediate pipeline. There is the girls 400 meter dash under 17, uh, the boys in the equal distance under 17 as well. And these will come in a number of a number of, of, of preliminary events. 
and certainly we again we are going to try as best as possible to capture the sights the songs of everything the events as they play out here at the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium thanks to our officials thanks indeed to our, to our officials who are here and you can't help but noticing that the officials the supporting team of officials they rather look rather youthful themselves which is good i think the sport the organizers i'm assuming quite reasonably that they use the meet as an opportunity as an opportunity for to get some of these young um youngsters involved in it uh, what we're seeing there is the clock the condom clock that allows uh, within the time that they're allotted to make their attempt at the distance. Um, not much in terms of technique, as you can see, uh, but that's why Coach Paul is here. And certainly I would only appreciate that he would be taking notes, mental <laughs> mental notes, and also will be taking his notes on, a, on written notes so as to ensure that you can make the observations and certainly you can be able to say when the day is all over and done that you can say to these athletes, these are your strengths, these are your weaknesses and hoping that you can be able to improve on it. And certainly if you look at some of the athletes in terms of the approach to, to the javelin, their body language, you can certainly see that some effort, some, um, some bit of efforts and training is, has been part of the conversation. And again, but it is all part of a learning process. And certainly you would only hope that as time progresses and that they would continue to continue to develop themselves as we take track and field from one level to the next. Wherever you are, it's happening here live. This is live action here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is day two, session one of the Arisa Credit Union National Championship. I'm just going to share with you in just a bit some, um, in case you missed it yesterday, because certainly um, for Ariza, this their, their commitment um, to track and field. And I'm going to share with you in just a bit, just some excerpts um, from their open their speech that was delivery of yesterday, where they said um, Ariza Credit Union has been an avid supporter of sports and athletics in Grenada, and as such, we have partnered with entities and organizations throughout Grenada, Caracol, and Martinique to bring you the various sporting and athletics events. Certainly, Arise is happy for another consecutive year uh, to partner with the Grenada athletics, athletics Association as a title sponsor of the event. It continues to read that Arise is also about developing the whole individual, whether it be with prudent saving, lending, and investment products or the development of communities. And certainly, when we say the development of communities, what we see in here, their support to the national championship is what exactly is testimony to the development of communities. Um, they believe in the dreams that you as an individual and what we have to offer Grenada and the world. And so as I did intimate earlier, that is why over the next two days, starting with yesterday, that any athlete who, gives, who breaks a game, a game record we receive $150 compliments at Arisa Credit Union. Talk about incentives, you know. And I'm sitting, I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out what event, probably Richie, uh, the younger Oliver, or my support team, I don't know, Nazim. I can't ever remember Nazim. Have, I know he probably has given stories of his grandeur, his illustrious career at the Grenada Boys Secondary Schools. But believe me, honest, my memory serves me otherwise. You ever hear any such tales, folks, I'll be able to corroborate it whether or not he speaks the truth or not. But certainly, I can <laughs> bless you, Mr. Everything else. All the other stories you've, you've heard is, in fact, true. That of his athletics porous in his early youthful days, I'm not really quite sure. I'm not really quite sure. Maybe later, later on, Leslie Smith can boast of that. But again, reminding you, it's all happening here. We are looking at the first flight of events in, in day two of the... Arisa Credit Union, um, <laughs> Arisa Credit Union National Championships. We also seen line up on the blocks. We get it ready for what is expected to be event number forty-five, um, the girls' four hundred meters dash, and that is expected to be the first of what 
it's going to be two heats. Two heats, in, 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 in fact. So let me give an appreciation of the lane assignments. As we get ready for event number 45, the girls 400 meters dash in the under 17 category. And St. Joseph, St. St. Joseph and St. Andrew runs out of lane one at the person of Kena, Kenneth Phillip. Out of lane two for finish line is Camille Phillip. Uh, running out of lane four, Shafana Houston uh, for South City Rising Stars. And I said, if you keep in mind, yes, some of the names you're thinking, I, 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 know, I, know, I know the names. Yes, yeah, certainly um, she's today represent, will be representing her club and not necessarily the school again. So while we get ready for that event, uh, certainly simultaneously there is the javelin that is taking, that is taking place. But we're getting ready for heat one of two. And uh, certainly, and they're off a limited field, no doubt, as they go through the first 100 meters in what is heat one of four in the girls' 400 meters dash. As, and at, it is an, an event that certainly calls for technique, speed, a combination of both. And certainly, in more recent times, with the, ex, the exploits of Kirani James, you've seen a lot of athletes that certainly has been able to hold their own. Uh, we're looking at it. Um, with an early lead as they come down the back straight and run to just about the 200 meter mark. Um, running out of that's for running out of lane five, um, Kenya Joseph. And yes, no, sorry, that's from South City Rising Star, that's Shafana Houston. It is Houston literally walking away from the rest of the pack. And I mean, certainly you'll probably say that's just a warm up. Not just, this is really and truly what you call a walk in the park for her. Uh, she, she won that race comfortably there, running out of lane number four, Chiffon Houston. Uh, finishing in second place in the lane five is Kenya Joseph, that, and she ran out of lane number five. So that's just, that was the starting cast for, uh, for the girls' 400 meters dash. Uh, it was a heat one of two in the prelims. And certainly simultaneously, we can say to you that there are other events that are happening on the field. Um, seen some gesticulations. I'm not um, some signs of disgust. So we we give you now the official uh, results. Uh, Shafana Houston from South City Rising Stars uh, in you know, she stopped the clock in a time of 56.43 seconds. Maya Noel. Maya Noel in a time of one minute zero four point five two seconds, and you have Chandler uh, from Boca in a time of 1.06.63 seconds. Belle Vaughan for St. Joseph's Convent in Andrew, and she stopped the time, the clock, in a time of 1.13.09 seconds. So, uh, that was event number one. Uh, continued, there is an attempt from the athlete from SAS at the javelin, and from an, this is a foul throw, uh, but we're looking, and simultaneously, as we can appreciate, uh, we're giving the simultaneous events taking place at uh, this time. But we are also getting ready for Heat one, 2 of 2. And this is an event number 45, the girls 100 meter dash. In case you're probably just joining the broadcast, it is the Arise of Credit Union National Championships. This is day 2, season 1. And we're coming to you live from the Karate James Athletics Stadium. Um, bathing sunshine here at the National Stadium. It sets a tone for what isn't it? just a slight cloud cover, which all goes well for for at, athletics. I'm not sure my camera crew would probably be agreeing with me. <laughs> They'd probably be saying, ah, no, JC, no, JC. It is a really warm one out here. And again, you can't help but noticing that there are a number of um, lane assignments that's not being occupied. Um, you can obviously see in that lane three and lane four. Um, Again, you've seen quite a decent attempt there, uh, just on just under 30 meters or so. And uh, the athletes, um, again, we want to. We, as you said, a lot of these athletes they are they are young, and it's their way of introducing themselves to what, in fact, could be as they use the games. Where, as we said, heroes would be would be heroes would be on would would would, would be unveiled, and we'll be see we'll see some budding talents. But we hear. The athletes, they are being called to the status order. 
Again, we have out of lane number seven from Boca, Amelia Chandler. Um, lane six. And they are officially off. It's an even start in heat two of two in the girls' 400 meters dash. Uh, just four, just a complement of four athletes. Um, so certainly, as they bunch together quite evenly as they head down the back, they head down the back stretch. Um, what is the technique going to be? Um, out of lane number eight, we see an athlete there from MVP. Um, 47 M M M M that's Emma McIntosh making an early run for it as they get to the top just about the 200 meter mark is the girls 400 meters dash in the under 17 category the game's record 55.50 seconds as they head to the top of the 100 meter mark we continue to look out of lane number one out of lane number one it is McIntosh uh, but looking to try to claw her way back on the outside, running in the middle of the pack. Uh, yes. And we have often said, so that was athlete running of lane number four from, uh, that's Tamara Thomas. And the question has always been, what is the strategy, the strategy going, going to be? Uh, so we look at the official, official result as it's, so from, from in first position, Ken Joseph from Boca Secondary School, Emma McIntosh from MVP, and, and Kayla McIntyre taking up the third position. The question is always going to be, what is this? What is the strategy? And the experts, they will, they will always argue. Some athletes, they may have the speed. Some may, may probably have a combination. Because the 400 meters is in no, is in no doubt. And you wouldn't take my, my records in it as, as any, anything to speak about. Uh, but certainly, you, it, it takes a combination of stamina and speed and technique, no doubt. As uh, some athletes, they get it right; they start with an outburst. Others, they conserve for the final, for the final, for the final kick. Yes. Um, so there you have it. We continue. That was the the completion of the second heat. As we get ready for heat three of five, another flight of young ladies in this one. Um, heat three of five. It is the girls' 400 meters dash under 17. As you say, thanks to you wherever you are for being part of this broadcast, a TNR communication, and certainly we say thank you for being part of this really, 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 really exciting exercise. Um, the Arisa Credit Union National Championship, um, a championship that is, that serves as the benchmark benchmark for qualification for character. Um, so for the athletes, it's not just about the incentives of the of the one hundred and fifty dollars as as provided to to them by Ariza for breaking a record, but it's certainly seeing how they can get their name on the mark. So we, let's look at the lane assignment from lane number seven from Bolt. It is Charles. No, let's make sure we get this one right. So lane number seven is occupied, is, number six is empty. We have an athlete in lane number five, four, and three. Again, we're noticing that some of the, the, the lanes have not necessarily been, they're not necessarily occupied by athletes. Uh, but let's look at the lane assignments. Sharice Alexander runs out of lane number three. Um, that's for, for, for St. Joseph's Convent and Andrew. Uh, Tamia Thomas, she occupies lane number four. Monique Benders uh, runs out of lane number seven as they get called on to, right, to the status order. It is lane th event three of five. And uh, let's see what this was the technique going to be. Athletes in number, lane number five still settling herself. They seem all nicely settled. A bit of agitation, agitation there out of lane number three. The officials, they survey the field and they are officially off. Nice, soft, easy start as they pedal away down the, down the back stretch. And the athlete there out of first night, uh, bolt out of lane number seven, taking quite an early lead on the task on the field. Also there in the middle out of SAS as we continue to, to as they complete but certainly out front, motoring away as she goes past the just about the 200 meter mark for what seems as though, all, all, quite honestly, is going to be an early and easy, easy, easy victory for her. 
as she hit the top bend to make her way home. Running of yes, that's running out of lane number two. Um, of lane number two, uh, Jaquan Knight, and here she, she she's making her way home, and certainly easy win as it as it comes. She's tiring a bit as she comes up. She pulls up there, running of lane number seven. That's a bolt out ready for bold and there you have it a completion of heat three of five and i'm going to give it the details as to exactly so to the top one the first one in each heat you get an automatic automatic qualification and then they will take the next top the next best the others would qualify based on time they qualify based on time so we look looking now at the results, events number 45, and stopping the clock there in the first position, Camille Telesford in a time of 1.038 seconds. And certainly, um, these events are quite a bit slow and compared to what the game's records are, the game's records, well, what the game's records, records are, and certainly what's the qualification mark for, for character. Uh, but from as you said, it allows these athletes to be come out here uh, some they may have greater aspiration than others um, some might be thinking what's happening tomorrow others they just using it as a preparation for intercall yes intercall um, that is on its way but we're getting ready we're moving out to the boys 400 meters the boys 400 meters dash in the under 17 category event number 46 we're looking at the lane assignments in lane number two, Cameron Matlin for MVP. Then lane number four is occupied is by Colon Moses. Um, Ruben Labastita, it's in Labastita. Ta is runs out of lane number five. And Leon Phillip runs out of lane number six. Your lane assignments, as you can see, the other two lanes there. Again, another limited feel, limited feel, and certainly as to why that is the case, we will never be quite sure, but it's another limited feel. This one just three athletes I've seen so far. Athlete there in lane number two. So lane number two is occupied, lane, so too is lane, num lane number five. Again, reminding you that the top athlete, the, from each of the heat, they would qualify automatically in the case of the boys, the next three best times, they would, or they would fill up the rest of the fields for the finals. Nice warm day here at the q and James Athletic Stadium. It is day two, session one of the Arise of Credit Union National Championships done here at the q and James Athletic Stadium. Um, what we're looking at is we're getting ready for the the boys 400 meters dash on the 17 but happening taking place simultaneously um, there is action in the girls javelin um, we also were expecting um, action in the octathlon and the boys which will start with the boys 110 meters hurdle but what we can see right now it's we get it ready for the start of event number 46 as we hear the athletes being called, put being put under the status orders, running the lane six, five, four, and two. Leon, F it's Leon Phillip running out of six for VTC. Uh, La Bastita, Track Blazer runs out of four. Yeah. In the person of Kelon Moses. Walker runs out of. And they are off, quite an early start, easy start for them at four athletes as they make their way. Let's see who will take the early charge as they head down, they head down the back stretch, running out of lane number three. It's athletes there from Borca. Um, so they head down the back stretch, um, evenly spread as they head to the top 200 meter mark. It's the 400 meters boys as they take the top bend and they make their way for home. It's quite an easy run there for the athlete running out of lane number four. Running out of lane number four, and that would be Colin Moses from Track Blazer. 
as quite just stretching and easing up as he comes towards the finish line. Running out of lane number four as Young Moses for Track Blazer as they come and just cross on the line out of lane number five for VTC. So there you have it, the completion of event number 46, event one of five. And certainly uh, to let you know that the, the top athlete will get an automatic qualification uh, as we look at the official finish, the official times for the, for the for that that event, it was Keylon Moses, 50.13, Cameron Matlin, um, 52.53, and Ruben Lavista. He stopped the clock in a time of 55.27 seconds. Um, Leon Phillip, he he he, he got there in a time of. One minute, zero four point nine four seconds. We continue in action done here at the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium, wherever you are. Uh, we look, we also getting ready for action in the discus, the discus throw. And certainly it's an, uh, it's an event where the likes of Josh Bortung and others, uh, they have certainly, some say it's all about strength, some say technique, some say it's a combination of both. Um, and you would, you would definitely want to appreciate that in each of these different sporting disciplines, there is technique as well as strength that is needed. But getting ready for heat two of for heat two of event number forty six, in lane number one. Uh, Jerry Stafford uh, Stafford occupies lane number one. Then we have Quinell Pierre. He occupies. Quinnell Pear runs out of lane number three. Lane number four is occupied by Kyle Ned. Number five, Carlson Andel. Lane six, Shem Smith. And that's going to be the completion of the lane assignments for what is going to be event number 46. Heat two of five in the boys under 17. In the boys under 17, um, 400 meters dash. Again, reminding you that the game's record, 47.10 seconds, set by the man himself back in 2018, Kirani James. We did continue to say to you that the sport, of course, it, it gives a platform for young talents and for the Britain place of some national heroes. Only time will tell. It's lane six, five, four, and three. As they get ready for the officials, as has asked the Athletes to take to assume they stand in position. I'm not sure what is it they're not satisfied with, but certainly it's within the rights of the officials to ensure that everybody that everything meets their standards as as they continue to ensure they execute their roles and responsibility and maintaining the high standard of the games. For those of you that's just joining us, thank you. This is part of a TNI communication, and you're looking at action here in the 400 meters. It's the Arisa Credit Union National Championships. And we get it ready for Heat 2. They under under the status orders. Lane 3, 4, 5, and 6. We're looking at Shem Smith, Carlson Andel, Kyle Ned from Altitude. And they are off. We're looking at Lee there. It is R Shem Smith running out of 6. Boca is in lane number five. Altitude, Kyle Ned. Quanell Pear running runs out of three. And Jared Stafford for South City Rising Star. As they're mortal down the back stretch. Uh, it continues there. Out of lane number three. It is Quanell um, Pear from 47th MB, M, MVP. Uh, but certainly as a head to towards the 200 meter mark, uh, 150. And they head for home. We're looking at them shoulder to shoulder. It is right in the middle of the pack. It is Quanel Pear and Kyle Neff, MVP and Altitude together. Who would it be? Um, we have uh, Pear is, Quanel seems to have gotten it there. And uh, certainly Pear seems to have tied just a bit as we saw that. We just saw the completion there of Heat 2 of 5 and the event number 46. The boys won 400 meters dash. Also happening simultaneously, 
So we look at the official. Yes, this is the official um, results. Quanel Peer from of MVP in a time of 51.85 seconds. Kyle Ned, um, 52.47. Jared Stafford, 54.86 seconds. Shen Smith, and he stopped the clock in a time of 58. Point three one seconds, and the record in this one set by Kirana James back in 2018, 47 point, 47 point one zero seconds. So certainly, um, compared to the great Kirana James, Z, you know, the Jaguar, um, they're a bit off the pace, but certainly these games, it serves as a melting pot that allows for the exposure and emergence of new talents. Some athletes, they may have the technique, right? They may have the interest. And certainly, um, what you'll be hoping is that as the coaches work with them, they would be able to develop on the technique, develop on, on strength, and certainly would be able to make a name for themselves. And not just for themselves, but their clubs, ultimately, schools, and the country. Um, country. We get ready another flight in heat three or five, as we look at the lean assignments. Again, we're noticing quite a as a small pack that is here. They're running out of four, five, six, and seven. Four, five, six, and s four, five, six, and seven. Lean assignment for the upcoming event heat three of five. Running out of lean, the lean assignment. Aiden McIntosh. Um, certainly, and you know why he runs for M. He runs for MVP. He's from the Presentation Brothers College. Daron Sincere is in five out of seven. It is Anderson Charles for Bold. And you get into your lane assignments for Heat three or five, and these are prelims. Heat three or five of prelims. When in the lane number four, we have Anderson, Aiden McIntosh. Represented runners, Jeremy Phillip runs out of lane number three as they are under the status orders. Lane four, five, six, seven. McIntosh, Sincere, Purcell, and Charles as they off to an early start in the boys under 17, 400 meters as they more to make the way down the back stretch. Down the back straight, in the middle of the pack, we see from MVP, it is Aiden McIntosh. Let's see as they stretch the field, it is McIntosh there. Um, as they get to the 100 meters mark, as they say, that's where you separate the men from the boys, indeed. And that's the lane number three. It is, it is, yes, that's Philip. As he's pulling away, quite an easy race for him as he makes his way down the track out of lane number four. It's an easy win there for Aiden McIntosh. And for a lot of these athletes, it's about bragging rights. Um, while some of them, they are actually competing against other schoolmates and they are competing against competing schools. Um, so for them, for some, it's about bragging rights, being able to say to, 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 to their competitors, listen, I got you at the national champs coming to call. You know what? I have. We have. We have a score to settle. So the official time yet still off the 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 off the meet record. Uh, but congratulations to Aiden McIntosh um, in the time of 52.26 seconds. Darren Sincere 57.04. Anderson Charles in the time of one minute 06.59 seconds. The completion there of event number 46 heat three of five three of five and so they again reminding you that the top um, the winner of each heat would advance automatically and they'll take the next five based on times so remember it's not just you're not just running against your competitors you're running against the clock because uh, the rest they go through based on times lane assignments for event heat four Event number 46, as uh, Shaman Andrew runs out of lane number three. Um, Nicholas Frederick for Boca occupies lane number four. Kobe Thomas, Sass, 
He runs out of lane number five. Kean Douglas for South City Rising Star runs out of lane number six. Again, another reduced field. Number reduced field as to, um, it will be interesting to, to get the determination as to why that is in fact the case. But it's yet another reduced field as we get ready for the start of heat four or five. Event number 46. It's the boys, 400 meters dash. And they are officially off. Sunny so so is that. Um, as we look at the athletes, you have Sass. Kirby is in lane five. Um, Nicholas Frederick runs out of four. Uh, for Shaper, Shaman Anderson lanes runs out of three. As they, they motor their way down the back stretch. Who is it going to be? As we watch them stretching themselves, you see a variation in ta ta technique and style. Uh, but as they get to just about the 400 meter mark, uh, running there out of lane number four, out of lane number four for altitude, it is. It is for altitude, and that's with really the person of Darren Sincere. Uh, quite an excellent run, strong effort um, from him, and certainly pull away from the crowd. An easy win there for the athlete of lane number f number four. Um, again, my apologies for out of lane number four. That uh, should have been Nicholas Frederick. Uh, we look for the official times. Yes, Nicholas Frederick out of lane uh, running for Boca in a time of 51.92 seconds. Um, Shaman Andrew, he stopped the clock at 55, 54.23 seconds. For two, three seconds, uh, Kobe Thomas and Sass, 56.35, and Kian Douglas of South City Rising Star, 57.36. Again, we want to say thanks to, you can't help but noticing the amount of clubs, the emergence of a number of clubs across the island. And I know the Grenada Athletics Association, they might be, might be tapping themselves on the shoulder and saying we're doing a, we're doing a great job. Uh, but simultaneously, while we entertain, we see action on the track. There's also action on the discus that's being participated in um, simultaneously. And the athletes that's at the far end, uh, as we continue to provide you with the latest of actions, we're looking now at the lane assignment for event number 46, heat f five of five. Out of lane number two, Torbus Samuel, um, AB, who runs out of lane number two, lane number five, uh, Tevin Duncan Grapp. There is um, Bayam Griffith running out of lane number seven. And of lane number eight is uh, Quill Charles. Well, my apologies, but just, there's no, just the Quill call does not um, satisfy the criteria for this one. So, three athletes. VTC, South City Rising Star, and, and Young Bayam. Three athletes for this one. Running of lane number two, five and six. The next event on the field, it's Heat 5. This is the last field, the, the last flight of events for lane number five. For event number 46, and what is in fact the prelims. Running out of lane number two, VTC. Um, that is Samuel occupying lane number five. It's Duncan, Grappy Duncan, and completing the lineup out of lane number seven, it's Byron Griffith. Your lineup for event five of five. And Heat, that's event, Heat five of five, event number 46. Again, we want to welcome you to what is session number one. Day number two of the Arisa Credit Union um, National Championships and certainly early days yet. And the ante anticipation is as, as the evening wanes on that, you know, a lot of persons that, that are home, they would probably make their way to the Kirana James Athletic Stadium, if not just for the excitement of the athletics poorest as expected here, but probably just to support um, a friend, a family, or just to be part of the excitement here as they get on the status orders. Running out of lane number two, five and seven. Lane number two, five and seven. It's the final 
Heat, a five of five. It is Samuel, Duncan, and Griffith. It's, let's see, as early days yet, as they head down the back stretch. Yeah, I'm running out of lean number seven. Um, you have Samuel making an early run for it. Um, but let's see, as they head to just about the 200 meters, meet, 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 meet of mark. And so to remind you simultaneously, we have the girls javelin that's taking place um, to the top or just about under the 200 meters, meet, meet, meet of mark. But let's see, as they straighten up for the two, as they head home for the final 100 meters, let's see who is it going to be out of lean number seven. Um, lean number seven, um, we have there, it is the track blazers, but we in the middle of the pack as they fade away into the finish line, finishing there in lean number five uh, for South City Rising Stars. It looks as an official win there for Grappy Duncan. Yes? Yes. So Tevin Grappy Duncan from South City Rising Star, 57.47. Um, Griffith, 59.59. And Toby Samuel Abbey in a time of 1 minute 01.22 seconds. The final event for the final race, the final heat, the, in fact, of event number 46, uh, certainly. And it's interesting. Folks come to the stadium for different reasons, yes. Some a little bit, probably still tired, yeah. And it, it's always just when you come to this public gathering, folks seem to be distracted by all sorts of different things, you know. But they're pacing themselves for what is going to be a long evening. Uh, but as we look at action there in the... I wonder if somebody's going to WhatsApp me, send me a message and say, Hey, JC, I'm following you. And thanks to Richie and the rest, and the rest of the team. But we also simultaneously looking at action in the Discuss. We go back to action in the Discuss. And it is the Discuss through on the 17 boys. And discuss through on the 17 boys. And that's taking place right now. Um, again, it's another event that has added some, it has been added to the aspiration list of many young athletes, thanks to the likes of Josh Borton and others. In more recent times, um, you've seen a growing interest in some of these, those other disciplines. Yes, but it is day two, session number one if, of the Arisa Credit Union National Championship. And we're looking now at the discus throw that's taken place uh, quite uh, just at that, that throw, just probably about 26 or so, just on, on the 30 meter mark. And certainly we will continue to monitor. Well, the horns, they're out, supporters are out in their MVP t-shirts and other, um, other regalia that they would use. And certainly we can tell you as the evening, as the evening stretches on, matches on, uh, there's no doubt that's going to be quite a growing. The crowd is going to swell um, as you get later in. Supporters, no fan, Fusion, MVP, everybody's early, early days yet. And but certainly we see the colors, the horns, they're out. And it's, it's setting itself up to it's going to be what, in fact, is going to be a really magical evening, a really magical evening of track and field here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Um, certainly, that throw would not qualify. That throw would not qualify. Yeah, the frenzy and the excitement of being here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. And certainly, there's, 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 there's a... There is a, a fervor for athletics. You know, no doubt that the, the last two years, two and a half years, with, interco with the COVID pandemic, that certainly folks have, they were waiting that with childlike anticipation for the moment when you can just come just to relax and be part of the excitement here at the Arisa National Championships. Uh, looking at the discus throw, Again, throw just shy of the 30 meter mark. It is a legal, it is a legal throw, uh, but that one seems to shy of the 30 meter mark there. 
um, as we continue here. Again, to remind you, in case you wondered where, um, what is where the different clubs and schools they are lined up, and the official points table, Saint David Track Blazer. Um, as we start day two, they are at seven seventy-three points. South City Rising Star sixty-six, um, four seven three MVP forty-five points. Finish Line Sports Club um, thirty-five points. Boca sixteen points. Ace, 13 points, and Fusion Athletics, 9. Um, Altitude Track Club, that's ATC, they also are 9. Velocity Track Club, VTC, on 7 points. McDonald College, 6. And again, we discuss through another of the emerging, and I shouldn't necessarily say emerging, because discuss has always been part of the suite of um, events but what of course you've noticed is a greater trust um, not just by the athletics association but by the production team to allow us and allow you at home to be part of that growing conversation and that you're able to see it and again we say thanks to uh, TNR communications for uh, certainly uh, the investments that's been made um, to ensure that you at home and that the focus is not just on the track, but it is in fact what's happening in the field as well. Again, here, and uh, that is quite a healthy throw, uh, quite a healthy throw, um, has the officials to go to, they give us the official marking in just a bit, but um, for more, is that a red flag? Yes, no. And I, did, I didn't get the official response from the from the officials, uh, but it seems like a healthy throw in terms of distance as to whether or not it was a legal throw, and that would be a separate conversation. But again, we continue to bring you live action here at the Kirana James Athletics Stadium. It is session one, day number two of the Arisa um, Credit Union. Um, Arisa Credit Union. We are getting ready for action that's going to be in the event number 47. It's the girls' 100 meters dash. And that's among the events sets up next. We'll be looking at three flights in event number 47. There's a girls' 100 meters dash. And it's all happening live here at the Kirana James Athletic Stadium. It's the Arisa National Championships. And certainly it serves as the benchmark for selection to the into character teams the lane assignments make uh, Micaiah Cyrus runs out of lane number one Peyton Batiste occupies lane number three uh, Judea Edwards runs out of lane number five um, Leah Rose Charles occupies lane number six and lane number seven is Riley Phillip Riley Phillip um, from VTC your lane assignments, lane 7, 6, 5, um, 2, and 1. Your lane assignments for the upcoming event on the fee on, on screen. We want to say thanks to the likes of some of the other supporters, Powerade Huggins, and certainly while Ariza is the primary sponsor of, is, is the title sponsor of the event, certainly you can well appreciate an event of this magnitude. There would be the supporting cast and among them uh, being Huggins and Powerade uh, through the Grenada Bottling, Bottling Company. Again, they are under the status orders as they await, they await the start of the next event. It is Cyrus Batiste, and they are off. It's an early start, a bit of a flutter there in the middle, uh, but running there quite nicely out of lane number six it is for it's Leros Charles and crossing the line in second place there from all occasions of lane number three as the athlete there from South City Rising Star um, but we wait for the official start but unofficially it seems to be the athlete from South St. George yes it is the athlete from South St. George Government School Leros Charles Leo Ch Yes. So the official the official time on this one 
and Leah Rose Charles from South St. George Government School in a time of 14.34 seconds, and Peyton Batiste, 16.23 seconds, and Rayleigh Phillip of VTC, that's Velocity Track Club, in a time of 16.62, and Micaiah Cyrus, 16.64, and Bolts, the athlete from Bolt, that's Young Edwards, stopping the, 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 the clock in a time of 17. Point seven seven seconds. It's the Arizona National Champs right here inside here at the QN James Athletics Stadium. Bathe in glorious sunshine down here at it. I want to remind you for those of you wherever you are, yes, it's a bit really warm on the outside. So you want to make sure that you're hydrated. Um, I can see that um, with the exception of well, Richie's now as I speak, you know, he's kind of going to have a few gobs of water. <laughs> a few gobs of water. Folks, you have to stay hydrated. You really and truly have to stay have to stay hydrated. We'll be looking for the next event. It's two of five as it's the girls under seventeen. Micaiah George. It is George, Philip, Ned, Walker. Who is it going to be? As the limit of agitation, yes, and I'm not surprised you some have always argued whether or not these younger athletes, whether they should be penalized in any way. Does it add to the um, the anxiety, the the butterflies and the jitters that you can really appreciate? And there are others that say, you know what, you may as well get them into it from a quite an early age so that they can appreciate exactly what the sport has to offer. Yelena Simons is they they running out of it is Micaiah George. Early even start as they make their way in the girls' 100 meters dash. We're looking out there in lane number two. It is Micaiah George, and she's stretched there by the athlete at lane number four from board. It is, is Karina um, Phillip. We'll see what the official result is. Um, certainly, they, they, looked, they, they, made it, they, looked, they looked a bit petite. But certainly they're on the 7-Eleven, as you can well imagine. But for speed, well, I show, I'm not going to even try to race with any one of them. It is official. Out of lane number one, it was Micaiah George. that stopped the clock in a time of 14.52 seconds. Um, young Philip from Bolt, 14.53. And the Quanet Ned in a time of 15.51 seconds. Yes, there we have Samuel from Salt City. Rising start, 16.20 seconds. And Adina George, she stopped the clock in a time just on the 16 seconds. We are continuing here. And certainly, uh, you can appreciate nice photo for this a tight one that went down to the line. I want to say to you folks that we're not just flirting with the technology. We have it on full display. And certainly uh, what you're seeing here is the growth of athletics that we've taken it to a new level um, that certainly that can give you an appreciation the way we can say that here at Grenada that we do have the quality that allows us to, to compete on the technology aspect that is with the best that there is out there. Certainly we have the best like Anderson Peters and Kiranda James on the track and in the field. Anything less technologically would be undesirable and certainly again we say thank you and this is a tnr communication production and we say thanks to the team thanks to ariza thanks to all that have come on board to ensure the success of this event the lean assignments as it is the under well, okay okay uh, well, uh, well, I can see the confusion there. Um, <laughs> I was interested at his age. I've always, always told him, my old principal used to say, well, listen, once you hear the gun, keep running until, it, until you're told that you're told to, to stop. But in, in no arguments, there was, in fact, an infringement. There was infringement, at, um, I think it was the athlete that I saw. Uh, but the officials, they, they would take care of that. Uh, but certainly, I, you could well imagine for these young athletes, uh, the agitation that there is as to whether or not they will be penalized, I'm not really quite sure. Uh, but Rihanna Hosford runs out of lane number one. Arena Francis 
is in two. Zaria Barrett occupies lean number five. And Zaria Abraham in seven. Uh, Carrier Joseph runs out of lean number eight. Your lane assignments for the upcoming event. It's the girls under 11. Under 11. Um, 100 meters. Let's see how this one pans out as they continue. They make their way down. It's an even start. And um, you see muscles. They're stretching. We're looking at the athlete out there in lane number one. Literally motoring away in the outside lane in lane number one. And that's young Hosford. And certainly, I mean, she looks she look like, like a young pocket rocket. No doubt. I mean, in terms of size, she's the smaller of the bunch. Uh, but suddenly she motored away as she running there out of lane number one. Um, that was Rihanna Hosford. Yes, Hosford from Track Blazer at a time of 14.93 seconds. And um, Zaria ba um, Barrett of MVP Club, she stopped the clock in 16.33 seconds. And event number 47, it's the Horizon National Championships 2023. And again, could we say thanks to Arisa and all of the other supporting cast for making this meet what it is. Again, Arisa as part of an incentive. They will be offering $150 to any athlete who breaks a record. Yes, to break that breaks a record. And against we've seen there the photo finish. Um, young Hosford on the outside. She was in full flight. Um, she literally took off like as 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 a concord and foot on the pedal. She motored away and to stop the clock there in a time of 14.93 seconds. We're getting ready for another event. It should be event number event number 48. The boys 100 meters dash. A record in this one, 14.49 seconds. The lane assignments. It's for speed zone. Christopher, Christopher Marshall runs out of lane number two. Nestled in lane number four is Jonathan um, Labrie. In five, Shavin Cockburn ran another out of five. Isaiah Samuel occupies lane number six. Um, Alonzo Mitchell, he's nestled in lane number seven. And Tyler Clark occupies lane number eight. It's the lineup for event number 48. Um, the first flight in what would be the flight of three. It's the boys' 100 meters dash on the 17. And the record, games record, set by Christian Lessie, that was set back in the year 2019 at the time of 14.49 seconds. Yes? You are just again to give you the lineup. It is Marshall, Theodore, when there is Slabbery, Bain, Mitchell, and Clark. Your lane assignments um, for the upcoming event, event number 48, is the boys' 100 meters dash. It's all happening inside of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is day two, session number one of the Arisa. Again, we want to say thanks to Arisa as the title sponsor of the event, together with all of the supporting cast. And that's making this event what it is. And it's always good you've seen the growth of athletics. Um, the athletes, they, 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 they're introduced quite early with the right gears for the event as they go under status orders. Under the status orders, it's going to be Christopher, Library, Bain, Mitchell, Clark. As they under status orders, they... And they are officially off. It's a clean start. Um, who is it going to be? We look at an at athletes. They're in the middle of the pack. It's going to be Labrie. Uh, but right there, more turn away. Right of lane number four. It's a victory there for lane number four for, for Labrie. Running for Club Fusion. So, uh, Jonathan Labrie for Club Fusion. And certainly we say congratulations to the young man. And you've owned your rights to pump your chest and say, I've done it. And again, we say, congratulations. Um, he stopped the clock in a time of 13.88 seconds. Um, 
Now, if in fact that that time stands, if in fact it, it stands, then it means it should be a game's record. Uh, the game's record, the record, the game's record being that of 14.49 seconds. Um, we'll see whether or not it stands, and certainly whether or not he can cash in on his $150 that's been promised. Well, yes, it is in fact a new record. Yes, in fact, and it is a new record. Yes, we just get the official confirmation there. As I said, if it did stand, congratulations to him. A new record uh, being set by Jonathan Library in a time of 13.88 seconds. Yes, so congratulations. He's he's checked his he's checking account or maybe his current account has just has just moved a bit by $150, no $150, no doubt. His bank account has moved. Um, congratulations to him. We continue in its event number 48. We're looking for the second flight of boys. We the lane assignments, Ishmael Charles. Um, Brian Stevens running for South City Rising Star. Um, Perryman runs for Bolt in lane number three. Straker is in four. McFarlane in five. Park in six. Uh, Gunport is in seven. And Christian, now it's Christian, runs off lane number eight. Your lane assignments. Let's get at the official lane assignments. Um, Stevens runs out of two. Um, Randy Jr. Perryman runs out of lane number three. Um, Caden McFarlane is in five. Sean Parks is in six. Ethan Gunpot runs out of Gunpot runs out of lane number seven. And Nas Christian occupies lane number eight. Your lane assignments for the next event on the field. It is event number forty-eight. It's second flight of what is expected to be a flight of three in the boys' 100 meters dash. Uh, we saw a record being set in the previous event there um, by Labrie. Congratulations to him. A time of 13.88 seconds. Congratulations to him. So the only lane that is empty, it's Matt Farlin. That's lane number five. That's the only lane that is empty. Well, lane five and lane one is empty. And again, we've seen the feather banners fluttering in the wind. It's a gentle breeze uh, here at the National Stadium. Um, it's mostly, as we look at the skies, mostly gray with just a few patches, mostly blue, sorry, with a few patches of gray that provides just the adequate cloud cover from the direct assault of the midday sun uh, down here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Yes, it is session number one, session one, the morning session of the Arisa, Arisa National Championships here at the National Stadium. Um, we see the next batch of boys, they are in the wait. I'm not quite sure, they seem quite relaxed, I'm not sh sure um, what the officials, what the delay might be. Uh, but certainly, you'd, I think the official may want to be conscious of the time that there is a smooth rollout. We already can say to you that there's a bit of a delayed start. Um, but let's hope that we can, as they go through the day, we can do whatever it takes to get the schedule back on course by way of magic or pressure by way of doing what needs to get done on the field. So... What are we changing lanes? Um, but again, for those of you that's joining us wherever you are, we say thanks for being part of the broadcast. It's a TNR communication production uh, here um, for this, the 2018 2023 um, version edition of the Arisa um, Credit Union. Um, okay, so that we shift in. Changing the lanes, or you just getting a new number tag. Whatever it is, again, we want to say thank you. Um, whether you're auntie, uncle, it probably while you probably enjoy the broadcast. If you're outside of Grenada, then you're excused. For everyone else, we certainly say that you need to make your way to the national stadium. And again, as a young athlete, stay under the status orders. 
and they are off. Let's see, who is it going to be? We're looking at the athlete there, motoring away out of lane number three. And uh, that's the look as Pilgrim. Uh, he's literally motoring away all by his lonesome self. Uh, that should be Pilgrim. Pilgrim out of lane number three, uh, representing South, South St. George. Yes. Um, we get the official. Yeah, I mean, you've earned it. You've earned it. Yeah. You, you have indeed earned it. He has indeed earned it as we look at So the official the official time for you, official time, it's Randy Junior Perryman, representing the club Bolt. Uh, he started the clock in the time of 13, 14, sorry, when one zero seconds. Gunpot, 14.72. Um, Niles Christian, 14.85. Caden McFarlane, 14.94. And Brian Stevens, who S, at South City Rising Stars, in the time of 15.69, and VDC represented by Sean Park, 15.81. Again, it's all happening here inside of the Kirani James, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is session one. It is the Ariza National Championships, and certainly that's been brought to you in the, in, the, in in all of its glorious colours and spectacle. Um, by we say thanks to TNR Communication for the glorious job that's been done. As we get ready for, we look as they under the status orders. Status orders. So what is expected to be another really, 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 really great run. Um, well, I thought for a while, there seemed to be a bit of a confusion. Well, not by all the athletes. Um, not for the athlete that's in lane number three. That's more to in a way. Um, some seem to have gotten the sense that there wasn't... Well... I'm looking at the field, and well, no doubt there's there is some. I can see some inquiring faces on these under 11 athletes, because I, for one, sure thought I got the call that there should be a recall. In fact, they are. Um, in fact, they are. That sh should be a recall of that of that event. Where we're gonna wait the official response from from the from the team on the field, uh, but suddenly there is a recall, and those are sort of some something that makes you wonder. Because even some of the athletes, um, even once some of them were running, there was one athlete that actually stopped immediately, and others while they were running, there's a bit of a jitter um, as to exactly what's happening. Um, look into the bottom side of the screen. We seem to be getting ready for what would be the long jump or triple. I'll just double check my, to confirm what exactly. But what we are providing you here is a complete. Yeah, what you're getting is a complete commentary as, and coverage, that is, of the multiple events as, as they happen here at the Kiwana James Athletic Stadium. We see the jumping pit, yes. So we the jumping vit pit at the bottom of a screen is coming into view, and as I said, what we continue to do is to provide you multiple coverage uh, simultaneously of the events as it happens here at the Kiwana James Athletic Stadium. Um, I'm not sure what the official response is going to be, T, but I've seen the athletes they. We seen well, so we seen as though we'll be moving on to another batch, another event. Not sure what the official word on from the field is, um, whether or not it's going to be maybe it should be a rerun of the event, or the event is is being removed, is being cancelled all by itself. Um, but you can no doubt nice picturesque view there of. The Kiranda James Athletic Stadium. We say thanks to uh, TNR Communication, the GoPro, yes, and certainly giving you quite an expansive view of the National Stadium, establishing view as it is. 
So we move in on to another field. It's that should be, I would think, should be the girls under 13. And so official start, we get the status list for you. Uh, but we have it out in the middle. Attack field, um, Sydney, but Mortuary on the outside trying to claw her way back out of lane um, number seven. The athlete there from lane number seven. I just need to get a confirmation as to which batch that was. Um, it should be from their looks, should be the under 13. Should be the under 13, um, which would make it um, event number 49. Right, in event number 49. Um, Rinell Rinell Cockburn stopping the clock in 13.89. Sophia Stevens 13.98, and Shana Shana um, Thomas 14.22. Uh, the completion day of event number 49, the girls 100 meters dash in the under 13 category. Yes, so. That's what it is officially. The official results there. Rena Cockburn of Bolt Club um, in a time of 13.89. Um, the record in that event is 12.87. We're getting ready for batch two. The official lane assignments. Official lane assignments. Jada Gill runs out of three. Darius, Linnea Darius, runs out of four for McDonald College. Eliza Rose Benjamin is nestled in lane number five. Um, Janisha Peters sits in, in lane number six. And Leah Campbell occupies lane number eight. Your lane assignments for the upcoming event. So there's going to be Gill, Benjamin, Peters, Campbell. And they are officially off. Let's see who takes, who makes the makes up the early lead on this one. Running down the middle of the packet of lane number five for Chuck Blazer is Eliza Rose Benjamin. Yes, it is Benjamin that is literally motoring, storming her way away with that one. And all officially, it's Eliza Rose Benjamin running out of lane number five. Appearing on your screen there, um, registration number two forty-five. She ran out of lane number five. Um, unofficially, it's a victory for her. We get the official times. Yes, um, 13.65, 13.65 seconds. Uh, Linnea, Linnea Darius for McDonald College, finishing in second, 14.18. And Leah Campbell for, for VTC, that's Velocity Track Club, 14.25 seconds. Again, that's your official, official time there for the girls and the girls under 13 in what is event number 49. We're looking at the final flight in this event, the final flight, and should be another reduced field for more indication. Well, seven athletes should be in this field. The lane assignments should be Sabrina McFarlane. McFarlane runs out of two. Amelia Noel occupies lane number three. Aaliyah Campbell runs out of four. Rihanna um, Gribbing runs out of lane at number five. General Smith runs out of lane at number six. And Desiree Paul, Derisa, sorry, Derisa Paul in lane number seven. Your lane assignments for heat three of three. As they go under status orders. Event three of three. And they're off. It's a clean start for each and every one as they try to establish positions. We're looking at athletes running of lane number six. Uh, that looks there as Peters. Peters running there out of lane number six, um, representing South City Rising Stars. Um, we wait for the official results. Official results, but that should be there or should be. Um, unofficially, Janista Peters. We wait for the official time. Yes, we wait for the official time. So, 
So the official time for So there you have it, a four to finish the girls' 100 meters dash. Um, we are continuing with you, folks, and, and I must say that we're picking up speed as we go as we as we go through the afternoon period. Uh, we get moving now to the boys' 100 meters dash. The boys 100 meters dash in the 100. The lane assignments Zion James runs out of lane number one. Kendall Worm. So James is in lane number one. Job Samuel is in front of the tr three. Jaquan Knight occupies lane number four. Uh, Kia Wilson sits in lane number five. And Ozil. Runs out of lean number at Samuel, lean number six. It's an even start. Again, there is a recall of the athletes. A recall of the athletes. And not sure why, but we get it official. Again, lean assignments. James in one, Samuel three. Knight runs out of four. Wilson in five. And Samuel runs out of Ozell Samuel. Runs out of lane number six for speed zone. The official lineup for the next event on the track. The next event on the track. Yeah, that is event number 50. Boys 100 meters. The, t the game's record set back in 2015 at 12.12 seconds. We waited again. We continue to see the flood the week at the back. The feather banners fluttering in the wind. A nice, not too heavy of a shadow at the stadium, but provides the perfect cover. And they're officially off. No stops with this one as they make their way down the middle. Down the middle. Boys 100 meters dash. Who is it going to be? Running there out of lane number, lane number three. And that should be a victory there for young Samuel. We wait for the official results. We wait for the official results. Uh, but it should have been for, for VTC, Job Samuel running out of lane number three. And uh, there it is officially. Um, Job Samuel in a time of 13.78 seconds um, for VTC. Um, Young Wilson, 13.98. Knights as Jaquan Knights, 14.11. The record, the record for that event is 12.12 seconds. But congratulations to Job Samuel of VTC. Uh, he stopped the clock in a time of 13.78. And again, reminding you that we've had one record set for the day. Um, and Ariza is given as an incentive $150 in cash for each record that is broken. Yes? So, we continue as you, we, we bring you live action, live commentary here at the Kirana James Athletics Stadium. Yes? Uh, we get to the next event on the field. It should be Edwards in one. Wickham in two. Um, Samuel running out of four. Um, Jaden Strong runs out of five. There's Jaden Emmons running out of six. Yelena Steinman, Edwards, Wickham, Samuel, Strong, Emmons, Yelena Steinman for the upcoming event. Event number 50, the boys 100 meters dash. We await the status orders, and they are officially off as they establish a position quite early. Running out of lane number two, it looks as Wickham. Yes, it is Wickham from McDonald College. As Carlos Wickham out of lane number two, um, that's your that's your official unofficial record. Stop the unofficial result. Sorry, for Carlos Wickham, running for McDonald College out of lane number two. Uh, that was an easy victory there for him. We await the official time. We await the official times and official record, the official time on this one. 13.63 uh, victory there for Carlos Wickham from McDonald College. And Jaden Strong from MVP, 13.84. Jaden Emmons 
from Salt City Rising Star. And it's Judah Edwards from Bolt. He stopped the clock in 15.28. And it's Jaden Samuel, also from Bolt, 16.33 seconds. Be continuing with it, and the officials they have been showing that we maintain the speed as we can we move to the next flight of boys. The lane assignments Oliver Deshaun Oliver runs for McDonald College out of lanes number one in two. Tristan Wellington also for McDonald College. There's Giovanni Daniel. Is nestled in lean number four next to him. Joshua Modest sits in lean number five. And there is Jazani Bartholomew is running out of lean number six. Your lean assignment for the next event. That's event number 50, the boys' 100 meters. Who is it going to be in this one? Oliver, Wellington, Daniels, Modest, Barry, Bartholomew. Who is it going to be um, in, in the middle of the pack? It is the athlete there from St. David's. That's what on the outside, actually, it is the athlete lean number six, it looks like, uh, which should be Jazani Bartholomew from finish line that seemed to have grabbed um, grab that event. We wait for the official results. But from our vantage point, yes, it is Jazani Bartholomew, yes, from finish line. And he stopped the clock in a time of 13.43 seconds. Jazani Bartholomew in one. Um, so Jazani Bartholomew, um, Jack Vonny Daniel, Deshaun, Deshaun Oliver, Joshua Mudes, Tristan Wellington. Your lineup, of course, that was your finishing order for the just completed event, event number 50. And that was... It come. It completes another field of events. Uh, we also should be having simultaneously on the field as part of the Octathlon. There is the boys' high jump. And in case you're probably wondering, Octathlon, what exactly is it? It's a combination event with, uh, that includes eight events where each athlete participates in eight events. Eight, eight, eight events. Yes? So... Again, it is, you can see the growth in athletics here at the Nationals, the growth of, of, of athletics as it continues here. We move in now to the girls, that is, event number 52, and which is the girls' 100 meters dash on the 17. Your lead assignments. Well, for more indication, yes, um, some apologies on that. We still... Let's, let's just get some confirmation form because we, what we had previously was the completion race in the boys' 100 meters. There were three flights, which was completed... We continue to bring you coverage here. We're looking, we're getting ready. We see the athletes lined up. Uh, we're going to get confirmation it's exactly um, which batch this is, in, in fact. But it is glorious sunshine down here at the Kirana James Athletic Stadium. Right, so I think what we have in here is that race that, right, that from a, a previous event, and they've returned them from all in, 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 in indications. Um, so I think that would have been event number 48. Event, num event number, f number 48. So we there await the status orders. Who is it going to be? There is Leslie in there. Let's look and see as they motor down the 100 meters. We're looking at the athlete there in lane number three in the middle of the pack. Uh, looks as Pilgrim out of South St. George. Uh, he's been chased by the athlete out of lane number five. Uh, but it should be, unofficially, it should be Tyreek Pilgrim. Uh, 
Yes, Tyreek Pilgrim of South St. George uh, would have stopped the clock on in the first position for this one. I can understand, my dear boy, the pitch is not, the sun is not as forgiven as it seems. It's not as forgiven as you seem. So the official time in this one, it's Tariq Pilgrim of South St. George in a time of 14.58 seconds. Ronnie Lessie, 14.72. In the second place, M. Davion Charles of Bolt in a time of 14.85. So congratulations to Tariq Pilgrim uh, representing South St. George government school and in case you're a bit confused um what we saw was the rerun of the under 11 boys uh, a race that was abandoned um that was for some reason so we hang on officially let's get it for you so again there seems to be uh, another record and again reminding you that for um, a riser, they, uh, their contribution, financial contribution to the athletes, $150 for each record that is broken. We get it back to, well, it looks like the under 17 girls. Under 17 girls. The top, the first one caught, qualifies automatically. It should be Moraine, John, Samson, and they're off four athletes. Red of lane number four, marching away in the middle of the pack. Uh, that should be um, Ken jo um, Samson, that is me, from MVP. Ash there, all official should be an easy victory there for Samson from MVP. That should be Talia Samson. And again, reminding you that the game's record 11.80 seconds. 8.0 seconds. Um, we provide you with the official results in just in just a bit. But we continue with action as it happens here inside of the Kirana Chiefs Athletic Stadium. Yes, indeed. Officially, it is Talia Samson of MVP Club. She stopped the clock in a time of 12.26 seconds. Um, the, the game's record, 11.8 zero and in this heat event number 52 uh, there is in fact four flights of uh, of four flights of races and uh, we just saw heat one of four again congratulations to, to, to Talia Samson of MVP club a win in a time of 12.26 seconds we go to heat two of four of event number 52 your lane assignments. And again, another reduced field. Um, four athletes. They occupy lane four, five, six, and seven. So, which in fact should be the Dakota, McIntyre, Griffith, and Gittens. MVP, finish line. Westerhall Hall Secondary and another athlete from finish line your lane assignments for the under 17 girls and they are off it is red right out of lane number three out of lane number three in the middle of the park uh, from track blazer that should be more rain yes four track blazers so again we continue to wait for the official results the official results um Heat two of four in the prelims. And again, sometimes you, you're a bit in a quandary when you have a status list that says one. And then if you're not, not quite sure exactly why there is a reduced field. But we take it officially for the athlete from MVP club, um, Aliyah Dikoto, in the time of 12.60. Uh, finishing in second place is Rihanna McIntyre from in a time of 13.19 seconds and Janelle Griffith 13.82 Amira Gittens she stopped the field the clock in what was a reduced field in a time of 14.53 seconds action continues down here you're watching and you're following us live it is a, a TNR communication production 
and what is the Arisa National Championships inside of the Kirani James Athletics Stadium. We're looking for the, at the lane assignments. Lane assignments. Um, lane 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So in lane number one, Portia Samuel in one. Abigail Williams runs out of two. Uh, Cassidy Mitchell is in three. Lauren McIntosh runs out of four for MVP. Um, Tamia Thomas is in five. You have Kayla McIntyre is in number six. Shania Thomas is in seven. Your lane assignments for the upcoming event, heat three of four. These are all prelims. Uh, event number 52, the girls 100 meters dash and the game's record 11.80 seconds. We await the start of the next event. Again, reminding you simultaneously, there are other events that's taken place. The discuss is still in progress. And besides the discus, there is also the high jump. The high jump is also in progress. Reminding you that it is actually the boys' octathlon that is in progress, which is uh, a combination events of eight different athletes per competing in eight separate events. So there's high jump on the field as well. Discus taking taking place simultaneously. But right now we at we looking at the 100 meters. The girls. On the 17, heat three of heat three or four. Samuel, Williams, Mitchell, McIntosh, Thomas, McIntyre, and Shania McIn Shania Thomas. Your lane assignments for the girls on the 17. And they're on the status orders and they are off. Early clean start for all of the athletes. Who is go is it gonna be? We're looking, taking the early command off the race in the middle of the pack, lane number four. It seems to be from MVP club, Lauren Macken McIntosh. Lauren McIntosh, it seems. Yes, so it seems to have taken the lead and that the, the, the win on that one. She ran out of lane number four and representing 473 MVP club. Um, looking at the face, she seems quite satisfied with her, with her performance. It's way, so we wait for the official result, and yes, the official result, um, Lauren McIntosh, MVP, Abigail Williams, McDonald College, um, McIntosh in a time of 12.92, Abigail Williams, 13.04, and Tamia Thomas from SAS, 13.26, uh, Cassidy Mitchell from Walker, 13.53, and we have Caleb McIntyre, 13.67, and Shania Thomas, 19.81. The official results there of Heat 3 of 4, event number 52, is the girls' 100 meters dash. This should be the final flight of event number, event number 52. We're looking for the lane assignments. Lane assignments. Griffith in one. We have Egypt, Regis Benjamin running out of two. Chandler in three. Alad, Philip, Panchu, Belfon. Your lean assignment for the next event on the track. It's the final flight of event number 52, the girls, 100 meters dash on the 17. Again, Griffith, Regis Benjamin, Chandler in three. Allard, Philip, Pancho, Belfort, and they are off. It's an even early start. Who is going to take the lead? We're looking at athlete outside of the MVP, lean number two, but coming down in the middle, out of lean number five. Lean number five, probably just sneaking in there from finish line. Um, Camille Philip. Um, we we'll wait for the official results. It was... It was um, it was there either between Philip or it was either MVP or Philip or finish line. We get the official result. The official result, it is in fact, yes, officially, it was Kamali Philip 
from finish line um, in a time of 12.79. And Egypt Rages Benjamin from MVP stopping, stopping the clock in second place. That was the completion of event number 52, the girls' 100 meters dash. That was the final flight of that event, which was four flights. We're moving on to still in the under 17 category. It's event number 53. As we continue here with live action uh, down here at the Kirana James Athletic Stadium, it is day two, session one of the Ariza, Ariza National Championships here at the Kirana James Athletic Stadium. A game's record 10.62. 10.62 set by Anderson Peters. It was only a couple of days I was reminded folks that Anderson, in fact, at one time dominated in, in the 100. And they thought that that was a figment of my imagination. Yes, but we're looking out, the, and this is action in the Atakland. There's also the high jump in progress. As you say, we continue to say to you that we provide you a multifaceted coverage of events as they take place here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium as part of the Arisa National Championships. Um, and that's a clean jump. We're going to get you your listing for it and confirm with you the height that they are attempting uh, but certainly it is a multiple um, coverage that we are offering you simultaneously um, so while there is also well the discus seems to have completed yes so what we're looking at is the high jump um, we go back to now to the boys 100 meters dash under 17 the lane assignments cadet philip Nixon, Sam, Forrester, Granger. Well, that's it is a revised field. No doubt, and they're off, and they're off and early and running. It is MVP down the middle of the track. Lane number four, Ethan Sam. It's an easy run for him. Taken in second place, running out of lane number eight from track blazer was Tariq McSween. Uh, but that there, MVP, that was an easy win there for Ethan Sam. Uh, running there out of lane number four, Ethan Sam for, for MVP club, MVP 473 MVP, and in second place, second place should have been, yes, it is official, Tariq McSween. So, victory there for Ethan Sam, and for 473 MVP, McSween in second place, Fraser in third Granger um, in fourth and printed up the rare. Um, Philip in the time of 12 point. We go back now to the high jump. Nice clean technique there. Um, you, you see, of course, nice solid jump, lanky figure that is lean, a nice lean body structure there with him. And he, he made it almost seem as though I could do that. I'm thinking to myself, Nazim, you know what? Maybe in, in this latter course of my life, I have I've floated around with a few different sporting uh, events, but I'm thinking maybe the high jump. <laughs> Richie is telling me, Joe, not an unbearable stretch of your imagination. I think I'll probably try my hopes, though, with the long jump, with the 100 meters. Um, the second flight of boys is on the way, but in the meantime, um, in the meantime, there, we're looking at the long jump. But we're going back now to the 100 meters. It's a full flight. It is Nelson, Matlin, Charles, Ned, Alexander, Knights, Tyson, Redhead. That's the order. Well, there is no lane three. Lane three it is, in fact, empty. Um, so they under the status orders. Again, not sure why, but they've been brought back to this. Um, there seem to be a little bit of fidgeting in there. But remind you that the record, the game's record, it's a time of 10.62, and that was set by Anderson Peters. We're getting ready for the start of event number heat two of four at the boys' 100 meters dash. Under 17. Under 17. Who is it going to be? This is for bragging rights. Again, reminding you, we're looking at Nelson in one, Matlin in two, Anderson Charles, 
is nestled in lane number three. Alexander sits in lane number five. Knights in six, Tyson in seven, and Redhead occupies lane number eight. The lane assignments for the next event on the track. As they go to get under the status orders for bragging rights, for club, for school, for the rights to say, I was here. I came and I conquered. And they are off. It's an even start for all. It is bold. It is MVP. Finish line. But we're taking the early lead as they head home. It is out of lane number eight. Lane number eight. It is um, that is Redhead. Redhead for track blazers. And it looks as though unofficially it was Cameron Matlin taking the second for MVP. We await the official results though. But unofficially um, it was Redhead. Yes. It Redhead running. Mikhail Redhead running for St. David's track blazers out of lane number two. Little dub number one. And Cameron Matlin for MVP in lane number two. There you have it, the completion of event number 53, heat two of four. Heat two of four. And certainly, uh, we continue to look at, give you uh, a full appreciation for the different activities as they happen here at the National Stadium. It's the high jump and that's taking place as we speak. And certainly, while that is happening, we, will be, we are getting ready for the batch three of the 100. But there you see um, a nice, clean, comfortable jump there from the, the athlete from MVP Club. And again, you can well appreciate uh, what is going to be a long day, uh, but we go back to the track, the Lane assignments, Josh Thomas, South City, Rising Star, two. Hilaire in three. Lewis, five. Rages in six. George runs out of lane seven. And McQueen runs out of lane number eight. Your lane assignment for the up to the next event on the, on the track. It's the boys. On the 17, 100 meters dash. On the 17, 100 meters dash. Who is it going to be? As I know, sir. So I'm yet to see any of the athletes while getting to any of the pre-race rituals. Most just seem to adopt the notion, you know, stand, get, in, get, in, get into my blocks and I'm going to run. But certainly I know some athletes, they do have their pre-game rituals. Um, they shift. They, they get into the antics and the shenanigans and everything else. Some try to psych the, 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 their opponents out. But these are keeping it to the basic elements of it as they get ready to settle into the blocks. Event number 53, heat three of five. The boys, 100 meters dash in the under 17 category. Who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? Lane eight, seven. So running out of lane number eight is Jaden McQueen from Bolt. Lane number seven from Wester Hall Secondary is George. Also in there, lane number five is Tevit. Is Lewis for altitude. Sass runs out of lane where well, there's no lane number four. MVP. Runs out of lane number three, and that's in the person of Nathan Hillier. Josh Thomas occupies lane number two, and lane number one is free. So, we await the start of the next event, heat three of four. Who is it going to be? They don't go under the direct status orders. As it gets settled into the blocks, and showing that they get the positioning stance as we get ready for event number 53, the boys 100 meters. Daniel, Hilaire, Thomas, and they're off. It's an even start. MVP is in there. That's in running out of lane number three. And he's literally making it just a really, really easy cruise in the park for MVP. 
And that's in the prison of Nathan Hiller. Easy victory there for Nathan Hiller out of lane number three for club MVP. Indeed, you came, you conquered, and you are the winner. So we'll wait for the official results, though. But not officially, it was, it is Nathan Hiller from MVP in the time of 11.34 seconds. Again, the game record, 10.62. 10.62. So Hiller for MVP, 11.34. McQueen from, that's Jaden McQueen from Bolt, 11.81. And Josh Thomas for South City Rising Star, 11.84. ATC, Altitude Track Club, 11.86. And Jonathan Rages, he stopped the clock, and he finished in number five. We're getting ready for the final flight, and the boys 100 meters dash, under 17. Under 17 boys. Unofficially, it should be Samuel, Thomas, Lewis, Sincere, Douglas, Griffith, Lewis, and Joseph. But certainly we can see already that is a, there is a number of vacant blocks. So let's see what the field has been reduced to. So of lane number one um, is Samuel. Lane number two, Thomas. Lane number four, Deron Sincere. Number five, lane number five, it is Yeshwan Douglas. Griffith occupies lane number six. Joshua Lewis in lane number seven. And Tibel Joseph occupies lane number eight. The lane assignments for your next event on track as they go under direct status orders. The game records, 10.62. National record, 10.17. We get ready for event number 53. Samuel, Lewis, Sincere, Douglas, Griffith, Joseph, and they are off as they establish the lead. We look in there. Athlete in the middle of the pack, out of lean number five, as Douglas, or was it five or four? Um, that's Sincere. Sincere it is, um, of Altitude Club, um, unofficially. It's a victory for him. We get the official time form. The officials, but not officially, it was Deron Sincere in a time of 11.74. As we see the replay on screen, um, muscles pumping, and it's an easy, nice, comfortable win for him. Um, he came so unofficially, officially, is Deron Sincere of Attitude Track Club. Um, there is Toby Samuel Abbey of Velocity Track Club, 12.11. Daryl Thomas, 12.23. And Yeshua Douglas in a time of 12.35 seconds. It is action inside of the Kirana James Athletic Stadium. I guess quite a picturesque view there of the National Stadium, a place that we call home. Um, named after our Olympian, our triple Olympian, the man Zeno, the man Kirani, the Jaguar. Of course, quite a uh, mixed group in here at the National Stadium. Uh, of course, it's, it's always a beauty when you can see yourself. You can say hi. Um, seems to be a nice family shot that's, that's there. Again, we say thanks to Ariza. And they've come on board and ensure the continuity of their support uh, to this, the games of the national championship the national championship championship in the, indeed it serves as a precursor to selection to the character games and certainly uh, many of the athletes they're here and they would want to ensure that they play their part in qualifying and just to give you an appreciation again remember what you have what you have in here is a mixture of athletes uh, that are representing both their clubs and schools. Yes, so some of the names, if you follow track and field, you might probably wonder, well, am I, in a, am I in a daze? Am I in a quandary? No, you're not, actually. You're not. Um, some athletes 
they ran under the school, some of them they've combined. And so you want to ensure that as they get ready for selection well, selections for character, but even more immediate, we get ready for intercore. Again, it is the Rise sponsor, they are the title sponsor of this the national championships that's taking place inside of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It's an early moment yet. Uh, for those of you that's probably you still probably considering what next, what your options should be. You probably want to make your way down. What we're looking at is action in the high jump. And an infringement there. And some athletes, by the time they probably they elevate, they get us some of the they, they know just on their body language whether or not they've gotten enough altitude to get over the bar. And we will try to give you an appreciation as to what um what is the height that they attempting to cross. But in case you're wondering the in terms of in terms of the points standing. Um, St. David Track Blazers, they out in front on 70, 73 points. South City Rising Star on 66. 473 MVP, 45. Finish Line Sports, um, Sports Club at 35. And Boca Secondary, um, they're on 16 points. Ace Club, 13. Fusion, 9. Um, Altitude, that's ATC. That's Altitude Track Academy. They are nine points. VTC seven, and McDonald College on six. On six, it's all happening here inside of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. It is the day two of the national championships. That's in fact the Arisa Credit Union National Championship, and again another field attempt here. Um, from SAS and just so that we do not confuse you for those of you who might be hearing schools and then you're hearing clubs um, the athletes some represent their schools and others are representing their clubs uh, you can well appreciate um, so what you have in here is a convergence of um, athletes some of them may probably even be they might be teammates at schools um, but the question is who are they, rep who are they representing because each of the athletes, most of the athletes, that is, and that's what is, is good for the sport in that you've seen in more recent times, a lot of athletes have been aligned, have found themselves aligned with different clubs that allows them for additional training outside of that which is offered by the schools. We are getting ready. Event number 54 is the girls' 150 meters dash under nine. Under nine, so the lean, so the lean assignments. You have Mikaya Batiste in two, Jada Rages in three, Johnson runs out of four, Glean in five, Lequish in lean number six, John lean number seven, and Sydney Joseph occupies lane number eight. It is Alpha, MVP, runners. South City, Rising Stars, Velocity. Your lane assignments for the upcoming events. Again, Batiste, Rages, Johnson, Glean, Faith, Liquish, John, that's J and there is Sydney Joseph. It is the girls, 150 meters dash in the under nine category. as we peel our eyes on the track as these under these junior athletes and in fact the, when i say junior i don't mean it bashfully i mean it literally they are junior athletes as they go get under the status orders 
the official making sh ensuring that there is no infringement that offers even at a very youthful age any unfair advantage mm. <laughs> ah, the jitters the butterflies I would assume at this I mean at this age that there's a there is going to be a bit of a bit of leniency on them no no doubt I would assume well yes you want to give them give them appreciation as to what the rules are but certainly on their max again event number 54 the girls 150 meters dash all lanes occupying with the exception of lane number three and they are officially off 150 meters and the girls on the nine they've just about covered uh, their first 50 meters as they motor down for home who is it going to be running out of lane number one is it going to be batiste or running in the middle of the pack lane number four let's see whose legs are tearing up as they head towards home it is in fact out of lane number four um, from Velocity Track Club, it looks there as a win for Jay on Johnson. We look for the official. We look for the official results, um, but it's unofficially a victory for Young Johnson, running out of lane number four, and she was certainly stretched as she looked over to see and in finishing in first place. In. But so it is official. It is official. Is Jesse on J Johnson from Velocity Club in a time of twenty three point zero six seconds. Sanjay Simon and sent from St David's Track Blazers in a time of twenty three point two six. And John twenty six twenty five point one three for MVP. And that's in the person. Of of um, Jadine John taking up the third position. The completion as we move right along. I we're looking. Well, it looks as a, a batch of on the nine boys. So let's let's yes, so it's event number fifty five. Event number 55. Again, boys, 150 meters dash on the nine. We wait for the full complement, the full lane assignments. Um, in lane one from finish line, should be Ryan Dolan. Rain two, rain 2 is empty, so 2 is lane number 3. In lane number 4, should be represented Fusion Club in the person of Jehu Roberts. Jehu Roberts runs out of lane number 5. For VTC, Theodore runs out of lane number 5. Alpha, A Aiden Buckner runs out of lane number 6. For South City Rising Stars, it is Jamari Patterson and completing the lineup, Elijah Antoine out of lane number eight. The lane assignments for your upcoming events. Event number 55, the boys 150 meters dash. Who is it going to be as they reach the officials, canvas the field? As they get on the status orders, it is a clean start as they motor down the field. In the middle of the pack, it is young Roberts. Roberts running out of lane number. Lane number, that's for Fusion. It is Jehu Roberts um, for Fusion House. And this is a walk in the park for him. Um, so it's Roberts out of lane number four, followed by Theodore from lane number five for Velocity Truck Club. Congratulations to him. A victory there, easy victory there for young Roberts running out of lane number four and there you have it that was a completion the completion of event number 55 the boys 100 meters dash under 
nine boys. Quite a steady run there from young Roberts. Roberts followed by Theodore. So the official time for Fusion for young Roberts, that's Jehu Roberts, 22.64. Joel Theodore in second place, 23.34 seconds. And Jamari Patterson, 24.88 seconds. Uh, bringing up the end of the stock line, the lineup, Elijah Antoine, 25.85. And Ryan Dolan, 26.69 seconds. We get it ready for the next event, batch two of two. The lane assignments, Kishon Cobb, lane one. Church in lane two. Shahid Paul in lane three. Gay in lane four. Douglas five. Coffee in six. Philip in lane seven. And Kobe Smith is in lane eight. The lane assignments for the upcoming event. Kobe from finish line. Church from Runners, Paul from South City, Gay from Velocity, Douglas from Fusion, Coffee from South City, Philip from Track Blazers, and Kobe Smith from Runners. Your lane assignments for the upcoming event. Quite visibly, we've seen the absence of the athlete that's from lane number four. So again, it's another reduced pack. Another reduced pack, no doubt. Event 55 is the boys' 150 meters dash. And the under status orders. Lane 1. Cobb. Church. Paul. Douglas. Cuffey. Philip. Smith. Junior athletes in the under 15 category, under 9 category, running out of lane number one for finish line. It is Kishon Cobb that is motoring away. Uh, he's been chased by the athlete. That's Young Church from Runner. So it is finish line. Um, Kishon Cobb uh, crosses the line in first place. And uh, we await the official results. But that was the completion of event number. 55, event number 55, and the under nine boys, under nine in running, under nine boys in the boys 150 meters. So that was Kobe, that was Cobb, Church, and Smith running run the lane eight. So there you have the official results. It's Kishon Kalm, 22.36. Um, Shahid Paul, 23.43. And Kobe Smith, and uh, a time of 23.74 seconds. Whitson Church, 25.66. And Douglas, in a time of 26.08. Cuffey, 27.20. The official times for event number 55, and that was the second of two heats in the boys' 150 meters dash in the under nine category. Again, quite a early days here at the Kirati James Athletic Stadium. Um, I can we can only we can well appreciate as the evening. We stretch late into the evening that we're going to see um, a, a greater build of the club, of this soft supporters. I know some folks, it is still early. It is just about um, 12, min 12 minutes gone past the hour of two. Probably those of you making your way from church or other um, events that you had to attend to. But we certainly we can appreciate that if you can make your way to the stadium, that you will. But for those of you who can't, we say thank you for being part of this a TNR communication production. And what if you get you fallen here? It is live action at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in what is in fact day number two, session number one of the Arisa, Arisa National Championships. Um, the championship that serves as a precursor 
uh, to um, to other regional meats, character among them, and certainly others are using it just as a build up to intercall 2023. Um, that is just a, a, a matter of just under two weeks away. Just under, under two weeks away. It's for bragging rights and certainly we want to say thanks to Ariza. They've actually, as an incentive, they're offering $150 um, Master Smith for all athletes at Breaking Records. And so certainly um, I, we, I know many, a lot of athletes will be using it as an incentive. Um, again, reminding you that what we have here today at the, is a combination of athletes that are representing schools and the various clubs. So many of the athletes, uh, they, they probably are they're acquainted with each other in one way or the other. Um, whether uh, by virtue of being um, colleagues at school, schoolmates, or whether or not they are on the same club. So we're moving right along, reminding you through that the heptathlon is also in progress. There is the girls' javelin throw open, uh, but we seem to be moving to event number 56. It's it's the girls' 200 meters dash in the under 15 category. Girls under 15, the record is 24.99 seconds, uh, set back in 2017 by Keena Thomas. We go through the lane assignments. The lane assignments sh should be. Riel Alexis in one, Faith Cooper in two, Kimora Otley in three, Kayla Christopher four, Khadijah Walcott in five, Annie Logie, Sumara Alexis in seven, and Navia Richards in lane number eight. As they go under the official status orders, we wait for the official start off heat one of five and they are officially off it's a clean start and uh, let's see who is who takes who takes up the early stagger in the middle of the pack there that's running out of lane number four and uh, that's isn't kyla christopher motoring away and uh, she seems to be in a world of her own um in a world of her own but with finishing finish line khadijah walcott is also making the chase but it's an easy, easy victory, quite an easy victory for um, Kayla Christopher for Track Blazers. We await the official results, but unofficially, it is Kayla Christopher from Track Blazers. Um, we get the official time, but the game's record is 24.99. Um, 24.99. And we look at unofficially, it seems to be that of it is Christopher. We get the official results. Um, it's never a good sight when you see athletes. I do hope that it is, isn't anything too serious. When athletes, they have to be taken off on a cart, assisted by our first aiders. I certainly you would hope that it isn't anything too serious. We await the start of another flight that is event two of five it's in the girls 200 meters dash in the under 15 category lane assignments charles mvp lane one sanaya st louis for mcdonald college kiana alexander for convent st george um verona olive sass mitchell for boca is in is in five melanie alexander runs out of lane number six um, Sarah Sandy runs out of lane number seven for finish line and Rosemary Thomas runs out of lane number eight for velocity track clubs. Um, but that's my official status list, but there is some obvious vacant slots with lane three um, being empty.
but on the official status orders 200 meters girls is the under 15 and it's a 200 meters as they establish for early positions relay running out of lane number five early there uh, for Boca it is Mitchell but the athletes finish line that is in the put of Sarah Sandy Sarah Sandy is also there as with about 50 meters or so out of lane number five as Boca, but here comes Sass. Um, but I think unofficially, unofficially, if my eyes didn't play tricks on me, it'd probably be it would be um Mitchell there from Boca that would have pulled that one out, pulled that one off. And certainly we await the official results. We are seeing though in more recent times a lot of um corporate Grenada. They come in on board to ensure to add their presence to athletics on the island. So officially, it's Kashanti Mitchell of Boca and Brianna Olive is in second place. Sierra Sandy of Finish Line Sports Club finishes in second. Um, Shania St. Louis, McDonald College is in fourth. Uh, Rosemary Thomas for VTC. In the time of 29.890. Well, folks, um, all good things must come to an end. But certainly, when I say I don't, I don't mean it bashfully. It's always my pleasure when I am able to share uh, the microphone and the commentary team with my old friend. Um, a whole morning, I'm asking, has anybody seen Leslie Smith? And I'll assume reasonably you are engaged with other more pressing matters, Leslie, before I take my departure for now. Well, good afternoon, JC, the man Joseph Cado himself, and uh, I want to say a special good afternoon to all of the viewers who are tuned into this national championship, the Arise National Championships 2023, and we're delighted to bring you the live coverage here at the Kiriani James Athletic Stadium. Of course, Joseph, um, many things happening on one day, mm -hmm. and as we say, we, we need to make sacrifices, and I'm here today to assist you with the live commentary. <laughs> I should be grateful then. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. It's always a pleasure to have you here, Les, Les, I mean, Leslie Smith. And certainly, as we, we are part of this, what's happening here. And uh, before I take my departure, we're looking at he, he three of five. Noel, Lewis, Bascom, Charles, Rages, Cooper, Modest, and Charles. And they are officially off. It's... The girls, 200 meters dash in the under 17, under 15 category as they just about eat up the, the one, first 100. And it is running there for Sass out in the middle. Let's get the name for you. Uh, but it's out of lane number four, lane number four. And that's Charles actually representing altitude. And it's Charles for altitude. Um, that's the official results there for you. Um, you know, I mean, you, 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 you know what is, what is interesting? As we continue to share folks, um, you see the names and you see the clubs. And persons, um, Leslie, some person, they WhatsApp me, persons have to get a, a real full appreciation that athletes today, they are representing both. They could be representing either schools or clubs. So I know some people, they're a bit confused and they were wondering. But again, we look at the official time, yes, for altitude. Um, Christian and Charles, in a time, Christian and Charles, in a time of 26.64. Denial Modest from MVP Club, 27.06. And Tishan Bascom from St. David's Track Blazer, in a time of 27.227. Um, Smith, as I leave you. Well, what has been happening over the years is that because of the plethora of new athletic clubs that are developing, a lot of the schools, the athletes are now participating under the banner of the clubs. Many persons will remember in recent times the Tantin Bullets, and you may not have been hearing about Tantin Bullets in these games, and that is because the GBSS and Anglican High School fraternities that formed the Tantin Bullets are now participating under the club banners. And so um, maybe that's the... The, the death of the Tantin Bullets, so to speak, and the rise of the MVP and the finish line and, and others that are emerging now. And that's another conversation I wish you could have had before you go in terms of the impact that these clubs are having on the performances of the athletes in the various parishes. 
And what we've noticed for a fact is that the parish that has the most of these clubs that start early preparation, these athletes seem to be doing much better than those where clubs are absent. And what did the, the club structure actually does uh, to um, Smith? It allows for um, athletes being able to gauge each other as to where they are. Uh, because now at the, you, you might be, your clubs are not necessarily restricted to a particular school. But of course, you may have a, a school like Chad Blazers, where you may have Westerhall, you may have St. David. So you find the athletes are able not to compete with each other. And it, it forces them to advance and up their, up their speed in terms of what they do. And it certainly it allows for greater experience, partnership as well, as well partnering where athletes, of course, because they're now in clubs, they can probably, they're now able to share techniques. And what you've noticed in those is that you see now at the school level, it's becoming much, much more competitive. It's not a case where traditionally one school, because of, let's say, they have the presence of a better coaching staff, perennially they triumph. But now you see there's a lot of the coaches that are spread out at the club level. And so it adds to the conversation of what's happening, of what's happening at in the terms of the growth and expansion of, of athletics. And, and that's very evident in these in this particular games here. Um, the St. George's, for whatever reason, seems to have most of these athletic clubs these days. And maybe it's for several reasons. And uh, if you look at the... We'll come back to the conversation at the end of, of the event. So, so Joseph, um, take us through the event, please. So we're looking at the another event here for you, Heat 4 or 5. And it's a shot and feel, though, as... They established for positions. Um, who is it going to be for this one? He's four of five. It's a girl's 100, 200 meters dash. Running out of lean in the middle of the pack. They're out of lean. Number six. It's from St. Joseph's Convent. Is Zaya Etienne. Zizi Etienne. Um, it's an easy victory for her. Quite an easy victory. Easy victory for her. And... And again, we continue to say, to, uh, to say uh, as we were saying prior to the race, that these athletes, it is always good when you can be part of a structure where you compete against athletes. Now, not just at the same level with you, Smith, but maybe even better than you. Yeah, it, it tends to lift your game on game day, actually. And that's interesting here. We have an athlete running with the face mask, um, Joseph. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there's an argument as to how that affects performance the breeding patterns and so on. But it's interesting that we see, even at this level here, athletes uh, participating with the face mask. It would, be, it would make for a good, a good conversation. Um, it's a necessity. While you, I mean, while you're probably in, in your, your athlete's areas, I could probably might be able to understand. But certainly, I would do not think, and I'm, and I'm not by any chance in any way part of any co elite coaching squad to make any assessment on that. But just for the, the prospect of what you're doing of running, I don't necessarily think it's that. I mean, just to walk around with a face mask can be very uncomfortable. Did you and say to run a 200 meter with a face mask on, it must pose some breathing challenges but for the athlete. Did you say can become uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, folks, it was always a pleasure being here with you. I'm just going to take a quick break. Um, of course, my colleague, um, Lester Smith, how am I even saying? L Leslie Smith is going to take you through the next couple of events. Well, thank you again, Joseph. And it is indeed my pleasure to be with you here. We do apologize for not having that level of commentary yesterday. And I know the ardent athletics fans are up in arms and upset about that but it was certainly beyond our control we had absolutely nothing to do with that but we're happy to be here today and to bring you the live commentary as you've come to expect from us and um, we saw quite some interesting performances yesterday we will touch on that and some of the athletes that would have already qualified for the Kyrifta games remember this uh, national championship is a qualifying event where athletes can based on the performance made the qualifying mark for the upcoming character games on the Easter weekend. Some very, very, very impressive performances indeed yesterday. But we're getting set for another event here. That's the 200 meters for the under 15 girls. And they're up and running and looking good. Just four competitors in this event. Already looking good is the athlete out there in lane number four. This 
is actually the final of five heats here, and uh, that looks like Rihanna Thomas from South City Rising Stars, who is going to win this one over uh, Carisha Noel of Magnolia College to inside on the left of her. Um, we are with the official time on this one, but that was heat five of five in the girls, 200 meters under 15. And unofficially, it looks like uh, Rihanna Thomas of South City Rising Stars. As we look back here to the final moments of this race, Thomas from South City Rising Stars has been challenged on the inside here by Carisha Noel from McDonald College, but in the end, a very comfortable winner. She dips for the tape here. And uh, the official result 27.16. Many of you would remember Kina Thomas from Karaku. She's the actual record holder for this event, 24.99 seconds. So Thomas, some time away from that. From these preliminary games, remember the top athlete from each of the hits plus the next three best times would qualify onto the finals later on this evening. And uh, so we will keep you posted on who have returned these best times so far and who will be making the journey on to the finals. Up next on the track would be event number 57, the boys 200 meter dash on the 15. And we're gonna see some sprint stars here again. We saw some very, very good performances uh, yesterday in the 100 and 400 meters for the under 15. And again, these athletes would be unsure. I was mentioning to you earlier on that there were quite a number of athletes that have already made the Carifta qualifying standard. Um, very impressive was in the boys 200 meters under 17. The Carifta standard here being 22 seconds flat. And we saw the very impressive performance from Ethan Sam, 21.71 from MVP Track Club. And also making the qualifying mark in that same event is Tariq McSween from St. David's Track Blazers 21.99. So both these two athletes made the qualifying mark. As we take a track side for the 200 meters under 15 boys, hit one. And we have four competitors here as they come around the bend to head into the home straight. It looks as though it's McDonald College in Javid Jaldu, but he has good challenge on the inside in lane three from Javal Braffitt from Sprinters. And now we see emerging from Shaper, Veko Hines, who wins it eventually and uh, would be the winner of Heat 1 of the, four of the six seats to be completed in the boys under 15, 200 meters. So making a good run back and uh, saving uh, his best for the, maybe the last 50 meters or so is Hines from Shaper at St. John's Christian Secondary School winning this heat, heat one of six. 25.39, the game's record 23.06, as Ethan Sam. And uh, we will see what the other, the others would do in the, in the remaining five heats or five preliminaries for the boys 200 meters. Just to go back to some of the outstanding performances again while we slip through the preliminary races, in the boys 400 meters under 20, the qualifying mark for Carifta 47.80 seconds and we saw that very impressive run from Telemark yesterday, that's Rikel Telemark, of 46.97 from Fusion, very impressive indeed. And uh, it's a time that can be very contentious at the, the character level and maybe even land him in a, in a medal position. But we go back trackside for heat two of six in the boys on the 15, 200 meters. In this one, we have Alexander, Joseph, David, John, Philip, Frame, and uh, St. Louis. And they're up and running here. Let's see who comes off the bend good. Looking good already is Robino Philip from Sass in the blue and white in the middle of the track here. He comes off the turn in the lead and uh, Heads down the home straight with a 10 meter or 15 meter lead over the others. He looks over the left shoulder to see where the competition is going to be coming from. There's absolutely no competition for him. And Robino Philip of Sass is going to win this one. He slows down to the finish line and automatic qualifier into the finals. 
and he has to be mindful that uh, the times will determine the lanes that the artist will get into the final and so slowing down on the tip maybe might be a good thing to conserve the energy but maybe a bad thing in terms of uh, getting the best of the lanes into the finals so looking quite comfortable indeed easing down to the finish line here is Robino Philip from SAS and in second place in that heat would have been uh, McNeil Frame, I think it is, from GBSS. So it's actually Delron John from Altitude wearing the SAS uniform. So Altitude is one of the, the, the new clubs, I think. Um, our colleague Short Pre from Karaku is the one who is in charge of that club. Um, we've over the years gotten used to a track club out of uh, St. Andrew, but we also are aware that Altitude is one of the other clubs. And Delron John, sporting the SAS t-shirt from Altitude, was the winner in that heat. In second, actually, was Robino Philip from SAS. And again, very quickly, I want to go back to the outstanding performances in the girls' 400 meters on the 17. The Carifta standard being 56.50 and uh, Shefonia Houston from South City Rising Stars, she ran 56.43 and again qualifying for Carifta. She missed out marginally on the 200 meters qualifying uh, standard, but again, I think it had to do maybe with the management of the athlete in that instance. She was also competing in the long jump and I'm sure that may have had an impact on her not being able not been able to to meet the qualifying mark in the 200 meters but some impressive run indeed from Shafonia Houston of South City Rising Stars both in the 200 meters and uh, 400 meters and there have been some other athletes that came very very close to the qualifying mark as a matter of fact I think this national champs has been maybe one of the most competitive we've seen in years in terms of the level of competition between the athletes and uh, the ability to make the qualifying standards and even come very close to it. Over the years, we've seen uh, um, athletes winning with maybe big distances or gaps between the second and third place. But I think in 2023, we've seen a good level of competition amongst the athletes. And one would want to pay particular attention to the under 20 boys, 400 meters last night, as well as the 100 meters, and, and, and see how close these athletes are coming coming towards the, the finish line and it, it lends itself to the Grenada Athletic Association looking seriously into forming um, some good 4x100 relay teams in that category and also a 4x400 meter relay team as these boys are indeed very competitive the times are very close and can be a force to be reckoned with at the character level if the right combination is met here so we look forward to see what will happen but I think very early this may be one of the, the, the larger character teams we have in recent times based on the level of competition and the, the results we've seen from the, or the performances we've seen from the athletes in competition. We have not seen any of the athletes in the field events making the qualifying mark yet. We've known over the years that Grenada has been um, uh, very, very impressive at the javelin level and some of the other field events, but we get to see any qualifiers coming out from those. So we move into heat three, we would have in this one Grant, Noel, Boswin, Douglas, Charles, Lessie, and Richardson in heat three of six in the 200 meters under 15 boys. Uh, they're up and running, and uh, let's see who is hungrier for the qualifier here. It seems to be a much slower heat as they come around the bend here it looks as though it's wester hall secondary in omari and richardson on the other side but now making a move from mvp is javid noel in lane two that's javid noel with some strong competition from uh, omari and richardson it looks as though richardson may have just nipped him on the tape here but a close one indeed between omari and richardson and javid noel omar richardson in seven from wester hall secondary and javid noel from the mvp track club we look back here, the closing moments of this one. Both athletes looking to maintain the form, running through the finish line here. And it looks as though it was Westerhall secondary. That's Omarion Richardson. Indeed, it was Omarion Richardson, 25.15. The record, 23.06 again. Ethan Sam in 2021. 
and Intern Sam continues to impress. We saw a 10.71, I think it was, in the one hour, 21.71 one in the 200 meters. Very impressive indeed. And I'm sure his mom and dad are glued to the, the screens if they're not here from the Lamwood area. Say good evening to Sam, Anthony Sam, proud dad of Ethan Sam. The high jump is still in progress. I think there are only three competitors left here. It's a competitor here from South City Rising Stars. We still have uh, three more preliminaries in the boys on the 15,200 meters. A failed attempt here by South City Rising Stars. To give you the lane assignment for heat four or six in the boys 200 meters under 15 in lane two, we have Tyler Davis from Karaku combined, Calvin James from MVP in three, Nathaniel Alfred from South City Rising Stars in four, Golden Joseph of Altitude, he's in five, Aldon Clark of Westerhall Secondary in six, and from Speed Zone in lane seven is Preston Chetram. They're on the starters' orders. They're chasing a record time of 23.06. There they go. Looking good already. Is the athlete from South City Rising Star, Nathaniel Alfred. Alfred comes up the turn here, looking good. With a slight lead over Westerhall Secondary, Alden Clark. So it's Nathaniel Alfred and Clark. And then there's Altitude in the middle here. That's Golden Joseph. But it's going to be, it looks like a good run back here by... Golden Joseph, but uh, too late maybe it is. Nathaniel Alfred of South City Rising Stars win this one. Golden Joseph of Altitude in second. And Alden Clark of Westerhall Secondary in third. That's the boys 200 meters on the 15. Heat number four or six. Westerhall Secondary really, really tying up there towards the end and running out of gas, so to speak. Alden Clark. And Alden, uh, Golden Joseph just clipping him on the tape here for the second spot in this preliminary heat. So we encourage you to stay, stay tuned with us. There are going to be a number of final events later on. We're going to have a medal presentation shortly as well uh, for some of the field events and also for some of the time the finals. There were quite a number of time finals earlier on today, and so they'll be presented with the, the medals in a medal ceremony that is coming up shortly. We still have two more preliminaries in the boys 200 meters on the 15. Following the boys 200 meters, we'll have the girls 200 meter dash on the 20. The likes of Ashanti, Augustine, and others will feature in that event. The starting lineup for Heat 5 or 6 in the under, under 15, 200 meter boys. In lane 1, we have Javon Haynes from Runners. Lane 2, Jamal Andrew of Boca. Lane 3, Alan Albert of McDonald College. Lane 4, Christoph Kalis from Altitude. Lane 5, Ethan Ogist of Finish Line. And lane six, Charles Anthony of Track Blazers. So some familiar names here, Christoph Kalis, Altitude, a student of SAS as well. Ethan Augustine is a, another familiar name we have in track and field. I'm sure his dad and mom are here as well. Uh, very, very strong supporters of Ethan. And uh, they're running for eight positions, remember the top athlete in each of the preliminaries would automatically qualify and then the next two best times would form the remainder of the, the, the finalists. So we have Haynes, Andrew, Albert, Kalist, Ogist, and Anthony. They're now called to the marks by the starter. They're running.
running for an excellent time here. We've seen some good performances already. No one close to the record set by Ethan Sam. And they're up and running. It seems to have been a false start here, but the starters allow this one to go. I'm a very tall athlete here from altitude. That's Christoph Kalis over there in lane four. Coming around the bend, it seems as though it's uh, Ethan Ogis of finish line who is in the lead. Ogis followed by Kalis, but on the outside, it looks as though it is Charles Anthony. Charles Anthony of Track Blazers who wins it. And Ethan Ogis in second. Christoph Kalis seems to have picked up the third spot here. We await the official results, but uh, it seems as though it was Charles Anthony of Track Blazers who would have just etched them out on the finish line here for the top position in the fifth of six preliminaries in the boys' 200 meter dash. The battle there was really for second and third between Calis and Ogis. So we see Anthony Charles here, 24.36. Alden Albert. McDonald College. Well, we wait to see the second position, but it should have, it should be Ethan Ogist of finish line. Indeed, it's Ethan Ogist of finish line, and Christoph Kalis would have picked up the third position. So those of you who are home and uh, who are within the vicinity of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, there is lots of room here for you. You can still come on down. We have a number of final events still to run off later on this evening. And we encourage those of you who are viewing the live broadcast to please stay with us. A lot more exciting events. It's day two of the two-day event, the Grenada National Championship, sponsored by Arisa Credit Union. And there we see the photo finish there for the second and third. And here is where Ethan Ogis just edged out Christoph Calistier for that second position. The final of the six preliminaries in the boys' 200 meter dash. We will see running out of lane two, Anikel Paisley of St. Davis Catholic Secondary School, Rishon Daniel from MVP, Kavan Lewison from Shaper. Jaden Peer from South City Rising Stars, Aviel Peer from SAS, Ethan Edwards from Track Blazers, and uh, Jamari Panchu from Speed Zone. He will be out there in lane 8. So the boys are on the starter's instructions here now. Heat number six of six. 200 meters on the 15 boys. And they're up and running a nice clean start here. South City Rising Stars in Jaden Pay. All day lane five comes out really, really nice here. He has some good competition from MVPs. Rishon Daniel on the inside. But it's South City Rising Stars, Jaden Pay. And uh, now Rishon Daniel takes the lead here and pumps the legs up, arms pumping very high as well as he sprints to the finish line to return a good time and maybe get a good lane as well he wins over uh Jaden pay of south city rising stars the final heat in the 200 meters under 15 boys then we see rich and daniel final moments of the 200 meter dash on the 15 boys really running here for a good time and a good lane as well and wins comfortable over comfortably over Jaden Pay of South City Rising Stars to remind you that uh, the live coverage brought to you by TNR Communications and uh, we'd like to say special thank you to Arisa Credit Union 
for sponsoring these games for yet another year. As we see, the young ladies are lined up on the track now for the girls' 200 meter dash under 20. There are going to be four preliminaries. Remember again, the, the first of each of these preliminaries and the next four best times would emerge into the finals. The character standard here is 24 seconds flat. The game record 24.4 held by Nikelia John. And uh, the national record is 22.67 Sherry Fletcher. And we re re recall these names very well. Nikelia John who used to run from Sass out of the River Sally area. Sherry Fletcher out of the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School. These athletes went on to represent Grenada internationally as well. In lane one, we will see Francesca Henry from McDonald College, Shanik Williams from Runners, Shaquille Clark from South City Rising Stars, Shanti Augustine, one to look up for, she'll be in lane four from MVP, Shaman Philip from Boca, Jaden Batiste from Convent Grenville, and Rihanna Frederick from Track Blazers, all day in lane seven. Keep your eyes on it to the middle of the track. Let's see what Shanti Augustine can do here. She is looking to run on the 24 seconds flat to qualify for the character games. There is Shanti in the middle of the track here from MVP. She comes off the turn looking really, really comfortable indeed. And sprinting down the, back, the home straight for the finish line. That's Shanti Augustine here looking for a qualifying mark to the character games. She was at last year's character games. Now she is looking for another place. She has not done well in the 400 meters to earn a position. And let's see what time she returns here in the 200 meters as she makes her, her quest and her challenge to be on the character team in 2023. Spoke with her dad moments ago and he was saying that for the last two weeks, you know, she was not doing any um, serious work because of injury and she was just basically doing a lot of strength work and it's only raw speed uh, she's going to use here, but um, Shanti Augustine, a household name for us these days, 25.08 outside of the character qualifying mark for Shanti, but nonetheless uh, a good strong performance from Shanti Augustine of MVP. Francesca Henry in second with 26.61, and Jaden Batiste of Convince and Andrew in 27.60 for third. The second of the full preliminaries will feature Amelia Bob from Fusion in lane two, Josel Collins from Speed Zone in three, Kamisha Dominic of Track Blazers in four, Princess Whiteman of Speed Zone in five, Kimberly McQueen of McDonald College in six, and uh, Kelshona Street of MVP in seven. Well, Kamisha Dominic, a familiar name here from the St. Davis Track Blazers, she is running out of lane four. It's one to look out for in this event. Again, the character standard, 24 seconds flat. Moments ago, we saw Shanti Augustine returning 25.08. So that's at least one time that they would have their eyes on in terms of trying to be amongst the best times. The top four finishers go through to the final and the next four best time. They're up and running here. And let's see what Kemisha Dominic has in her from Track Blazers. Not sure she's in the event today, but looking good is the athlete out there from MVP. That's Kelshona Street. And McDonald College on the inside is also looking good. So we look to see. What time she returns, obviously it looks a much slower race than the previous one with uh, Shante Augustine. And all eyes are now on the scoreboard to see what time the athlete from MVP would have returned in this the second of four preliminaries. So it's Curdy and Philip, so it's a merger between hit two and three. Curdy and Philip was scheduled to run in hit three and she has returned a time of 25.56 seconds so i think what has happened here is that uh, hit 
two, three, and four were combined. We'll confirm that in a moment. But definitely hits two and three were combined here. And Curdy and Philip from MVP would have won that hit in 25.56 seconds. So that's Heat 4, that's the athletes for Heat 4, line up there in the 200 meters on the 20 girls. We will see in lane 2, Rhea Flanders from MVP. In lane 3, Amaya Sylvester from South City Rising Stars. Lane 4, Ziana Bain of Finish Line. Lane 5, Destiny Padmo from Runners. Lane 6, Naomi, Naomi Allard from St. Joseph Convent St. Andrew. And Selena Felix of Track Blazers should be in lane 7. They're up and running a nice clean start here. Let's see who wants it more. The athlete out there, it seems to be the athlete from finish line. Running out there in lane five. You look at the runners. Destiny Padmo from runners. It's a complete different set of athletes here, but a good strong run here. For the athlete out there in lane five to win this preliminary event. And that was actually the girls on the 20, 200 meters. Kamisha Dominic, it was on this occasion from Track Blazers 24.98. Ziana was second with uh, 26.61. So 24.98 would be the fastest time we've had so far from these under 20 girls from Kamisha Dominic. So that was actually a combination again of some of the athletes in the second preliminaries and uh, the fourth preliminaries. It makes it a little difficult for us here in the commentary position when uh, these uh, preliminaries are combined and we're not updated on the, the, the list of participants in the event. Mm -hmm. But a good run indeed by Kemisha Dominic of Track Blazers. She'd have had the fastest time amongst all of the preliminaries, 24.98. Shante Augustine, 25.08. And uh, Curdy and Philip, 25.56 would have been the top three times in the girls under 20 200 meter dash the boys are lined up now for the 200 meter dash there are going to be four preliminaries as well and we will see uh, Jassy McSween from South City Rising Stars he's in lane one Shaquin Thomas from McDonald College should be in two Devante Joseph of Altitude in three Rickel Telemark definitely one to look out for he's already made the qualifying mark in the 400 meters a blistering time of 46.97 Joshua Greenwich of Bolt is in five. Anton Daniel of Track Blazers in six. Daryl Phillip of Boca will be running out of seven. And Sean Henry of Finish Line in lane eight. This is going to be a fast one. Keep your eyes on the track. Rickel Telemark, student who has been doing well over the years and continues to do well and returning these very impressive times. 46.97. In the 400 meters and i'm sure he's going to be looking for another very impressive time in the 200 meters it is still the preliminary so you may want to conserve some for the finals but it's going to be maybe a walk in the park here for telemark in this the first of four preliminaries And they're up and running here. Telemark with the white and red and the headband here. The tall, lanky figure of Rikal Telemark. He comes off the turn with a sizable lead of the over the rest of the field. And heads into the home straight now with 80 meters or so to go. Rikal Telemark looks over his left shoulder. There's no competition. He turns off the afterburners. Courses to the finish line quite comfortably indeed. And we will still look to see what time he would do. Notwithstanding that he shut down with maybe 60 meters to go. Rikel Telemark looking in ominous form here. The athlete to beat maybe one of the star performances of the game so far. In my estimation, that time in the 400 meter would be the standout time. Rikel Telemark definitely one for the present and one for the future. Twenty-one point six nine. The car after standard twenty-one point five, and the way he ran that race in the preliminaries. It seems as though that would be an easy qualifi qualifying for him 
because he really turned it off quite early. 21.69 is indeed an impressive time in the manner in which he completed that race. Definitely a name to keep in mind. Rickel Telemark. This is not an athlete that has just emerged on the scene. For those of you who have, who have been following track and field, would have followed Telemark uh, throughout the ranks. And now I, I think he is in the best form of his life. Look at the stride and the form. He looks over the right shoulder, over the left shoulder, sees no competition whatsoever, and just turns it off and courses home jogging a walk in the park as i said earlier on and still returning 21.69 that is going to be an athlete that is going to be posing a lot of challenge a lot of competition at the character games we get ready for heat two or four we will see in lane two karim bernard of bolt devon Payne of TNTC, Elisha, Elisha Williams of Track Blazers, he'll be in lane four, another athlete to look out for, and he should form part of that quartet that I spoke about that should be part of the 4x400 team at Carifta Games. Brian Isaac of SAS is in five, Daryl Ticker of Speed Zone in six, Hussein Jabba of Runners in seven, and Brian Hector of MVP in eight. Elisha Williams, lane four. One of the favorites in this preliminary. There they go. Williams already making up the stagger here on the two athletes to his right. Williams, Elisha Williams of uh, Track Blazers comes off the turn in the lead. Big burly figure of Elisha Williams. Did an impressive 49 seconds in the 400 meters last year. And also turning it off towards the finish line. Having realized that he's going to win this one, really conserving some energy into the finals, Elisha Williams, St. Davis Track Blazers. There's going to be another showdown in the finals between Telemark, Elisha Williams, Tegan Peterkin, Emilio Bishop. They're all going to be lined up in the finals from my own calculations. An easy victory here for Elisha Williams. Look forward to see what time he would have returned. Yeah, 21.72. Again, an impressive time having slowed down tremendously towards uh, the finish line. Telemark still has a slightly better time than him of 21.69. Brian Isaac of SAS, not bad, 22.72. We have to be careful here, a wind speed of 3.3, that's uh, an illegal wind speed, so to speak. So he did got some assistance here from the wind. And uh, so we must be mindful of that as well. Again, we encourage you to stick around for the finals, especially in this under 20 boys category. A lot of competition there. And I make the point again that Grenada should feel a very good 4 by 100 meter relay team as well as a 4 by 400 meter relay team. Once they can get maybe an additional two athletes who can maybe double up in other events to be part of that uh, character team, I think it's going to be a tremendously strong and medal contending relay team from Grenada at the Carifta Games. Time is going to tell, let's see what happens, but this is just to say that we have seen some very, very good athletes in that particular category of under 20. and. Uh, we really hope that they can be put together on a team uh, for character games and, and other events as well. Hit three would feature Shimar Foster, Samuel Green from Fusion, Tegan Peterkin, we've known of him over the years, Mister. Kevin Martin, Lennon Williams, Kelson Andrew, and DeAndre St. Louis. Tegan Peterkin, I recall him as a sub junior. Very impressive indeed. Even out of the primary school. You know, he had some injury issues over the years and is maybe making a comeback now. But definitely he was one of the future bright stars on the track for, for Grenier. 
I see him again in the, four, in the 200 meters this time, in the, three, in the third of four preliminaries. Samuel Green is definitely going to offer some good challenge to him on his inside in, in three. Well, there they go. Heat number three or four in the 200 meters under 20 boys. Looking good in lane three is Samuel Green. Samuel Green, a slight lead over P Peter King. Peter King from MVP comes back nicely here, using some strength here and wins it marginally over Samuel Green in lane two from Fusion. Not very often you see the lead being exchanged in a 200 meters, but coming up the turn, it was indeed Samuel Green who was in the lead. And then Tegan Peterkin turned it up a little bit with 80 meters to go and went past Green. And then they both basically went through the finish line just to ensure qualification into the finals. So Peterkin with 22.05. And Samuel Green with 22.20. I believe both these two times would earn them a place into the finals, considering that the top finishers from each of these preliminaries go through and then the next four fastest times. We still have one more preliminary to go in the under 20 boys 200 meter dash. And this final preliminary will feature Kimani Thorne, Kevin Martin, Emilio Bishop, another of the athletes to look out for. Josh M. Sylvester from SAS, who placed third in the 400 meters yesterday. Jolan Nangain from Boca, Julian Pear from Runners, and Joshua Paul of Track Blazers. An appreciable crowd has gathered here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for track and field. Track and field being one of the sporting disciplines that receives a lot of support from the sporting patrons here in Grenada. And they have already come out here in the numbers to view the national championship sponsored by Arisa Credit Union. So the athletes take up the position behind the blocks. Thornhill, Martin, Bishop, Sylvester. Langain, Peer, and Paul. The middle of the track is where the real action is going to be between Bishop and Sylvester. They're looking for a top position in this final. They're up and running and looking good. Sylvester comes out good. So too is uh, Bishop and Martin. Wrong in the third and running very close to each other. Almost even on the turn here. Uh, let's see who wants it more. South City Rising Stars. Emilio Bishop. Here comes Sylvester on the outside. It's a very close one. Bishop may have just edged him on the finish line here, but a very competitive one here between Emilio Bishop and Joshim Sylvester, South City Rising Stars and Sass, respectively. Again, we look forward to the time. These athletes did not ease up to the finish line, so they gave up their best here because they both wanted to win this heat. At one time, it looks as though Sylvester was in the lead, and then maybe just towards the finish line here, a little bit more strength from Bishop, and edging him is a very close one. We have to go to the finish, the photo finish for that. My call, it was Bishop. Indeed, it was Bishop with 21.98. A very impressive time indeed. 21.98 and uh, Sylvester 22.01. So the top finishers in the 200 meter dash should be Rikal Telemac of Fusion 21.69. Elisha Williams 21.72. Emilio Bishop 21.98 and then we had uh, Sylvester 22.01 Brian Isaac 22.72 these are some and of course Samuel Green 22 seconds flat and Tegan Peterkin 22.05 so these are look at the, the, the photo finish here the torso again determining the, the winner here and it was indeed Emilio Bishop who edged past uh, Josh M. Sylvester to win uh, this final preliminary but the finals is going to be a close one. Um, the two obvious favorites here will be Rikael Telemark and, uh, and uh, Elisha Williams. Both athletes really easing up towards the finish line and saving some for the finals. The other athletes may have given off, if not all, close to all that they had in the preliminaries. And uh, so we, will, we would wait to see what happens in the finals, but that is going to be a cracker, definitely a cracker. 
and uh, I believe we may see two or three athletes going below the 21.5 seconds as the character standard here. The, the game's record 21.2, less than Philip, and the national record 20.41, the Jaguar himself, Kirani James. The short put is in progress. We try to get, get you updated on what's happening there. The next event on the track would be the boys 200 meter dash 20 plus. The big men in the business, so to speak. Top speed, the gunners. And they're going after a record that was, the game's record that was set by Neil Peters in 2021, 21.43. It's good to see Neil still on the circuit. We saw him yesterday competing. The stadium record 20.16, Miguel Francis, and of course the national record 20.41, Kirani James. We expect to see two preliminaries in the boys 200 meter dash 20 plus. St. Joseph's Convent, St. Andrew. St. David RC is also here. The St. David Track Blazers are here. St. David Catholic Secondary also represented. St. Joseph's Convent, St. George also in the mix. The St. Andrew Anglican Secondary, as well as Sprinters Athletics Club. These guys are in as well. Speed Zone is here. South St. George government also in the mix. The Shaper Stunners are also here. Joined by the South City Rising Stars. Runners Athletics Club also represented. The Presentation Brothers College and McDonald College also here at the Arisa National Championships. The Grenada Boys Secondary School also here. Fusion Athletics Club, Finish Line Sports Club, Classic Lighting, Wester Hall Secondary, Bowl Track Club is here, the Boca Secondary, Altitude Track Academy, Alpha Junior School, and 473 MVP also at the Arisa National Championships 2023. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. Your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami. Arisa Mobile and Internet Experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. Arisa Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Arisa now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Arisa Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit arisacu.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Arisa Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe 
Maybe the way you shield me Maybe it's your smiles And the way you tell me It's okay to try Now I'm invincible I can pack my sack I can take the long road Cause it's okay to look back If I am scared I know you're there There's no limit to what we can do This is Ariza, your financial freedom, your future. Transform your life with Ariza's suite of loan products. Own your own vehicle, education, land, or home and anchor your roots. Start living the life you deserve by applying for an own-your-own loan at reduced interest rates. Simplify your life and consolidate all your debts by applying for a Simplify loan and open doors to new beginnings and explore more opportunities to shape your future. Call or send us a WhatsApp on 423-4987 or email us at loans at arisecu.com today to continue your journey towards financial freedom. Terms and conditions apply. Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami, a Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Ariza now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Ariza Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit ArisaCU.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Arisa Credit Union. Your
Viewers, we welcome you back to the Horizon National Championships right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, downtown Spice Capital, St. George's. Again, Joseph Cado and myself, Leslie Smith, bringing you the live coverage. Um, there's absolutely nothing happening on the track now, so those of you who are concerned in the short break that we've had moments ago, is because the athletes are getting ready for the preliminaries in the 4x100 meters for the under 11s and under 13. Joseph, over a day and a half, we've seen some tremendous performances from some of the athletes. But I want us to zero in on maybe the importance of these games and what it means for these athletes and for selection purposes for the national team and even going beyond that. How important are, are, are these games and these races for these youngsters? I mean, Smith, it is very, very important. And good afternoon and thank you for those of you that's probably just joining us or well, uh, rejoining us. I mean, for many of the athletes, if not all of them, they will tell you it's so, so them, and it's important at different stratas. For those that are vying for placement on national team, for Carifta, because you can well appreciate, um, Leslie, that the national champs, it is the benchmark that is used for selection at the Carifta Games. So, so for many of these athletes, they want to be able to, to say to the, selected, to the selectors, listen, I am in good shape. And for, for many others, they use it as a, as a gauge as to where they are in preparation for Intercall, which is just under two weeks away. And so it is really, really quite, quite, quite important. And given the, the mix of athletes that you find here, I think for all athletes, they look forward to the occasion that they could come and be able to measure, compete among their peers, compete against some of the other rival schools as they set the tone for the rest of the athletic season. And you mentioned Intercall. Intercall is going to be, I think, March 28th, 29th, 30th, over yes. three days. And it's an interesting dynamic here because, because of the, the rivalry that exists at Intercall and schools going all out. I know schools that don't mind, winning, don't mind losing any other sporting disciplines but win Intercall games. Mm -hmm. And because of that and uh, the, the, the closeness of the character games, a lot of the schools tend to get the athletes peak for intercall games yes and sometimes they pick up injury too and can't go on if they qualify for the character games and so because these two events are so close and you want your athletes maybe to pick for character games which is a more elite competition but the schools definitely has a, a, a greater focus on intercall games it sort of put the athlete in a, a dilemma there because sometimes they want to mm -hmm. pick for national champs, which is now right. to ensure a place at the character games. Mm -hmm. And then they still want to maintain that optimum level of performance for intercall. And that has been sometimes one of the, the arguments that has been, that's been made over the years um, as to whether or not which one should come, which should precede which. Um, because you suddenly you see athletes at the national level and the enemy may probably don't quite shine, but it goes back to the point that you're actually making. When are they peaking? And it goes back to the point that we've over the years made an argument, okay, but I saw him at national champs. He went on to enter to Carifta. He doesn't look that brilliant. And then you may see other athletes performing at intercall. And you say to yourself, wow, how come he or she isn't on the intercall, on, the, the, on the Carifta team? But it's those variations in the, in the dynamics in that the national championships is what is used as a benchmark. But as you said, these athletes, they are pre preparing for the ultimate rivalry, which, which is, is intercall. Intercall. Yeah. intercall. And then you made a point, which is an interesting one, that we see athletes perform very well at intercall and are not on the character team. But one also has to be mindful that the character team has to be selected and submitted by a particular time. Correct. And so even if an athlete performs well after that time, they may not necessarily be a part of the character team, which is maybe unfortunate, but that is the way these things go. In a moment, we will have a chit-chat with the president of the Grenada Athletics Association. He's here, um, a very familiar name in track and field in Grenada, none other than Mr. Conrad Francis. He's going to join us while we have that short uh, break in the track events to have a discussion and maybe to zero in on the same conversations we've been having here in terms of the athletes speaking at the right time, whether it's for national champs, intercall, character games, based on where the level of importance is being placed by the coaches and so on. But we're going to hear from Conrad uh, just now. We're going to also hear from him in terms of the, the organization of these games and what it means for track and field and for the athletes and for all of the stakeholders, including the sponsors. 
and the plans and programs of the GAA moving forward. So I say good afternoon to Mr. Conrad Francis, a household name in track and field in Grenada, has served Grenada in various capacities in track and field as an athlete, as a coach, as an administrator now. Conrad, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith, and good afternoon to all the listeners out there. I say pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Well, it's Conrad, a pleasure to be here. Conrad, you've been around for decades, um, yourself and others who have um, paved the way for track and field here in Grenada. Um, let's first of all talk about National Champs 2023, maybe the first um, um, full national championship since the, the pandemic. And uh, we've seen some outstanding performances, but zeroing first of all on the level of organization as required to put these games together, um, the involvement of all the stakeholders and, and, and how you've performed thus far at these games. Yes, as you correctly said, um, it is the first full-fledged games uh, since the pandemic. Last year we had a one-day games, but this year it's two days. And um, it's a difficult task to organize a meet like this. You know, um, it takes a lot, a lot of volunteerism from from our 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 board, uh, and I want to stress here that the Grenada Athletic Association is a volunteer organization. I want to stress that because there are a lot of misgivings out there, and people are saying that we get paid and so on. That is absolutely false. Every single member of our board volunteers their time and, and, and effort in seeing that uh, the development of track and field in Grenada. Let's look and, at the games itself. And Sorry. that being said, that being said, the, the level of organization that goes into it, it's quite a lot. In these days of technology and you have Zoom meetings, we were having Zoom meetings for the last three months or so every single week sometimes twice a week in terms of organizing these games right um, we have our our local organizing committee which are responsible for for organizing games so so this committee has been working steadfastly in trying to put these games together and and today you are seeing the success of it yesterday we had a a, a bumper crowd and today it is building up nicely again yeah, we know there's a lot of support for track and field, and maybe we could segue now into the performances on the track that we've seen for the day and a half so far. And we've highlighted some of them. Of course, I'm, I'm sure you have in your own mind some of those athletes who have come through the ranks and, and, and did well over the day and a half and who have made the qualifying mark for character as well. But give us your own impression on the level of performance. I recall, just before you say that, a couple of years ago when we were doing national champs here, we were saying, where is the next national or international athlete going to come from? We are not seeing that prospect on the track. But give us your perspective on what you've seen so far in 2023. Well, I tend to disagree with you in terms of not seeing that on the track. Um, or were you speaking about in the past? In the you past. Not in seen the past oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, well, I don't think it was a wrong yesterday, but yesterday we had some outstanding performances, and again today we 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 are we are seeing that um, we have people like uh, Rikel Telemark running a 46.99 seconds in the 400. I mean, not since the days of, Kar of Kirani and Rondell we have seen such performances, and even the 400, it. It ran deeper than when Rondell and Kirani was was competed. I mean, we had four guys going under 50 seconds. You know, I, I think even about five of them going under 50 seconds. I mean, this is a first for me in Grenada in terms of of junior junior boys. So it runs deep. And um, today again, we seen some good performances in the 200 meters. That's a final to look forward to look forward to. And um, it, the under 17 boys, Ethan Sam in the 200 meters again running 21 point. Seven you one, know, yeah. yeah, you know, that's, that, that's, that's tremendous. Um, so there, there's a bright future for track and field in Grenada. There are a group of l nice young athletes coming forward and, and doing well. And all kudos to, the, to, the, to their coaches. Um, I don't know if you are following track and field in, how how deep you follow the track and field, but 
what is what has been happening over the last five years or so is that in St. George's there has been a plethora of of clubs springing up. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier in the, in the broadcast. In so I'm <laughs> fully aware. I'm fully aware. <laughs> Right, and there's some young coaches, and these guys they 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 are working extremely hard. So you know? so stick up in your corner because I don't want to lose the trend of thought. Two important <laughs> things you're mentioning: one, the the quartet of boys that we saw in the 400 meters, and it augurs well for a very strong, a competitive four by 400 meter relay team if we can get two additional um, athletes to support them. And we would like to know what maybe the plans moving forward. We have seen the, the Telemax, the Sylvester, the, uh, uh, the others who have done well in the under 20 boys uh, 400 meters. And it also speaks well for even a four by 100 meter relay team. So I would want you to comment on that. And then the other issue with the clubs. So St. George's have seen that plethora of clubs coming through. We've yet to see that in the other parishes. So I'm saying, what can we do to use that best practice, so to speak? to get more clubs in St. Andrew, for example, where we have a lot of athletes. So in addition to ACC see altitude coming forward now. St. Patrick, we have not seen a club in St. Patrick for quite a number of years. There is one on the western side, Speed Zone, Karaku. What else can be done with support from the GAA to, to, to assist in the formation of those clubs? So if you can comment on those two issues, the relay team, because a lot of people have been commenting on yeah. that, and the, the, the spreading of the clubs in the other parishes. Yeah. I'll take a last question first because I don't want to lose the thought also. Um, you, you, are, you are very correct. Um, we have a sort of falling away of the, the clubs in the, rural, in the rural areas. And I, I will say to in the schools also, we are not seeing um, real coaching taking place in the school. The competitiveness that existed before, you're not, you're not, you're not seeing that. Um, and also, when it's competitive in the schools, you know, it, it urges coaches to now go and form, and form clubs with these athletes for when they leave school, they have somewhere to, um, to, fall, to fall into, to continue their, their careers. Um, so we as a GAA, we have, we have recognized that and in our strategic plan for the next four years we ha have that um, more participation more clubs more fans so we are coming up with plans to to see if we can revive some of these clubs or to form new clubs in in these rural rural areas because you know that the rural areas really have should have much stronger people than in the St. George's area a lot more talent and, and, well. a, and a lot more talent as you correctly says you know but um, talent alone can do it. You know, you need to to nurse this um, this this talent. Um, so 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 that's a brief answer. Um, we can expand on this some more in the future. But um, to answer your your first question, um, yes, there has been a clamor for us to feel a four by four, four by one team since the last two Carifta games. But we have we have stood our grounds on that and we said to the clubs and people who clamor for that we say yes four by one yes four by four but you cannot you cannot build a four by four team by just selecting people and then saying okay we're building a four by one or we're building a relay team it does not happen so you must have the guys running fast you must have the people running fast first and last year we we resisted that and we said hey you have to run fast we have to have five six boys running fast right uh, so we'll come back to the cover because we're getting ready to go back track side for some more live track action and we're happy to have you here to offer those explanations and and, and comments so we'll see in this heat here mvp in lane one that's the four by 100 meter really under 11 under 13 and um, we'd also see McDonald College in two, Bolt in three, St. David RC in four, South City Rising Stars in five, Sprinters in six, and uh, Trailblazers in seven. It may be a combined uh, set of events here.
So for MVP, we should see the quartet of Bain, Glennis, John, and Jaden. McDonald College, we should see McFarlane, Sabrina, Martin, and Gabriella. Also, Zara Barrett and Katie Walker should be part of the MVP quartet. Darius, Anaya Darius, and Wendisha Caton, part of the MDC quartet. For bowls, we should see Kayla Andrew, Sapphire Noel, Julia Edwards, Kariana Phillip, St. David RC, Kevon Joseph, Zurich Thomas, Rashida Fortune, Katisha Patris, South City Rising Stars, Rashida Fortune, Derisa Paul, Kirana Mitchell, and uh, Katisha Patris. For sprinters, Shania Thomas, Kelsey John, DeAndre Henry, Henry and uh, Jada Paul. They are on their marks now, the start of the 4 by 100 meter relay on the 11, on the 13. Again, MVP, MDC, Bolt, St. Davis RC, South City Rising Stars, Sprinters, Track Blazers. This event would feature a lot of the athletes out of the primary schools. You see the St. Davis RC here, but most of these athletes in the U11, U13 are actually athletes at the primary school level. And uh, across all categories, we, we've been witnessing some very outstanding performances. Um, even in some of the the primary school games we've seen over the season, some very good performances have been shown from some of these youngsters. And again, it's because they attend these clubs at a very early age these days. So they're going to have another attempt here at the 4x100 meters on the 11, on the 13. And it looks like a nice clean start here now. Let's see who's going to make up the early stagger. It looks as though it's an athlete out there, maybe from the St. Davis RC. The first handover takes place here. Now we have a falter in the batter here. As uh, they continue on the outside, it looks as though it's sprinters. Well, we see MVP making their way up in lane one. Second handover as they come around that final bend before the final handover, the final exchange. And that final burst of speed towards the finish line. Oh, there in lane seven, it looks, it looks as though it's the athlete from the South City Rising Stars. But on the outside, is the athlete from Sprinters. So it's Sprinters in the lead, followed by South City Rising Stars. And uh, that's how it's going to end up here. In the 4x100 meter, really, on the 11, on the 13. So, Colonel, if we can just continue the conversation between the races here again. And you are making the point about the the, the relay teams. Yes, uh, um, I was making the point that um, there was this great clamor for for relay teams in the last couple of years. But we, as a federation, we analyzed it and we said that um, we at least ought to have about five or six boys running fast in order to put a relay team together. And this year, we have seen we have seen this. Um, um, for the boys, four by one seniors, there are about five or six boys that we can call upon to to um, form that really team, and also in the four by four, in the boys under seventeen, we have seen a nice four by one team that we can we can also um, develop, because um, even in the boys four by four, there's one athlete in the in the, in the diaspora, he's the son of um, um, one of our a former national record holder in the 400 meters, um, that's Charmaine, Charmaine Ross. She's now Philip, you know. Um, her son um, is running pretty good. Uh, he has and Ross would have been an athlete for the seven years. Indoors. Yes. At, yeah. at Boca <laughs> Secondary, I think. Yes, she was. She was. Right, and um, he, he has run 47 no indoors, you know, which could translate to, you know, 46 points. So the question I want to ask you, Connor, from what you have seen this year and from what you've just mentioned with um, young Ross, do you think we have the caliber of athletes that we can put together a formidable... Uh, yeah, that's what I just said. That, right. that now we have, now we have about six, about six boys that 
we can put a team together yeah because a relay is not made up of just two persons running running fast Good times, yeah. <laughs> we know? need at least six persons we need at least six six guys right and um and we are seeing that now is it the same yeah. for the four by 100 meters is as it? it is for the four by four is it the same as the four by one do you yes, have yes, six yes, guys as well? Yes, yes. Okay. In the in the four by one, yeah. Some some may double, you know, because you know, you could see people like um both Rikel and, and Elijah getting in into the four by one. It all depends on, on, on what these deve- these events, you know, are. And um you know again if we have sufficient boys that we can um, leave them out of the heats of the 4x4. Four four. You know, there's a number of, of, of variants that, that has to be looked at. Right. And, and then, um, further than Carifta, we're looking at the GWA again in terms of our international meets and, and selection of teams and participation. Um, what do we have coming up and who are some of the, the brighter prospects we have internationally on the college circuit and so on? that we're looking forward to, to giving good representation. But we have the CAC games coming up, I think, sometime in, 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 in July, and we are hoping to, to have a team, to have a team there. Um, we also have world, world championships in, in, in Budapest, Hungary, and we're hoping that our, our elite athletes would, would, would be there. Um, well, we already have like three of these athletes qualify, um, Kirani, Lyndon Victor and Anderson Peters, they have already qualified. Because as you know, you must qualify in order to, um, to enter these games. Um, then we have a couple of junior games in which, in which we, we hope to participate in. And of course, character games is just, is just around the corner. And we are hoping to at least have, have, a, have, have a team there. Um, you have seen that some of the athletes have already qualified. and. Um, by tomorrow, we should have that team, that team finalized because the deadline has already passed for entries, um, and we we have asked for an extension to Monday, where we can submit submit our. And our and, team. and we had that conversation moments ago between Carlo and myself, that sometimes we see athletes doing well at intercall, and people say, why are they not on the character team? But they don't understand yeah. those dynamics that you have to submit those teams yeah. way ahead of of intercall yeah. games. Yeah. Intercall was never used in the past and it will be very difficult to use intercall as a qualification meet for character because most of the times the deadline is long, is, is long before before um, before intercall so the the criteria is that you must participate in our national championships um to to gain selection to the um to the character team but sometimes what do happens is that um it it um we do ask for extension sometimes you know using our liquor strings we pull our strings <laughs> you know we're going to come right back to that as we go to the boys on the 11 on the 13 4 by 100 meter relay we have uh, racers we have mcdonald college south city rising stars bolt uh st nevis track blazers in two and velocity is in five so let's see who makes up the early star uh, velocity in five is looking good so to his South City Rising Stars in six, but uh, McDonald College is also looking good there in lane number four. Seems to be in the lead now is McDonald College. McDonald College running very strong. The, fa- the, th- the second hand over here, McDonald College comes out first. A good run on the inside in lane two by uh, in lane three by Racers Track Club. But McDonald College leads this one here into the final handover. Uh, it's going to be a clean take here. They fumble a little bit here, McDonald College, but with the, the lead that they had, still recovers. But a very strong run indeed it is by the athlete in, from racers in lane three. But McDonald College seemingly would win this one comfortably, maybe by 10 meters or so. It's McDonald College followed by racers in three. And then on the other side for third and fourth in seven, it looks as bold uh, for the third position. That was the 4x1 meter under 11, under 13. Conrad, another thing we want to talk about is athletes peaking at the right time and what are they peaking for which particular event. So some athletes would want to peak for national champs to gain selection, but because of that rivalry and and significance of intercall, some coaches try to get the athletes to peak for intercall 
And then we have Karifta, which is maybe the, the premiere of all of these events in which you really would want him to, to, to pick for, to, to, to establish good international uh, uh, times. What is your take on that and how the coaches should manage these athletes to ensure they get the best from them at all of the events? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Eh? Um, again, it all depends on the coach and the athlete, what the, what the goal is, what the focus is for the season. Um, when coaches are making up their programs, their annual programs, because our, our track season starts from September, right, um, and, and goes right up to, to June, uh, July, right? So the first thing that the coaches and the athletes have to do is sit together and decide what your goal is, which games are you preparing for, and you work backwards, right? So if your main goal is character, so you start from character and you work backwards. So that's your, that's your main, that's what you're focusing on. So anything that comes before that is just preparation, right? And you have to decide w what period of time, you know, when you do your periodization, you would, you would realize when, when you want to peak for. If you're peaking for, for character, you know that intercall is not your primary meet, all right? If you're, if you're peaking for your school meet, then you know, this is, this is where you have to peak for. But in our local situation, and from my experience, um, well, I'll tell you what I used to do when I was at Boca School. You come to a Boca School Sports, and then there's somebody will say, like if SAS set out a scout to Boca Sports, right? And they say, oh, Boca doesn't have anything, anything significant, you know? Because I am working my athletes during Boca School Sports on an overload. I'm overloading them. I'm not, I'm not, I, I haven't started to lower my intensity yet. I'm not peaking them, right? So I will start, start my peaking process from national championships, right? So I start to lower, lower it at national championships. And between national champs and intercall is, is most times a two week, a two week period. So that's when I start peaking. And then if character is my main goal, I hold the peak from I hold the peak from from intercall to character, which is again maybe just another two weeks. Alright? So it there's there's So it's a conversation between the coach and the athlete and the, athlete, and yeah. the events that they're the event the major at. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and you have to the understand periodization, you know, and when you want to pick your athletes for. It's 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 complex. But our coaches these days, they, they, they have the knowledge of how to do it, and they do it. So viewers, we, we're chatting here with Conrad Francis, the president of the Grenada Athletic Association. Uh, there are no events on the track at the moment. There are still some field events in progress. Conrad, the field events is an area Grenada has done very well at Carifta, and even at the international circuit now with Anderson Peters doing so well. At this national championship here, we have not seen the emergence of uh, a, a field event athlete coming close to the character standards. What is happening in, in the field? But we have some good athletes in the field, in the field still, especially in the javelin. Um, you are aware that we had um, we had five meets between October and February, right? And in those meets, we saw very good performances from our javelin athletes. As a matter of fact, two of those athletes qualified for character during those meets. I think it was, but three of the meets um, were, we, we called mini meets, and the other two, we converted them to, we called one the Adrian Mitchell meet. Okay. So what we do, Conrad, we'll go down uh, track side to get the medal presentation, and then we'll come back with your comment here on the field event. So let's take in the medal presentation as uh, Permanent Secretary Alva Brown is making the presentation to the athletes. Medal presentation for the boys 20 plus, boys 20 plus. Third position, Evans Smith, a distance of 29.88 meters from the South City Rising Stars. Second position, with a distance of 33.86 meters from the St. David's Shark Blazers, Kalim Francois. 
And your winner from the St. David's Shark Blazers with a distance of 38.34 meters, Shamir Thomas. Medal for your winners for the Discus 20 plus. Medal presentation for the boys shot put, the boys shot put 20 plus. Third position from the St. David's Shark Blazers, Shamir Thomas, a distance of 11.53 meters. Second position, also from the St. David's Shark Blazers, Kalim Francois, 11.365 meters. And your winner from the South City Rising Stars, a distance of 12.59 meters, Devon Augustine. Your winners for the boys short put 20 plus. Medal presentation for the shot put under 20. Shot put under 20. In third position from the St. David Shark Blazers, Peter Hostin, a distance of 12.38 meters. Medal presentation also for the in second position from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, Sheldon Hosford, a distance of 12.52 meters. And your winner. From the St. David's Shark Blazers, Jamie Lawrence, 14.36 meters. Medal presentation for the girls' long jump open. Girls' long jump open. In third position from the South City Rising Stars, Shante Mitchell. Second position. From the South City Rising Stars, Christine Charles. And your winner from Finish Line Sports Club, Xenia Bain, a distance of 5.20 meters. Event medal presentation for Event 47, the girls 100 meters under 11. Third position from the Bolt Track Club, Kenya Phillip, a time of 14.53 meters. Second position from Runners Athletics, Michaelia George, 14.52 meters. And your winner from the South St. George Government School, Leah Rose Charles, a time of 14.34 meters. The winners were the girls 100 meter under 11. Medal presentation for the, girl, the 100 meters under 13 female. In third position from the Bolt Track Club, Renel Cockburn, a time of 13.89 seconds. Second position, Janelle Smith, Runners Athletics, 13. Point eight five seconds. And your winner from the St. David's Track Blazers in a time of 13.65 seconds, Elijah Rose Benjamin. The winners of the girls 100 meter under 13. Medal presentation. For the boys, 100 meter under 11. Third position, Shavin Cockburn. Bolt track club, a time of 14.32 seconds. Second position, from the Bolt track club, Randy Perriman Jr., 14.10 seconds. And your winner, from the Fusion Athletic Club, Jonathan Labari, a time of 13.88 seconds. Your winner for the boys, 100 meter under 11.
medal presentation for the under nine girls, 150 meters. In third position, from the M473 NVP Track Club, Jaden John. A time of 25.13 seconds. Second position from the St. David's Track Blazer, Sanjay Simon, 23.29 seconds. And their winner from the Velocity Track Club, Joshon Johnson, Jazion Johnson, 23.06 seconds. The winners of the girls, 150 meters on the nine. Medal presentation for the boys on the nine, 150 meters. Third position, Joel Theodore, Velocity Track Club, 23.34 meters, seconds. Second pos position, represented the Fusion Athletic Club, J.U. Roberts, 22.64 seconds. And your winner, the champion from Finish Line Athletic Club, Keishon Korb, 22.36 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the boys, 150 meters on the nine. This concludes the medal presentation for the first session. We want to thank P.S. Brown for assisting with this medal presentation. Viewers, we welcome you back to the Horizon National Championships right here at the Kriani James Athletic Stadium, downtown Spice Capital, St. George. We still have with us here Mr. Conrad Francis, the president of the Grenada Athletic Association. And uh, we just saw another medal presentation just to advise you on some of the upcoming events. We're going to have the 800 meters for the octathlon and the 1500 meters for the heptathlon. Um, those of you who are, in who are interested in the 200 meter dash 20 plus, it appears as though there will be a straight finals to this event, and so that would happen later on uh, this afternoon. Um, we still have the 4 100 meter relay open for both the male and female as well as the under 20, so stay tuned for those events. Well, Connor, we want to speak a little bit about the upcoming plans of the Grenada Athletic Association. We know national championships is just one of the many activities we saw quite a number of the um, mini meets so to speak the charlie george ones and the others throughout the season but let's go beyond that now and look to the future as to what is in the immediate plans in terms of track and field for the gwa yes well our next meet would be on would be in may the whitsuntide the whitsuntide games well i think before the whitsuntide games we have we, we have another relay meet. You remember last year we had a, a G2A's relays, right? Um, we are going to have this relay meet again. I think it's on the 6th of May. Um, and this relay meet is when we ask for event sponsorship. And it was really big last year and we are hoping to make it bigger again. Because the more, art, the more competition our athletes get, is the better they will, they will, they will perform. After that, we have the Whitsuntide Games. And you know, the Whitsuntide Games is a perennial games in the dating way back to the 1950s. Um, last year, we had it for one day coming back from the pandemic, and we had over 600 athletes participating. Of course, we had athletes from St. Vincent, St. Vincent Cable with two boatloads 
of athletes right um so we're going to have the whistle tie games again but we are hoping that there will we are very it, it looks very promising that we'll have a very special feature in the Whitsuntide Games this year. We have been asked by our regional body to host the NACA combined events. And we are, are go, moving fully ahead in planning for that to happen. Now, Whitsuntide Games, the NACA Decathlon is a big something for us. Because, as you know, we have two athletes, two elite athletes, in the decathlon. And when I say the elite, I mean they are ranked among the world's best. And they have never performed in a decathlon event in front of their home crowd. And it will be something to behold to have um, decathletes from our region. And our region has some of the better decathletes. So, in for the, the benefit of the, the viewers, the can, you, can you name them for us? Um, we have, I think the name just slipping me down, but we have the Canadians. I think one of the Canadians is the, is the, is the world champion. Um, I can't remember his name off my head. And, and then we know that the Americans are always very good in the, in the, in the decathlon. And then we have our very own Lyndon, Lyndon Victor. So we have an opportunity to actually host that event here during the Wilson Tide Games. Of course, of course. And it, it looks very positive. And we are working steadfastly ahead to make this happen. So track and field fans, something definitely you'd want to look forward to during the Whitsuntide Games. Let's hope the GWA can make that uh, a reality. And outside of the Whitsuntide Games, Conrad, is that going to be the final event for the GWA for the athletic season? Yes, this will be our, our final big event. But we are also hoping to have um, what we call the age group, age group championships. Um, and age group championships is for athletes between 11 and 12 and uh, 12 and 13, I mean 13 and 14, whereby it is a sort of combined events. They participate in various events and it's, it's just like a combined event, they score points. So it is a good place to start and to, to look at the nursery that we have and to have them participate in multiple disciplines because you never know when they grow older which events they would um, they would specialize in so Connor, there are three things i attribute to an athlete's success one is the raw talent two uh the the, the facilities and three the equipment um from the gwa perspective especially outside of st george the rural areas we know that there is a lot of raw talent there but in terms of the equipment and the development of the, of the facilities, um, I think there's a lot more that can be done. Let's look at an, uh, an event as hurdles, for example, that I'm sure that there is a lot of talent for hurdles in the, the rural areas. And we want to apologize to the viewers just in case you're having a, a slight problem with the audio. We're trying to rectify that here. We know of efforts to bring the hurdling equipment in the rural areas, but I still believe that there is insufficient of that. And then there are other types of equipment used in other, other events that uh, there may be some limitations for the athletes. And then we look at the facilities, the condition of the facilities to, to really aid and to bolster the performances. How can we put that combination of factors together? The talents, the facilities, the equipment to ensure that we get the best out of the athletes. Okay, I want to add a, another factor, a good coaching. Don't leave out that part, all right? Um, now, you, you, you mentioned the hurdles, all right? I don't know if you remember that when we hosted a character in 2000, as a matter of fact, in, in 1998, we started a, 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 a hurdles program because we knew we were going to host Carifly in, in, in 2000. And in 2000, we did not get a medal at Carifly here. But when we went to Barbados the next year, we got about two medals in the hurdle events. So we had a very good program going on. And, and I, you know, I, 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 I don't like the reference to, to, the, to the rural to the rural areas because that program was spread right throughout Grenada. In fact, Shane Charles was a, was a product 
of, of that. And he was a, a student at SAS at the time, right? Coached by, by Wayne Max Reed. In St. David's, we had Ali Lett, who, who actually run 13 points something in the hurdles. But you're speaking about two exceptional parishes, right. St. Andrew <laughs> and St. David. But let's look at St. Patrick, Carrier right. Coo, the western <laughs> side, right? I'm sure there is talent there too. We, we yeah, yeah, yeah. And to address that, we have certainly addressed that. Eh? Um, the GAA, we have, you must have heard about our AOD program. It was a grassroots program that we ran for, 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 for the last four years. It ended uh, just before the, the pandemic. Right. And in this program, we sought to teach, to teach athletes, young athletes. One of the events we, we targeted was hurdling. And part of that program also had the, the acquisition of equipment. And some of the equipment that we acquired was hurdles. If you go to Tantin in St. George, you will see a trailer, a container there. We have equipment in that container. You go to St. David's, we have a container there also with equipment, with hurdling equipment. In St. As, okay, in summary, we have hurdles in all the parishes in Grenada. And that was from the GAA. And that, that, and that has been the second attempt of putting hurdles in various areas. When we had that program also in 1998, we spread hurdles right throughout the country. And not only having these hurdles there, but we had hurdles workshop. We brought um, Coach Coleman from Jamaica around the first hurdles course. Right, yeah. so, so that's hurdles, right? And that's an example I gave. But if we can move to the facilities. So we have a synthetic track here at the National Stadium. What efforts have been made to to, to have that dialogue with the powers that might be to get maybe a second and a third synthetic track. And because we saw the impact that the track had for athletes in Grenada. We now see St. Vincent and the Grenadines with a, a, a synthetic track. And uh, whereas in the past we would have had uh, a team from St. Vincent coming to our national champs here, uh, I'm sure they opted not to come because they have their own maybe um, facilities now and competitions. And we, we, we are aware of what that can do for their track and field as well. So it's already proven that the facilities can enhance performance. What efforts are on the way to, 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 to ensure that maybe we get a track in St. David, St. Andrew, or, or St. Patrick, or wherever else, Karaku, that can yeah. enhance these athletes' performance? Well, from the GAA perspective, I would say that um, we, the only thing that we can do is to encourage, encourage the government to... Um, to do such and probably advise them. Uh, not all governments take our advice, but we do, we do advise. But you might be surprised to know that, um, well, my personal view, my personal view on it is that I believe that in terms of improving performances, the first step is coaching. The first step is coaching. We need to have a more vibrant, um, education program to, to, to get our coaches up to speed with the technology and so on. And to get these coaches committed. Commitment in coaching is key for athlete performance. So and I, to I, I, motivate the athletes. And, and let me stick another point here. Having a stadium, having a stadium, and, 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 and probably you say track. Track might be a better word to use eh, than, than a stadium. Because you are seeing what, what is happening to our facilities, to our facilities, right, in terms of maintenance and such. And the displacement that having a stadium caused to, to, to our community. Yeah, today we do not have a vibrant Queen's Park Ridge as a vibrant Fontenoy because lack of space to play, for our kids to play, because the stadium has taken up all that space. So we have to be very careful when we look in to say, let's put a track here and let's put a track there because it, it picks up space so we have to be careful right um but be that as it may having a track let's say in st andrews find an appropriate place all right probably instead of converting instead of putting a track let's say progress park right if you could find another area and you put a synthetic track because progress park is a is a is a multidisciplinary a multi that's correct field so we have to be very careful right but we do support a synthetic track in, in let's say St. Patrick's or St. David's or so on. But 
as I said, we have to be careful with that. So just letting the viewers know there is actually no action on the track at the moment. We still have some field events in progress. And we just keep in conversation here with the president of the Grenada Athletic Association to get a perspective on the association's uh, involvement in the games and their plans and programs uh, for the development of sport, the selection of national teams. We have Carifta upcoming and uh, a, a number of other events, the Whitsuntide Games that we've grown accustomed to over the years, the national relay meets as well. And so we're very happy that uh, President Conrad Francis is able to join us here and to be part of the conversation during the events as we, we have that nice little uh, conversation and chit chat. So Conrad, I want to put you on the spot now. If there is one thing you would want to see happen in track and field in Grenada in the immediate future, what would that one thing be? As I said, I would love to see a more vibrant coaches education program. It is critical for the development so, of, so of, of... And I, I was about to comment on that moments ago, Conrad. Yeah, I want to take it up to you now, now that you brought it back. Yeah. So we have in Grenada a number of coaches that have been trained at different levels. You have your level one, level two that yeah. you would have facilitated. We even have as far, I think, a level five coaching yeah. instructor yeah. in the like of Mr. Wayne McSween. How can we harness his resources to help build that cadre of coaches and, and, and things that we speak about. And what about a coaches association? Is, that, is there anything like that in the thinking to, to coordinate the coaches to ensure that uh, the athletes get uh, the level of coaching that you're asking for? Well, first of all, let me, let me say that um, there is a, a, a coaches education program by World Athletics, you know. Um, and. Um, all of our coaches have come through that program. I, I came through that program, I reached the highest level and, and also a, 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 a lecturer in, in various parts of, of the Caribbean. Um, but somewhere along the line, there was a transition when, when um, the world body um, tried to um, revise the program and there has been a transitionary period. So the whole coaching programs, how it used to occur before it's not happening like that now and um, so you find that some of these programs are not as often as it really should be so what we have tried to do is to have our own local courses and we had a couple of those over the last three to four years right? and we see a lot of coaches come through that so what we are trying to do and part of our strategic plan is to have more of these national programs right and then we move on to to the world athletics program because our coaches are there they are they're yearning for 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 this for this knowledge and we are working towards it and that's why i'm saying that this is what i would like to see happen the most important thing that i feel should happen with our track and field in Grenada right now well, you're hearing it from the man himself, the president of the Grenada Athletics Association, Mr. Conrad Francis. And um, in addition to that, Conrad, I think we also need the club structures to be improved throughout the length and breadth of Grenada. And I think the two of them can work hand in hand to enhance the athlete's performance. But we have to put a wrap on the conversation. And I just want us to maybe to zero in again back on some of the outstanding performances for the day and a half we had so far. And I want to bring again, you mentioned a couple of them. I just want to reiterate. Ethan Sam's 21.71 in yeah. the 200 meters. I think it's a standard uh, performance. He qualifies for Carifta. So too is Tyreek McSween, 21.99 from St. David's Track Blazers. In the boys' 400 meter under 20, we saw that blistering race yesterday in which Rickel Telemark won in 46.97. As a matter of fact, in the 20 plus boys, Michael Franco won in 46.37, yeah. I think it was, which is very close to what uh, Telemark would have done. So again, a, a very impressive time by Rickel Telemark. And in the girls, we can't forget in the under 17 category, um, Shafonia Houston, yes. who ran 56.43 and would qualify for Carifta. And she was just outside of the 200 qualifying mark. And I think maybe if she was not involved in the long jump, she may have made that qualifying mark. So these to me were the very outstanding performances Ethan Sam and Rickel Telemark for sure. And uh, there have been others as well that have been very impressive.
but uh, these two definitely leave a sweet taste in our mouth so to speak in terms of the the most outstanding performances over the game so i leave you with some final comments maybe on the performances or on anything that you would want to add before we put a wrap on the conversation yeah well you said it correctly and i just want to add that those who missed these races yesterday they really missed a treat they missed something because it is something that um I personally have not behold <laughs> in track and field happen in Grenada where we have in one 400 meters race we had four to five boys going under 50 seconds this is unheard of not even in the days of Kirani and Rondell this happened Rondell Kirani was running ran, I think 45 9 or 46 flat in intercall and Rondell right behind him and the others were running 53 and 55 seconds now we have four or five boys running under 50 seconds that is an order right so it all augurs well for the for the event and the sport in Guinea. um also we're looking forward to see those same guys in the 200 meters Literally this afternoon today. so those who are home we are urging you to come down to queen's park to witness this because this is big this is huge Right. Um, tell a friend, tell a friend. <laughs> if you can't come, send the link for them. Tell them where, where, where they can view it. This is going to be a scorcher. This is going to be a cracker of a race here. Featuring the likes of uh, Telemark and uh, Sylvester and Elijah. Williams. Yeah, it's, it's going yeah. to be an interesting event. And you also have Tegan, Peter Kidd. You know, it's, Man, it's I would love to see a Tegan, Peter Kidd in ripping form as we saw him maybe five, yeah, six years yeah, ago. Yeah. Uh, we knew he had some injury yeah. issues, and then he had studies as well. But uh, a take on Peter Quinn in, in fine form would be a real challenge for uh, Telemark and Williams and the others. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was unfortunate that he got injured, you know. Uh, but he was one of the bright stars, the bright stars coming up. But also in the in the under seventeen, under seventeen boys, Ethan Sam, and uh, in Tyreek McSween, Ma Mark Entire. Tyreek McSween and uh, the redhead guy, these are four top guys. These young guys are, I mean, two of them went under 22 seconds and the others are there 22 about. So, so this is a top, top race again. The 100 meters, I think is coming up, is coming up later on. And <laughs> I don't think our, our, our <laughs> spectators should miss that. Any um, track and field lover will want to be right here at the stadium this afternoon. So, so it, it's, it's, it's something to look forward to. And I, I think um, Anderson Peters is also throwing this afternoon. So if we would want to come out and see our world champion throw in front of our very own eyes. So who wouldn't want to miss this for only $20? <laughs> well, there is a treat here at the National Stadium, the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. So we encourage folks who can to still come on down. Thank you very much, Conrad, for coming and sharing this perspective. and. Uh, giving your expert advice as well and, and and the plans and programs of the Grenada Athletic Association truly appreciative and we look forward to the other events that you have upcoming and we encourage all the fans to be a part of the national stadium if you can't if you're in the diaspora of course we're gonna endeavor to bring it to you live on the various social media platforms but again thank you very much and uh, we look forward to those exciting races that you mentioned moments ago later on in the program thank you it was a pleasure so viewers, we're going to take a short break here. There is absolutely nothing happening on the track in terms of events. And as soon as the events resume on the track, we'll be back to bring it to you. It's the Arisa National Championships 2023, an event, a premier event for the selection of the national team for the Carifter Games. And there are some exciting races upcoming, as you just had mentioned there. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more live track and field action. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. Your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami. A Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. 
The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Ariza now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Ariza Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit arisacu.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Ariza Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smile. And the way you tell me, it's okay to try. It's okay to look back if I am scared I know you're there Ooh. Arise uh, Together there's no limit to what we can do Arise uh, With no wings Fly Arise uh, And we're so high and joy the This is Ariza, your financial freedom, your future. Transform your life with Ariza's suite of loan products. Own your own vehicle, education, land, or home and anchor your roots. Start living the life you deserve by applying for an own-your-own loan at reduced interest rates. Simplify your life and consolidate all your debts by applying for a Simplify loan and open doors to new beginnings and explore more opportunities to shape your future. Call or send us a WhatsApp on 423-4987 or email us at loans at arisecu.com today to continue your journey towards financial freedom. Terms and conditions apply. Ariza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami, a Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Ariza now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Ariza Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit arisacu.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Ariza Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you. Something in these 
these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smiles and the way you tell me it's okay to try. This is Ariza. Your financial freedom, your future. Transform your life with Ariza's suite of loan products. Own your own vehicle, education, land, or home and anchor your roots. Start living the life you deserve by applying for an own your own loan at reduced interest rates. Simplify your life and consolidate all your debts by applying for a simplified loan and open doors to new beginnings and explore more opportunities to shape your future. Call or send us a WhatsApp on 423-4987 or email us at loans at arisecu.com today to continue your journey towards financial freedom. Terms and conditions apply. Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami, a Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Ariza now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Ariza Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit ArisaCU.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your...
Thank you. Welcome back. Good afternoon to you, to our listeners and wherever you are and viewers. Thanks for being part of this conversation. This is, in fact, the Arisa Credit Union National uh, Championships live here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. At present, there's a lull in the activities on the field, but what we can tell you is that it sets the anticipation for a grand finale, a number of really, really great and exciting events, um, AMAC for the second and last phase or what has been a really two great days of excitement uh, two days of the Arisa national championship and certainly i'm um, joining me right now is the man the marketing manager edwin francis mr edwin francis mr francis no doubt um for Arisa, you take pride in what has transpired so far for the last day and a half yes yes so far we have been here um for the entire day yesterday and so far today and we have been witnessing you know a good sportsmanship um athletics track and field so it's it's going good very exciting um we had a nice turnout yesterday um even the turnout today is, is great um most persons come in the evening but most likely after they were finished the sunday chores or, or going to church so there's a nice crowd downstairs and everyone so far is enjoying enjoying the sports everyone indeed is doing that it has been really really great and exciting moments um for Arisa, the rebranding back in 2016 and since then you've committed yourself to the task of development of, de of of developing the sport yes at Arisa, although our core is to provide financial services and to help persons achieve financial freedom it doesn't stop there we go beyond the call of duty because we believe in developing the individual holistically whether that be developing the communities in which we operate and in order to do that of course we must give back so we saw the need uh, to partner with entities and we have been doing that um, Troy Grace and Karako Piti Marnik um, ever since rebranded, and even before rebranded, but more so after rebranded. Um, for example, the Greater Alexis Association, we have been the title sponsor for the National Champs for the last five or six years, every year um, they have had it. Uh, so far, it's a very good partnership. Um, it's, going gr it's going great. Um, as part of our sponsorship for this year, we are actually awarding the athletes who are breaking a record, $150 cash. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, this is just to encourage you know, the participation because we know they are going out there, they are going to try to do the best because they want to qualify for the character games. But you know, sometimes they need that extra motivation. And this is all we are saying, you know, you deserve it, you are doing well, we want to reward you. So yes, as a financial institution, although our core is to provide financial services, we want to develop the individual holistically, we want to develop our communities, and we want to continue giving back. And certainly you have, you have been observing the development of athletics on across the island. You have one personal thoughts away from the marketing elements of it? Well, in regards to the market, there's something that I have noticed and the trend is now that persons are actually more interested now in track and field. And that could be attributed to some of our heroes like the Anderson and, and, and the Kirani James. What you notice now, you realize that a lot of young athletes who are going out there and they're basically they're pushing because now they're seeing the potential. They're seeing that they can be on the world stage, that they, they, can, they can represent the country. And with that new passion and with that new drive now, you're seeing a lot of interest in, in track and field. If you look at most of the track and field events that has happened so far for the year, in terms of the turnout, it has, in, it has increased. Um, likewise with the national championship, if you look at the turnout in terms of the participation, in terms of the persons coming and training on their, their favorite clubs and school, it, it has increased. So, yes, in terms of the, the marketing of track and field, I believe that our heroes out there who are doing so well is basically motivating the younger ones to do better. Because the reality is that the national champs, it serves as the flagship event. Yes, it's a stepping um, stone. Literally, the lows for our, child, our athletes to set the name on the, in the international stages, character and otherwise. Yes, yes. So this is basically a stepping stone for them. So at the Arisa National Championship, you come and you qualify to be part of the character and then you move on for there and you move on from there. And this is why a meet like this is, is very important. Mm -hmm. And we are basically committed to doing sponsoring this meet for as, as long as we can. As, as, a, finan as, can. as a financial as a financial institution. As a financial institution yes. I know you would prom promote financial prudence. And certainly as you you you, 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 you thrust forward in your, in your support of this, you would encourage a lot of athletes to be able to say, let me take athletics as a way forward, a means to take me out of my financial doldrum onto the next level? Of course, and, and that is something we also do. We also do financial literacy. Um, we have a, a, a club called the Excel Club, and that's for secondary school students between the ages of 11 to 18 in secondary school. And what we do with that club, we, we educate you on finances, because I recall in my secondary school days, that was not taught in school. 
So we realized there was a need, there was a void. Um, you have young, um, young entrepreneurs, you have young, young adults, young teenagers growing. And you realize there was a void because this was a Totten school. So we decided with the Excel Club, yes, you can save in a club. And we also reward you for performing well. For example, if you get an A average in school, we reward you. If you perform well in athletics, sports, arts, academia, we also reward you. So that is our means of you know, educating persons in terms of take advantage of the opportunity that you have in front of you. Yes, academics is important, but yes, you can use track and field. Yes, you can use sports to, to, act, to reach financial freedom and to achieve your dreams. So, yes. Whether it's through financial efforts or on the track of the field, you would agree that the, the prize indeed always, always go to the one who, the, who wins it. <laughs> yes, yes, the prize goes to the ones who wins it. <laughs> yes, Let's take talk it about from the GBS song. Take and it. That's my alma mater, so I'm, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Don Palmer Senior Labore. Oh, that's right. Now, now I understand why you that, that you, I saw that smash stretch across your face quite quite openly. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about the growth of the growth of of of, um, of, of the sport, though. Mm-hmm. We've seen the likes of Arlene Fransik. And we've seen also as part of the growth in athletics, um, the expansion of it, the apartheid, the heptathlon. I think certainly for a riser, you take pride in recognizing that you're part of a, a venture that is quite expansive and growing. Yes, yes, precisely. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, because this is a stepping stone event, of course, when our athletes go out there and they have those opportunity, of course, you want to prepare them for it now. So you have to, you have to have more events. You have to have all of the events that they can go out there and take part in now. You have to start training them at a younger age. And the earlier they get on board, is better. So it's good to see like when you have events like the national champs and they're basically doing the decalter and all of these other events that maybe a few years ago you would have heard of. Uh, that is actually good. And I want to commend the, the Greater Alex Association for, for doing that. Oh yes, indeed. I mean, you have seen you have seen the growth, the inclusion of the hurdles, this and a lot of these uh, the, these these other uh, um, events. Looking forward to what can we expect from the Arise Credit Union? Well, you can expect a lot from Arise Credit Union. Uh, right now, we are about to, to launch a, f- a few um, promotions. We have something called Flexi Credit, which is an evergreen loan where you can apply for up to $25,000. And as fast as you pay back that loan, whenever you want to top it up, you can. So for example, if you got an approved limit for, let's say, 20,000, and over a few months or a year or so, you pay back, let's say, five, so your balance is 15. But you're reaching a tight spot and you decide in the national of $5,000, you don't have to come back to us. You go on your Arisa app or you go online and you can top it back up to the limit. So it's basically an evergreen loan. And that is something we want persons to take advantage of. Um, the Flexi Credit, we actually had it for a few years, but we are relaunching it because we are increasing the limits. And then we are also adding a new feature to it where you can use your home equity to qualify for more. So if you have a mortgage and based on the value of your loan and the value of your property, you can use your equity to, fa- to, to qualify for a Flexi Credit Evergreen Loan. And it sort of works as a, as a credit card, but just not with as much fees as a credit card because it's a credit facility that you could use whenever you want and you only pay based on, on what you take. Is it a platform that all in surgery qualifies for? So once it's a specific yeah. niche. Right? So once you're a member of Arisa, you can qualify for it. And joining Arisa is easy as one, two, three. You can call and make an appointment and all you need is a job letter, pay slip, proof of address, and you can open your account. And once you open your account, you can apply for any of our products and services and start reaping the benefits as we help you on your journey to financial freedom. As, as you, you continue that path, though, what in your estimation would you say it's your competitive advantage that allows Arisa to, Arisa to stand out against its, its competitors? At Arisa, what as, as you indicated earlier, we intend to develop the, our members holistically. So yes, almost all financial institutions may have similar products and services. They may have competitive rates. But what we try to do, we try to have better service. We, we want to have coaching sessions. We want to take you from one stage in life to our next. We didn't want to say, okay, come take a loan and then that's it. No. We want to know what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? And most times you don't hear that conversation when you enter a financial institution. So that is what we want to do. We want to have a conversation with you. As we said, the I in Arisa is you. So when you come and you sit with us, we look at you, we want to see where you want to be in the future and we provide steps and we provide the gateway to get there. Provide you the gateway, the I in Arisa is you. Thank you, Edwin Francis, the marketing manager. Um, any special thoughts on how you expect the evening to, to unfold? Well, so far it's going great, and I, I expect some uh, exciting finals this evening. And I know persons downstairs are, are eager to see the finals. We had some finals last night. Um, we had some exciting heats this morning as well. And I know this evening it's, 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 going to be, it's going to be awesome. So if you're home and you're still thinking about coming down, you still have some time come down. Um, the beat is still going on. Um, Right now, I uh, think they are preparing for some more races, so you can get here in time and, and witness live athletics 
in this national stadium. Thank you, Mr. Francis, the marketing manager here at the at Arisa. We are, in fact, it is the Arisa, the, the, the title sponsor of this year's national championships in Sydney. We're getting ready to, as the evening unfolds, to get back into terms of action on the track. And we want to say thanks to you, thanks to Arisa, thanks to all of the supporting cast. And we just take a break right now. When, when we return, myself and the man Leslie Smith is going to take you through for the rest of the afternoon. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smile. And the way you tell me, it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible, I can pack my sack, I can take the long road, cause it's okay to look back if I am scared. I know you're there. What we can do Arise uh, With no wings Fly Arise uh, And we're so high Enjoy the view Arise. Viewers, we welcome you back to the live track and field action here at the Arise National Championship. The event in progress is the 1500 meters open for girls. And the moments ago, you heard Joseph Cado speaking with the marketing manager of Arisa Credit Union, the title sponsors of the games. Uh, this race here would feature Joseph, Naomi John from South City Rising Stars, Riona Smith from MVP, Shania Nelson from South City, Amia Samuel, Finish Line, Brendiana James, SJC St. Andrew, Nubia Hilaire from Westerhall Secondary. Kimberly Batiste, Track Blazers, Kadona Mark Boca, Ali and Gidhari, Track Blazers, Esther Fletcher, South City Rising Stars, Kiana Alexander, and Joseph Convent and George, Antonia Stephen Boca, Akisha Henry, Finish Line, Azuri Isaac, SJC St. George, from SJC St. Andrew, Xavier Henry, Kalisha Charles from Track Blazers, Kenya Phillip from Convent St. Andrew, and also Annalisa Brown from Boca. So it's the 1500 meter, we call it a mile, mm -hmm. and it's an open event in the female category. Uh, the stadium record here is uh, 4 minutes 27.71 seconds, Ashley Cooper. The game's record, Kenisha Pascal, the formidable Kenisha Pascal, yes. of 5 minutes 1.47 seconds, established in 2019. And the national record, of course, by Nisha Bonnard Thomas, our premier athlete in this event. Uh, established in 2009, uh, 4 minutes 23 seconds. So they're just about coming up to the time when they would have uh, two more laps to go in this the 1500 meter event. An athlete from South City Rising Stars, we will try to pick up the athlete's name for you in a moment. But there are two athletes up front there, Joseph, who are mm -hmm. stride, going stride for stride, shoulder for shoulder, so to speak. And uh, this is an event of a number of things here. Strategy, speed, stamina, I would think, right? And you must have that those combinations maybe in perfect order. Because you could have speed and have a good strategy and not do well in this event. Yeah, and, and you're agreeing, I'm agreeing with you, Leslie, because very often it is you can be a little bit bamboozled as to exactly what's happening and um, some athletes they they tend to adopt the the the, the philosophy like the canians where they where they are going to stretch you and see what you have and then they may lay back a bit and but it will be interesting to see what the strategy is as they go down again make another trip down the back stretch you see that five um, nicely bunched together and and we and what is interesting we, we go back and we've been saying leslie that conversation with these athletes that train to train together where some of them, they understand their, their opponents, their strengths. So if, if I know he, that one, is, that one, he's a good finisher, the question is, what do I do? Do I stretch him thin, hoping that he loses the legs, and then maybe you can, you can, you can catch up on him? Different strategies, let's see what they employ. Well, of course, different strategies. Some athletes go hard, then relax, then go yes. hard again and relax. 
but this is a lead packet of four and they stretch stretch the field in a, in a tandem here and it will come down to strategy the bell goes to indicate the final lap nobody has kicked yet normally when we hear the bell here somebody kicks somebody goes out hard and all the athletes are basically going at the the same kind of pace that they had maybe 300 meters ago yes so let's see what's going to happen maybe at the 300 meter mark somebody would definitely have to go maybe the one with the greater speed and endurance but let's see who's going to make the first kick we see south city rising stars out there that lead pack of four continues in this the 1500 meters open for girls just about the 300. nobody yet making that <laughs> kick seems as though we're gonna have that first push here but it seems as though they, they're reserving everything for maybe that final 100, 100 final 150 80 meters. yes the well, pace is definitely picking up a little bit now i think this is about the point where they somebody has to decide and i think they're probably waiting to see who first has what it is going to make that decisive decision i am going to go for it so look no. at the first move here from the athlete that was in the fourth position looking to make that move here but she's not going to be given that opportunity now the real kick has started with 150 to go as they get into the home straight now on 80 meters to go south city rising stars has some challenge but uh, she's pulling away from the rest of them they spread they spread, spread out now south city rising stars is going to win it by 20 meters or so but i still felt that she waited a little bit too long she still has a lot reserve in the tank that she could have started a kick earlier on indeed 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 and i guess it, it, it all comes down to strategy what is your strategy it could be a case that they trade together she understand her and understands her strength and maybe she was confident enough like looking at, at her and while the other seems a bit quite quite spent leslie she seemed as though she had enough in the tank um to take to take it through and certainly she, she was quite confident in her ability to complete the race so while we agree it's a very good and strong run i still think that some more work can be done on her strategy maybe at the 200 or 300 mark she could have kicked and kicked earlier because she really finished strong right. and, and she may want to consider that option moving forward that's uh, shania nelson from south city rising stars the eventual winner of the 1500 meters open and that's the final event folks it's all happening down here at the kirani james athletic stadium it is the evening session as we see um the shadows has to stretch across across the um, the pavilion and indeed wherever you are we say make your way down here oh but those of you that's following us on online uh, we say thanks for being part of a tnr communication production uh, but certainly um, it's interesting though as we we get the varied shots it's interesting when you go to these public forums though leslie people in the crowd they always seem to be engaged in a multiplicity of different things Forms. yeah well a lot, a lot of things come to mind yes yeah. so <laughs> they focus on the races they focus on keeping abreast of what's happening on social media they keep a conversation they talk about all everything else intercall is coming up but we want to also let you know that the javelin throw is also taking place anderson peters is going to be featured there and ever so often we will endeavor to bring you some mm -hmm. of the the, the athletes as they throw the javelin we have 27 athletes um, registered for the javelin throw for boys so we're going to try to bring some of that to you as well it's interesting though in the more in more recent times with the emergence with the emergence of anderson peters as um an, a national international s star in the javelin how are you seeing that greed of interest in the early years when it came just to the track there um there was kirani james and then there was that impetus everybody wants to be like Zeno. now leslie you've seen a lot of in individuals now now we see that the, the official time of event number 771 and as a girl's 1500 that was anna lisa brown from boca in a time of 52.2319 seconds amir samuel um fifth in five minutes 25.23 seconds amir henry um f f five minutes three zero point four nine seconds there you, you see the time but no we certainly um as you said it would probably come down to strategy leslie as but you, you would have to get a lot of these athletes to, they are really they are relatively young um we did continue to say the whole day as we, we say thanks to the tnr that we're able to provide leslie um a multifaceted coverage on the track and on the field and it only augurs well for the growth of 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 of, of um, athletics and in addition to the track and field we are actually bringing these enriched 
interviews as a matter of fact in 30 minutes time we're going to have another one that we asking the viewers to stay tuned for he's going to speak a lot about the intercall games and others that you so anxiously are waiting at the end of the month the intercall games so stay tuned for that we're going to hear some um, interesting information with reference to that the javelin continues for the boys that's the 800 gram javelin and as we mentioned earlier anderson peters would be featured in that we say a special good afternoon or good evening to the viewers out there in the diaspora i want to say a special good evening to some good friends of mine miss lewis miss alma lewis and and um brenda and others who are viewed out there in miami and those of you in new york and throughout the entire diaspora we say good afternoon to you we say good afternoon to those of you who are home here in Grenada as well and those of you in the caribbean um, who are taking in the broadcast and we're happy that TNR Communications is here to, to do justice to that. Indeed, justice they have done um, to the entire process. Uh, my good old comrade, Laurie, uh, I see you logged in there. And it's always, you always get a special joy when you have these events and you can have um, associates, friends and family in the diaspora that's saying, guys, I'm locked in with you. And they're saying thank you for allowing us to be part of what's happening here. Again, in progress right now, it's the Javelin. And certainly, you have to agree, though, Leslie, in more recent times with the emergence of Anderson Peters, Walcott from, Trini from, from, from Trinidad, you've seen a greater trust, a, a greater interest in, um, in, in the Javelin. As, well, as a, over as the event. years, Grenada has done very well with the Javelin. So it, it goes back even before Anderson Peters. We had the Trevor Modest, the Mike Modest, um, and others. Um, Colin Peters, Kim Fullerton. They've all went, um, Selwyn Smith, they all went on to win gold medal. I think Selwyn may have won in excess of five gold medals um, at, at the character level in the Javelin. And so Grenada has a rich history and legacy for the Javelin. Anderson Peters basically is cementing that position that, that Grenada has in, in the Javelin. And then there are some of the, the females that have went on to win character goal at the Javelin as well. The Prudence Lewis, the Meryl Peters, uh, Candista Scott and others have done tremendously well in the Javelin over the years. So it's a, a much looked forward, just as how the Alan Francis and the Kiriani James have paved the way in the 400. Yes. Um, they are youngsters now under the tutelage of Paul Philip and others who are aspiring to be just like the Anderson Peters and, and others who have, 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 who have gone before. So Javelin the has a lot of interest, definitely. And uh, as we mentioned, Grenada has done very well regionally and internationally in this event. And Coach Philip, no doubt, has done a really excellent job in and he has remained humbled too in his in what he has been able to deliver and certainly i mean you whenever you speak to him it is never about him but it's for what else can we get out of this discipline well paul philip is an international coach he's been sought out now by others in the region and internationally we knew that he was working with some athletes out of saint lucia and uh, of the islands as well and uh, he has delivered. He has produced a, a world-class athlete, a world champion, and that is an accolade that he has on his resume that can speak well for him. So kudos to Coach Philip. But I think what is lacking is the recognition we give to our people who have done well, and I think mm -hmm. that is an area we need to improve on, how we recognize and appreciate the outstanding work that Paul Philip, Wayne McSween, and several others have done to track and field here in Grenada. Have definitely given human service to the, I mean, to the field of track and field. Uh, but certainly, uh, we often say you want to give you want to give individuals their flowers before they die. Um, we have another. We get ready for another event on the field as the girls 800 meters uh, in the under 17 category. Um, but we say we want to, of course, make sure that before whatever happens, we say thanks to all of our coaches, all of our athletes, those that may have taken athletes to the international level or those at the primary school level leslie and very often we tend not to highlight those how instrumental they are in terms of getting those athletes at the early stage the technique the interest and they often goals they, they go just look at what the presence of anderson peters can do for a young javelin thrower participating in an event with a world champion you learning from him picking up some techniques. I'm sure Anderson may be having conversations with them as well in terms of assisting them in the craft. And, and that speaks volume for the impact that the presence of Anderson... So why are some people may wonder why is Anderson Peters participating in this event? The benefits that can be derived from the youngsters 
who are participating alongside him is tremendous. As we get set for the 800 meters on the seven on the 17 girls, you have a, a very long list of competitors in this event. They carry the standard two minutes 20 seconds, and uh, that is the time that they will be first of all aspiring to achieve to see if they can make that carry the standard. But of course, they're also running for top positions, and we remind you that. Any record that is broken would receive some financial reward from Arisa Credit Union. I keep thinking long and hard about the the one hundred and fifty dollars as a reward, as an incentive, and I'm probably wondering how do I get myself into that pool? And then I recognize I'm probably dreaming too much. Joseph, I think you need to wake up now. <laughs> it's <laughs> obviously a nightmare you're having. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, my friend. <laughs> We get it ready for the girls, <laughs> event number 72, the girls 800 meters run. And certainly it's uh, just on what I reduced. We're looking at a number of athletes that's inside the Esther Fletcher, um, Angelique Belgrave from RC, the receiver Sierra Gellino, um, Antonia Stevens from Boca. And we're going to try to g provide you with the full lineup. Kenya Phillip, there is Smile Lambert, Rosina Cato, Janaya Williams. Um, Eliane Gihari, there's Arena James, Ronia, and there's Empress Butcher, and Janique Belgrave, Peaches Pantru, and Brendan James. And certainly, again, it's two laps around the track, 800 meters, and we certainly will see how these, how they fare as they run under the cover of nice shadow, and it's been in the midst, of course, it's been a pretty warm day, though. It's certainly, um, you can just, there's no argument that as the evening as as the evening progresses that the stage there's a lot of cloud cover that really protects the athletes as uh from the direct impact on the summer right about now we're getting into the cool of the evening and it provides the sort of a really ideal conditions for athletics so we're getting ready for the next event on the track the, the girls 800 meter run and certainly we will give an appreciation once they start as to how uh, this one pans out um, later on in the evening, I know most of you will be, you'll be probably getting, um, Leslie, the, the jitters and the excitement that comes with the relays and, 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 all, and, and all of those meets. Well, there are quite a number of exciting events remaining, not only the relays, but we have some individual events that are also going to be uh, a spectacle that uh, you, the viewers and the patrons who are here at the National Stadium are uh, anticipating just as we are here in the commentary position. The 800 meters about to start, there are two groups here uh, in the same event and uh, that is because we have maybe 25 persons registered for this event mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so any moment we will see the start of that one. It's a two-lap event. Um, it's an event that Anisha Bonnet thomas has made an international mark for Grenada in and she holds the national record of 1 minute 59.6 seconds that she established in 2010 and one would recall the CAC games that were held here in Grenada several years ago when Nisha would have won gold medal in that event right here at the National Stadium. It was a moment when I think over three races Grenada won three gold medals. Mm -hmm. um, the, the four, two in the 400 meters with Hazlan Regis and I think it was Aline Francic and then Nisha Bonnet thomas in the 800 meters. Are we waiting to see the emergence of another young, another young athlete, another hero is it, or is it just going to be one another rec regular day for a stroll in the park for these athletes as they get ready for the girls' 800 meters? Angelique Belgrave, Sarah Jellino, Antonia Stevens, and as they are all fish two rungs, and certainly Leslie, it would be good as we, we as we made mention in the 1500. It's another race that calls for a combination of speed, stamina. And certainly we see how this one pans out as they make their way down the down the back straights. Well, St. Davis Track Blazers already establishing themselves in this one here. As some athletes go down, um, there has been a collision there. We hope the athlete is not seriously injured. And uh, another athlete now takes over the lead from uh, Track Blazers. Uh, but uh, it's still early runnings in this one, just about uh, 250 meters gone. And uh, so the strategy here is to go hard by the athlete in the front here 
and tried to pull the others with her. Let's hope she has the stamina. But track blazers looking very comfortable on the inside. And we're going to tell you it looks as though it's Alien Gidhari from track blazers who is up front there. And indeed, it is Gidhari looking comfortable with the bell going now to indicate uh, only 400 meters remaining. Yes. And uh, she continues to motor on nicely and pulling away from the rest of the field. Obviously, she seems to have a lot of experience in this race here. Seems to be well prepared as well and uh, with a good strategy as well. Very measured approach, a consistency in stride mm -hmm. and uh, looking to dominate this event as she started up, up front and continues to motor on. She has some good challenge here from uh, the athlete, maybe two or three, three or four paces behind her. And uh, a good move made here just at the 200 meter mark to push Gidhari a little harder. Would she Gidhari respond? responds to the, to the challenge. 150 meters to go and Gidhari pulls away from the challenge here now. It was just maybe a motivational factor for her with 100 meters to go she's looking good maintaining good form and good rhythm but a good fight back here still it's not over yet let's see what happens she's going to be pushed all the way to the finish line what a good comeback run here what a run indeed a tremendous run here by the athletes in the white and red we're going to confirm to you who it is shortly but a tremendous run to come back and win here she measured her wrist well. She kicked more than once at Kado. A tremendous well, run indeed. Well, that's what you, that's a, that's what you call NOS. She really, t I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I can't say that I, that I actually saw it. And it goes back, Leslie, as we're going to confirm her name in just a bit. The question of strategy, awareness. Um, she made a push at the 200. Gihari responded. And you get the sense, doing that final, that, that final 150, that she may, she may have taken a lot more out of the tank than she actually needed. She may have taken a lot more out of the tank than she actually than she actually needed because of you. She was past the just about fifty, and she seemed even clueless to even recognize what was happening around her. I think what was interesting is that when she made that initial kick, that's Kenya Philip of Convince and Andrew. When Kenya made that initial kick and Gid Harry responded, we were of the opinion that she was out of gas by that time and she could we not have rebounded. But just with about 80 meters to go, she found that extra gear, so to speak. Right. And look at her poor way to the finish line. You're going past Gidari in a breeze. Who seems oblivious to it. Quite oblivious to it. A good run indeed by Kenya Philip of Convent Grenville. Indeed a good a, indeed a good run. And then it sort of it sort of highlights the point that we're making strategy. What is the strategy? And certainly a lot of athletes they find ways to time and measure and even conserve their energy. And they hear it was an excellent job. Um, from 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 well, the club sure fusion. The folks in Grenville must be very impressed and happy with Kenya's performance. The colleagues there at Convent Grenville. Well, it shows a lot of grit and determination and uh, and and a hunger for victory. Indeed, quite a hunger, hunger for victory. And I know young Gihari would be, I mean, totally devastated and disappointed, all all in one, because you she was probably thinking that. With 60 meters to go, she well, had but quite, all completed. I, I felt she ran a good race. She gave it her best. She she led from the start. She 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 was consistent in her strides. It's just that I think she was beaten by a better athlete on the day. Beaten by the better athlete on the day. Uh, we're looking at the official time for Ariana James. Two minutes, 32.48. And we have the Gihari from Sir Davis Track Blazers. Two minutes, 33.72. Kenya Phillip from Convent St. Andrew. Two minutes, 44. Point six four, the official result there for event number seventy-two, the girls' eight hundred meters run in the under seventeen. Category. So it was actually Ariana James who won who won this one. Yeah, a fusion club. So we do want to apologize to Ariana for calling Kenya as the winner. Kenya actually placed third, as we saw on the official results. But that again is a level of excitement we anticipated and continues to be shown here. And it's only going to heighten as the evening stretches on. The boys are getting ready in the under 17 category. There are going to be two finals here. There's a, a huge list of boys in, in that category. And uh, the best times would emerge as the winners. So um, the record is held by Nathan Hood. 
as the games record, the character standard is two minutes flat. And Conrad Francis, who was with us moments ago, mm -hmm. holds the national record of one minute 49.40 seconds, a record he established in 1982. I have to say that Conrad is another of the unsung heroes of track and field, that not too often, Leslie, you hear the accolades be given to him, um, both as, a, as an administrator, as an athlete. And when I say administrator, not just now, not just at the level of the Athletic Association, but for years he served as a coordinator of sports within, within the ministry. He worked at the Boca Secondary School. He was an athlete, and not very often, I mean, certainly, and he would, he's done a lot really and truly for the growth of athletics, and not much. But we certainly hope that with this sort of exposure that's been given, not just to the to the the, the 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 coaches, but even to the athlete. As we say, thanks again to those of you wherever you are for being part of this evening's con conversation. It's the Arisa National Championships, Leslie, and we are now set for a bumper evening. The 800 meters under 17 boys about to be started. They are about to get started. First yeah. time they're looking at it is two minutes flat to get into the character team. They get to two minutes flat and then they go beyond that. Let's go, let's see how this one how this one pans out. And suddenly they really run out of two flights and the one with the top time is going to win. So they're up and running. It's a two lap event. Uh, the ball is 800 meters under 17. Looks like Boca secondary with a slender lead here in the early runnings. And the athlete from Fusion in second position, Trailblazers in third and fourth. and fourth. But a brisk pace to this 800 meters. Quite interesting. Uh, much faster than we've seen so far with the females. And uh, really going to make that character standard of two minutes. And it's quite a healthy pace that those guys are on. Boca As secondary are forced to be reckoned with these days again in track and field. We knew of the abilities way back when and then they seem to have been dormant for a period but in more recent times the re-emergence we've seen them uh, at the podium 400 meters remaining in the 800 meters under 17 boys Boca secondary up front and looking good so far stuck by the athletes from fusion and then there is uh, trailblazers in third and fourth but uh, Good consistent strides here by Boca Secondary. Fusion closing the gap here now on Boca. So too is Trailblazers. 200 meters to go. A lot of energy used up by Boca. Here comes Fusion on the outside with a strong run. Fusion moves into the lead now. But Trailblazers is within striking distance as well. Boca looking behind to see where the competition is coming from. But he has to focus ahead of him as the athlete from Fusion is looking good. Fusion, but here comes St. David's track Blazers. Is he going to get a hold of the athlete from Fusion? He goes past him now. Leaves some dust in the trail as well. St. David's track Blazers it is. Fusion is trying to make a comeback. But it is St. David's track Blazers measuring his race well and winning in the end by maybe five meters or so. He measured, he delivered, and it was almost like you, you, they were playing tag where you continue to stalk your prey and you literally have to de determine at which point in time do you make that final assault as we continue to highlight the importance of that in these uh, middle distance races you saw it there we wait and we'll await the official the official results um, but certainly it was an excellent run from the ad from boca secondary um, fusion was always in the mix uh, but trail track blazers certainly and he probably was just saying to himself I am just waiting for that ideal moment, Leslie, when I, I would punks, I would make that final, I would make that final, that final push. Yes? When they would make that final, final push. We want to say certainly um, good afternoon for, to uh, the man, Albert Joseph, who certainly... Uh, among those that certainly has made a strong contribution towards athletics, and he continues to, 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 to do so, yes? So that was the completion of the boys, the 800 meters. Um, um, what I've noticed in though, um, Leslie, and I'm not sure if I'm qualified to speak on that, 
but I've seen a number of athletes, a number of athletes, and this is quite interesting, character around the corner, intercall being just a matter of weeks away, a number of athletes have to be carted off at the end of the race. And it sort of begs the question, is this supposed to be what is or what isn't happening? Your thoughts, though? Well, a number of things here could be the reason. One, an athlete giving off all and laying it out on the track, so to speak. Um, another issue could be fitness and the level of training and conditioning before the event. And uh, a third one might just be out of gas, you know. But um, we hope that it's not anything serious and that, that they can yes. recover. But I always feel that an athlete has to give off all and at the end of the race should be well spent and, and, and be able to quickly recover again within a matter of days to participate in, in other events. In but fitness level tells a lot too and uh, athletes who have not been prepared properly tend to go down quite often as well. I mean, I keep saying being spent is one thing, but when you, you're flat out and you keep seeing it like it's been repeated, it probably begs a lot of questions. But as you said, let's hope it isn't a anything too serious. As but I thought, ready for the second I thought match. that those two races were very exciting. The, the run back there from the fusion athlete in the female category and now from track, track blazers, blazers. Two very exciting 800 meter events indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And it's what we certainly we, 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 we did anticipate as we stretch into the late of the late of the evenings, as the shadows continue to stretch across the pavilion. Um, it certainly augurs well for a really, really great evening of track and field. So it was Keelan Moses of uh, St. Davis Track Blazers who won in 2 minutes 1.49 seconds, just outside of the character standard. Adriel Mitchell was second in 2 minutes 2.11 seconds, and uh, Nicholas Frederick was in the third position. It's all happening here inside of the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium. It's the Arisa National Championships. And certainly that's been brought to you as part of a TNR communication production. And we certainly, we, it's, we, we get it ready as the evening winds down. Um, it's quite early though, but certainly for what's going to be a high energy and high packed evening. So we have the second of the two finals in the 800 meter run about to be started. And uh, we shall see in this one here, Jalen Lewis. Jalen St. Louis, I beg your pardon, from South City Rising Stars. Reuben Reuben La Obis Obastita is also there. Hussein Noel, Eden Paul, Noah Mitchell, EJ George, Jadel Etienne, Shem Smith, Sharon Henry, Noel Handsome, Cameron Jeffrey, Ishmael John, Kaden McQueen. These are the athletes that have been listed to participate in the second of the two finals of the 800 meter under 17 boys. They're already on the track and let's hope we can see another one of those exciting 400, 800 meter events as we saw in the in last the two events. The last two. Let's see how this one pans out. St. Louis, Labastita, Noel, um, EJ George, Etienne, Smith, Henry, Noel Handsome, Noel Mitchell, Cameron Jeffrey, Ishmael John, Kadeen McQueen, the lineup for the next event on the track, the finals of the second of the two finals in the 800 meters run for the boys under 17. And certainly we, we got a treat from the girls under 17. Um, quite an excellent race. And the previous, no doubt, Leslie, that one, we would, it certainly made a man, quite an impression and sort of whets your appetite for what is to come in the second event. And I think what creates that excitement and buzz is when an athlete comes from behind and wins. So there we go, the start of the second of the two finals in the under 17 boys 800 meters. So a must reduced feel yes. as we previously announced. But nonetheless, we have five competing athletes here and they'll be challenging for a time of two minutes, 1.49 seconds that we saw moments ago by the athlete from the St. David's Track Blazers. So another very brisk start to this, uh, the second of the two finals. Two athletes going out hard from the start. Westall Secondary is in good contention there in the third position. So too is McDonald College in fourth. But it looks like uh, South City Rising Stars, I would think, based on the color of the, the T-shirt. We will tell you who it is in a moment. It's actually Jalen St. Louis of South City Rising Stars. He is the athlete up there in front with 400 meters to go. 
and uh, a 10 meter gap over the athlete in the second position. So Jalen St. Louis looking to go past the two minute mark, slowing down a bit here now, maybe not on course to do that, but we're gonna see what he has as part of his strategy, whether or not he can accelerate with the last 150 meters to go. Well, let's see, legs are tiring, uh, but quite a distance between himself and the athletes from Fusion as they come down the back on the back stretch just a bit just on the 200 meters or so to go um send south city rising star um i think he is in there and the only thing that probably should be bought in him now is the issue of the clock leslie with what timing is he going to get but as he head towards the final 100 meters um obviously spent not not he's he's not challenged in, in any way by the athlete from fusion uh, but certainly, you see, there's not much left in the legs to go as he pushes home. And we get to see what the official time is and what time he is going to stop the clock as he crosses the line right about now. As yes. Jalen St. Louis of South City Rising Stars, a close one here for second and third. But I think Fusion may have just been able to maintain that second spot as the athlete from West Hall Secondary was coming in like a freight train. So a good win here for Jalon St. Louis of South City Rising Stars. We're going to give you the official time in a moment. So we await the, offi the official time for the last event, event number 73. Um, that was won by Jalon Lewis. The time yet to be, yet to be confirmed. And um, that was the boys 800 meters run in the under 17 category. So that's Jalon there for you. Seems to be tiring tired from the event um, he really gave it all he went out early he went out very hard and in the end been able to set himself away from the rest of the field two minutes 11.2 seconds for Jalen st louis so obviously the athlete from the track blazers as Kilon moses as we segue to the javelin for a bit here to see what's happening there pretty decent throw well, here by this competitor bit over this the 60 meter mark so Caden McQueen was second in the 800 meters on the 17 in the meantime the athletes for the 800 meters open is getting themselves ready and we see a familiar name there Jelani Franklin he's one of the competitors Kieran Charles he's also there Devonta Hille, Zaid Douglas, Atuan Blackett, Elvis Gay out of Karakou, Michael Francois, Therese Andrews, Tyrone Jacob, familiar name as well, Nathan Holas, Taniel Benjamin, Lishon Medford. Quite a huge field in the 400 meters open. Indeed, a huge 800 field. meters open. 800 meters open, open boys as they await the start two laps around the track event number 74 again we'll see exactly what sort of strategy that they engage um certainly i would imagine though leslie that that conversation is one that has taken place already with them and with them with the coach with the coach or coaches as to what this what the plan what the strategy should be and how you execute because execution is a critical component and ensuring that you don't have a plan in the back of your head and not execute on the day. Well, the game's record is 1 minute 56.81 seconds. Michael Francois holds that record and he is listed in this event. He already won the 400 meters last evening. He's one of our national athletes and doing very well at the 400 and 800 meter events. He actually ran, I think it was 46.37 last night in the 400 meters and is amongst some of the fastest local athletes that we have these days outside of those on the professional circuit like the Kiriani James and others. So Michael Francois, he is uh, listed in this one. I'm looking on the track to see if he's there. Um, he should be in one of the pink outfits representing the Ace Track Club. Yeah, he looks as though the past probably him that's nestled. That's probably... 
where we see whether his exploits of last evening, whether or not the exploits of last evening um, can flow over to this Sunday evening. And from the images there, he seems to be just between lanes three and, and three four. And four. That's yes. him leaning forward there now. So yes. indeed, Michael Francois is in there. So there we go, the start of the 800 meters open for boys. Ace Track Club, Kieran Charles making the early run here. Francois currently in the third position. He is the defending champion and the record holder. He doesn't hold the national record. It's been held by Conrad Francis, but he has the game's record. Kieran Charles doing a lot of the early running, and then we see another athlete there from Fusion going past Kieran Charles now. Kieran Charles also of Ace. They bump into each other as Kieran Charles goes back into the lead. Michael Francois, who has that kick, is still in the third position. Tyrone Jacob is there for South City Rising Stars in the grey vest, just on the heels of Michael Francois. Tyrone Jacob, more known for his longer distances, doesn't have that kick of a Michael Francois and others. But it's interesting here with 400 meters to go. Kieran Charles of Ace, Michael Francois of Ace. Tyrone Jacob now giving good chase and into third position. There's going to be a sprint for the finish line with 200 meters to go. Ace one and two. Here comes Michael Francois on the other side making his move now. Tyrone Jacob is going along with him. They go past Kieran Charles. Francois it is. Does Tyrone Jacob have enough to compete and to contest Michael Francois here who is the defending champion? And the game's record holder of 1 minute 56.81 seconds he established in 2021. I still believe Michael Francois has a lot more in him here. Can Tyrone Jacob hold on to this challenge here? With 80 meters to go, Michael Francois is going to extend the lead. Easy. Tyrone Jacob is giving good chase, but he's not going to catch Francois. Francois is pouring his way to the finish line, establishing a wider gap. The crowd go up to support him and to bring him home. A great run indeed here by Michael Francois. Indeed, a victory that is deserving of a defending champion and a really, really, really elite athlete. And certainly, I mean, we saw from start to finish, um, Leslie, he knew what he has to do. It is the mark of an athlete that is well-trained, understands and has a presence of mind of where he is on the day, what needs to be done came with a plan and he executed. And Michael Francois is one of those athletes that does not like to lead throughout the race. If you look at Kieran Charles and the other athlete from Fusion did most of what we call the bulwark up front. But he measured his race well. He knew when he had to kick. You could see it was a, a, a well-planned race. It's, a, it's an event that he does consistently in the same manner. He kicked at the right time and from then on it was curtains call. There was no stopping him. He just poured his way to the finish line. And he delivered 1 minute 53.15 seconds. That's yeah, actually that's well broke his the own record. He's no longer eligible for character, but he broke his own record of 1 minute 56.81. Running today, 1 minute 53.15 seconds. Michael Francois. Indeed, another excellent run in the boys. 800 meters, meters open. Um, that is in reality, Leslie, what you call a Sunday evening stroll. Well, I, I'm telling you that Michael Francois is a man with a mission, right? He's a man with a mission here to break his own record and to establish himself as one of Grenada's premier 800-meter athletes. And um, We also see, saw him doing well in the 400-meter um, event last night, but a phenomenal run here by Michael Francois. And he doesn't look as though he's he still looks as though he could probably challenge another 800 meters. Well conditioned, well trained, and w in good, in really in good, good, good condition. Victory there for Michael Francois of Ace in the time of 1.53, 1 1.5 seconds, breaking his own record. That was the completion of event number 74, the boys 800 meters open, and certainly um, for Team Ace. Um, ex excitement, exuberation, and certainly ev everybody coming to support their team um, in their branded T-shirts. And it even, you say, Leslie? As we looked at the cross-section of the ACE supporters, that's the wife of the ACE um, manager and founder, Wayne McSween. And so there's a nice contingent there from the St. Andrew area of the ACE supporters. And Michael Franco really delivered the goods for them.
I see I see Davis Adams gently bent over. He seems in he's in his own world though. Well he's here to support two of the athletes from his school who has been doing very well. As a matter of fact, one of the young ladies had the fastest time in the preliminaries. And so Mr. Adams is here from the South St. George Government School to, to support these two athletes and uh, to provide that additional motivation that they would need. There goes well, there's our moment. world champion. As you shift focus. Anderson Peters, keep your eyes glued to the screen here. He's going to sail that javelin somewhere towards the city of St. George. Beautiful throw indeed. Anderson Peters, the javelin going out of vision for a moment. And the fans really reacting to the throw here. It does not look as the biggest of throws. No. But we're going to try to see if we can get the distance he has just thrown. But that was our world champion, the Anderson Peters. And we did highlight it though, the thought, just the thought of Leslie of these young athletes being able to say, I was here at the national champs and I threw on a day when the great man himself, Anderson Peters, participated. Memories of a lifetime. Exactly so. And I just want to go back to that 800 meter run. Tyrone Jacob, who placed second in the event, would have also broken the record with his time of 1 minute 55.33 seconds. So the top two finishers there, 80.92 meters. So it's a decent throw, but a far cry from Anderson's best performance. He has thrown in excess of 90 meters before. Yes. So he must be very, maybe not too happy with that. Definitely, I think the, the aerodynamics of the, the throw was not good. The javelin went too high in my, in my own limited uh, uh, a technical ability of the javelin throw, but I'm sure he's going to deliver a much better throw in his upcoming throws. 80 meters, we've seen much better from Anderson before. Well, indeed, that's just a warm up, that's just a warm up throw, indeed. And um, certainly, um, when you're under the pressure of, of being in the presence of more greater elite athletes, sometimes you dig deeper. And uh, maybe that's what is needed. But I'm saying, I mean, no doubt, it, it really, it really, it really augurs well for the sport, um, Leslie, just to have be out here and having Anderson being out. The nation gets, gets, gets to see him and these young athletes get to be part of history. And the kind of person Anderson is, I'm sure he's out there providing advice and technical um, um, knowledge to some of these youngsters that he is viewing through them now. And uh, as we say, it augurs well. And for those persons who are wondering why is he Paris, it's the national champs. We expect our athletes to perform at this level, be the professionals or not. And uh, these youngsters must be thrilled to be throwing on the same ground in the same event as Anderson is. And that's going to be the talk, you know, as they go back into their clubs and schools and everything else. And the, the, the excitement um, of, of, of today's the weekend event on falls dissipates itself in the next couple of days all they will be saying listen i was there on the weekend you know who was there i threw just before anderson or just after him and of course there are the photo ops as well there there is a photo ops. i'm sure the cell phones w would have been engaged moments ago and even after the event is completed the youngsters would seize the opportunity to have a picture with the world champion and they're proud to say that, that he just he isn't just the world champion that he's our anderson peters and those of us that you remember the days when Anderson, he, was, he, was, he did quite well in the sprints as well. Oh yeah, he was a gold medalist in the, yes. in the, in the sprints in the and 100 meters. And he, he was one of the, the, one of the records, I think. So it's an interesting story in terms of the transition to the javelin that I'm sure many persons are aware of. But um, it's good to see a sprinter transition into the field events, the javelin that is, and, and doing well and becoming a world champion. Indeed, he transitioned and he's really holding his, his own as we get ready for the tracks so it's going to be the 100 meters on the 17 um, also happening at the moment is the boys triple jump open but we have an interesting lineup here for the finals we're going to see zania belfon from st joseph convent st andrew egypt regis benjamin from mvp kamali philip from finish line talia samson from mvp Alina Dicotto, also of MVP. Lauren McIntosh, Brent's entire family is here to support her. She's also from MVP. Amaya Chandler from Boca. And Abigail Williams from McDonald College, out there in lane eight. The lineup for the next event on the track. It's the 
the girls 100 meters dash on the 17. So Event. Talia Sampson comes in with the fastest time of 12.26 seconds. The carry after stand at 12.20. So she's just outside of that from the preliminaries. And if she has much more reserved in the tank, it may just be another Carifta qualifying opportunity for Talia Sampson of 473 MVP. We get ready for this. Interestingly, uh, uh, Kado, we have four athletes from MVP in this 100 meter final. So, under the tutelage of Coach Albert Joseph, MVP featured nicely here in the 100 meters under 17 girls. And let's see how it all pans out guys together. They go under the status orders. It's the girls' 100 meters, the final. You feel a hush. And they're up and running. Looks like a very clean start here. Alia Taliat Samson in lane four emerges out of the, the line of athletes here, and she's going to win maybe by two or three strides. Indeed, she wins over. Her compatriot Alina Di Cotto in lane five. It didn't look the fastest of events, but we look to see what the time is going to be. I, I felt that the start was a bit slow, but nonetheless, Talia Sampson emerges as the winner here. 12.36 seconds, just outside of the Carifta standard, and a little bit slower than she did in the preliminary, as we look back here, Joe, to Sampson. Even if you watch her body language at the end, it seemed that expression of disappointment. Um, she probably was hoping that she could have pushed herself a bit further. And she, she doesn't quite seem totally satisfied with the run. As you look at the official time, Talia Sampson in a time of 12.36 seconds for representing MVP club. Alina Dicoto, also from M MVP, 12.55. And Kimeli Phillip, um, a time of 12.83. Yeah, so congratulations to Talia Samson of MVP, the winner of the girls' 100-meter dash under 17. She will feel proud to know that she will be walking away with that uh, gold medal and that first prize purse as well. The boys' 100-meter dash about to be started. And again, we're going to see some fireworks there. We're going to see Cameron Mathlin in lane one, Tyreek McSween in two from Track Blazers, Nathan Hiller in three from MVP, Ethan Sam, one to look out for. Yes. He's going to be in lane four. He already ran 21.71 to qualify for Carifta in the 200 meters. Mikkel Reddit is also there from Track Blazers in lane five. In six is Duran Sincere from Altitude. Seven, Isaiah Fraser of Speed Zone. Eight, uh, Jaden Knight of Shaper. So Ethan Sam comes in with an impressive time of 10.72 seconds. Uh, the Carifta qualified mark is 10.8, so he has already qualified for that 100 meters. But uh, to be on the podium at Carifta, he has to be doing a 10-1, 10-2 thereabout, I would think. So um, that may not get him into the finals at the moment. And then we have uh, doing 11.32, Mikhail Redhead from Track Blazers, and 11.34, Nathan Hille of MVP as well. We're looking for what is expected to be another blistering run in the boys. Um, 100 meters dash on the 17, Cameron Madlin, Tariq McSween, Nathan Hille, Ethan Sam, Mikhail Redhead, Deron Sincere, Isaiah Fraser, and Jaden Knight. Your lane assignments. For the next event on the track, event number 53, the boys 100 meters dash in the under 17 category. So and if you're from the La Mode area, you want to keep your eyes on the screen. Your boy Ethan Sam is about to do something very impressive. Already running 10.72. There they go. Nice clean start here. Towards the middle of the track, Ethan Sam would emerge. 1072 runner here, already qualifying for the carry of He pulls away from the rest of the field and wins it at an impressive time. Ethan Sam continues to do well here, continues to return some fantastic time and performances. We are with the official results on time. No disappointment. He came and he delivered. 
Ethan Sam. We wait for the official official results as we look at the replay on screen. It got up there, of course, sit up quite nicely. And as he got it, he's running stride as we approach the 50 meters mark. It was just a matter of letting the, the legs flow. Uh, official time for Ethan Sam from MVP Club, 10.70 seconds, um, Leslie. Well, he went even better than he did in the preliminaries of 10.72. And uh, the car after qualifying mark 10.8, so he has qualified for the 100 meters at the car after games. The national record here 10.17 seconds, Sean Lambert, and the games record Anderson Peters 10.62 still stands. That was established in 2013. As you just, you just say, Sean Lambert, and it just reminds me, one of our age old old lieutenants of the of the of of the track. And it was just sort of interesting, these athletes, how they, they come, they shine, and then we seem not to hear of them. But Ethan Sam, in a time of 10.70 seconds, second place Tyreek McSween, 11.03, Mikhail Redhead, 11.09, Nathan Hilaire of MVP Club, 11.36 seconds, in fifth position Cameron Madeline, um, Isaac Fraser, Jaden Knights, and Duran Sincere. So congratulations to Mr. Sam. He came, he saw, and he conquered, as was expected. He did it better than Balboa. So I want to say a special good evening to Anthony Sam, the dad of Ethan Sam. I know he's an ardent follower and maybe his biggest fan, his mom, a track mom. And they're all very much into their track and field and the support they're giving to Ethan Sam. So he makes his way onto the Carifter team and we yes. wish him all the best at Carifter Games 2023. Some impressive times of 10.70 seconds and 21.71. And again, we say that 10.7 may not get him into the finals, but again, an impressive run by Ethan Sam. How important was that? You sort of hinted to it briefly. That support factor, not just from the coaching staff, but from home. That certainly, it augurs well for the overall development and it's an added impetus to those athletes. Well, that's a big one. The support you get from home, from mom and dad and everybody else. Um, to wake you up, to prepare the breakfast, to get you to the training, to take you back home, to manage your academics and your sports and your discipline. That combination of factors is so key in the overall development of the athlete. And uh, Ethan, Sam and others are receiving that. We, we have the, the soccer moms, the track moms, the cricket moms and dads. We don't leave out the dads as well. And they provide that level of support that really encourages and spurs these, these athletes on. And that support that aids in their success is not just in track and field, but then it works any, in any aspect, wherever you, you find athletes or students that have that strong support base, Leslie, there's no doubt that it provides the right atmosphere for them to actually excel. So Ethan Sam, 10.70 seconds, and Tariq McSween, 11.03. And in third place, Mikel Redhead from St. Davis Track Blazers, 11.09 seconds. And then you have Anderson um, making an attempt at the second throw. His first throw is around 80.92 meters um, thereabout. And certainly, let's see if he's going, he's going to improve. He's going to dig deep. Um, a number of the athletes, they go into the pre through rituals. And certainly, this time will be no different. Young athlete there, um, cheering him on. Um, let's see, as he hurls the, uh, the, the javelin. Again, I think it's just too much. Uh, it goes too much up into the air. I think it is a, a much flatter trajectory as well. And uh, the wind, not much of a factor for this throw. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a strong wind at the moment. But we look to see. Anderson doesn't look too happy with the hands of Kimball there on the hips. 80.50 is an even um, lesser distance than the previous. There is Paul Philippe having a word with him. Um, maybe they're trying to go through the paces there to see what he's not getting right. Okay, those distances are, uh, I mean, are way be, be, below what we've come to expect from him from as an international athlete. Um, but certainly... They would be having a conversation with him, trying to determine the what, what's not g going right, the rhythm, um, the atmosphere is not. Um, there's probably just a multiplicity, a multiplicity of factors um, that, that's actually come, coming into play, Leslie. 
But we'll be getting ready for another event, another event on the track. It's the event number 45 at the girls' 400 meters dash in the under 17 category. From Boca, Amaya Chandler in lane one, lane two, Maya Noel. Running out of lane three is Emma McIntosh, Shafona Houston. For South City Rising Star is nestled in lane number four. Cradle next to her from St. David's Track Blazer is Kamia Tellisford. Lane number six is occupied by Tamia. Tamia Thomas, um, Kayla McIntyre runs out of lane number seven, and Kiana Joseph is occupying lane number eight. The lane assignment, Leslie, for event number 45, the girls' 400, 400. yes, the girls' 400 meters dash. Your thoughts, your predictions? Well, first of all, the car after standard here, 56.50 seconds, and uh, I think we may just see Shafonia Houston, who has already qualified based on the, uh, the character standard of 56.43 she ran in the preliminaries. She can lower that, I believe, and uh, she's definitely one to look out for here, running out of lane four. Um, the others are some distance behind her in terms of the time, but uh, she'll be running against herself, so to speak, and the clock to see if she can lower that time of 56.43 that she did in the preliminaries. Well, but, uh, Shafonia Houston in lane four from South City Rising Stars, uh, the athlete to look out for in this event. Well, the prospects on papers looks quite healthy for her to produce a victory. Let's do hope. I know in cricket it's not over till the fat lady sing. In, in athletics, what? I mean, what is this? It ain't over till it's over? Here, am I trying to set you up, right? The race is not for the fastest, but to those who can enjoy to the end. <laughs> well done, Leslie. <laughs> the race is, and but, um, indeed, it's a 400, so it's not for the fastest. But for those who, who can garner and can put together the right technique at, on the day itself. Well, there's going to be a, a battle for second and third, as we see a number of athletes in the one minute, three point, just over three seconds uh, category. And uh, I think they're really running for second and third in this event. So for Shafonia Houston is the obvious favorite and she's expected to win. Um, let's see if she can lower that time that she did in the preliminaries. Uh, considering she was just outside of the 200 meter qualifying mark yesterday. And uh, she would want to make a statement here very early. 400 meters under 17 girls. Let's we get a lane assignment. McIntosh, Houston, Tellisford, Thomas. McIntyre, your lane assignments for the upcoming event, the girls' 400 meters dash, event number 45. And it's all happening here live via TNR Communications. That's who you, you're following us. Um, that's a pro live production at the Arisa National Champs 2023. You can hear the excitement in the air from the crowd. McIntosh, Houston, Tellisford, Thomas, and McIntyre, the lane number seven. A nice clean start to the 400 meters under 17 girls. Shafonia Houston already making up the stagger there on the athlete in lane five. That's Kamaya Tellisford from Track Blazers. As she go past the rest of the field ahead of her, and uh, enters the back straight here, looking smooth as butter is Shafonia Houston. As uh, she pulls away from the rest of the field and establishes herself nicely in this, the 400 meters under 17 girls. Looking to establish a further, better time than she did in the preliminaries. Shafonia Houston with 120 meters to go. She enters the home straight just about now and is really pouring herself down the back straight, down the home straight now. Shafonia Houston with about 30 minutes, 30 meters lead over the rest of the field. And that is going to be another very impressive time by Shafonia Houston of South City Rising Stars. We are with the official timing on this one, but a blistering run here indeed at the Kiriani James Analytics uh, Stadium by Shafonia Houston. Un unofficially, 54.92. We see we wait for the official time on screen, but another excellent run and she did not disappoint Leslie. Um, we look for the official time. We get the official time from um, the officials from the ground. Um, 
but certainly another ex a really 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 impressive run is she went out there and she literally literally she took charge she took she actually charge. returned 56.68 so a little bit slower than she did previously but nonetheless a very good run and she already made that qualified mark in the preliminaries so although her final time is just outside of the character standard Again, a very decent run indeed by Shafonia Houston of South City Rising Stars. And we continue to highlight the fact, Leslie, that the national champ serves a multiplicity of factors. Qualifications for character, but also bragging rights and sending a message out there to the rest of the field. Look guys, in two weeks time, I hope you can come with your ace game because I am here, I am ready to deliver. Intercall conversation comes in, come, comes into play. So Shafon and Houston, 56. Point six eight, um, Telesford. That's Kymia Telesford. Um, one minute zero two point four seven seconds. Emma McIntosh from MVP. One minute zero two point seven eight. And we have for Sass Tamia Thomas. One minute zero five point five four. And that was the. What is interesting to note here, as we get ready for the boys' four hundred meters, that both Kamia Telesford and Emma McIntosh did better times than they did in the preliminaries. And which is which is good for them as well. So in the boys category, we will see Cameron Mathlin from MVP in lane one, Tevin Duncan Grapp from South City Rising Stars in two, Nicholas Frederick of Boca in three, Keelan Moses and Davis Track Blazers. We saw him running that uh, blistering 800 meters moments ago. He's in lane four. Quedel Pear is in five. He still holds a number of records at the private primary school games. In six, we would see. Aidan McIntosh. Another one from the clan. And uh, Kyle Ned from uh, Altitude. He's also a student of SAS. He's in lane 7. And uh, Shaman Andrew of Shaper is in lane 8. A number of the lanes are scratched. We you don't see anybody line up for lanes 1 and 2. So Matlin and uh, Duncan Grappy. The lanes are scratched. Um, in three, definitely, we see uh, Frederick. And even McIntosh is laying the scratch. Moses, I, I doubt you see Moses. He, his starting block is there. But he, moments ago, would have competed in the 800 meters, that run back he did there. And, but he's back out there. There he is, Keylord Moses. Hmm. Iron Man, so to speak, uh, Kado. Indeed, no arguments over that. No arguments over that. I mean, it, showed, it shows the depth of the athlete, the quality of the individual that he is. Uh, literally to be back out. Um, some, uh, or maybe it, it, it brings into, into question the timing of these events. But these athletes, they perform. And they do what they have to do on the day. On the day. Queen L. Pierre is a lane five. A very promising athlete coming out of the, the primary school circuit. Aidan McIntosh. As you see, a member of the clan, he is the there. Clan. And uh, Kyle Ned has been very impressive for SAS. He's, he is the third time Victor Lodurum at SAS Sports. That's Kyle Ned. And he's competing today for Altitude. And of course, Shaman Andrew from Shaper is expected to be in lane 8. His lane also looks to be scratched. A reduced feel, Leslie, but certainly I hope it doesn't diminish. Maybe, maybe it may, maybe, maybe it probably wouldn't diminish on the quality of the, of, of the final outcome of the race. I think we still have some top athletes in this one. Uh, Moses from Track Blazers definitely is one to look out for here. So too is Queen Pear from MVP. And uh, Kyle Ned from Altitude is one to look out for. Macintosh, this guy is trained with MVP. So McIntosh is not there no. in six. So we have four athletes competing here. We have uh, Moses, Frederick, Ned. And Pear. And Quinnell Pear. Uh, they are off and running here. The 400 meters under 17 boys dash. And uh, Taking his time so far is Queen El Pear and Kilon Moses measuring each other nicely. Moses for Track Blazers. Uh, the athlete up front seemingly is uh, 
Kyle Ned from Altitude. Queen LP is there in lane five in the red and with the white headband. Moses in the purple for St. Davis Track Blazers and making a good run on the inside is Nicholas Frederick from Boca. As they enter the home straight now, here is where Moses is going to turn it on and so he does. Keelon Moses turns it on and goes past Queen LP. Moses is going to win again and he wins it now for Track Blazers. Queen LP in second and Kyle Ned in third. There's a lot of things I hope to be in life. There's a lot of things I, I admire. That's what you call beast mode performance. Well, I mean, he had to run on the 49 seconds to qualify for Carifter, and that looks like a 49 point something seconds here. Let's see what the official time comes up on, on, on this uh, fantastic event. 50.96 by Killon Moses outside of the Carifter qualifying mark. But nonetheless, a very spirited performance from Keelon Moses. Very spirited, well completed, well rounded uh, performance indeed. Uh, Keelon Moses from St. David's Track Blazer at a time of 50.96. Uh, Quinnell Peer came as was expecting to, to put some effort into it, and he did. 51.51. Ned from ATC, 52 flat. And uh, Nicholas Frederick, 52. And, and, and maybe we can have this conversation. Killon Moses ran the 400 meters within the last hour and back to do the, the 400 meters. And maybe, we just said maybe, if that has not, had not been the case, we may have seen a, a, a better time from him and maybe achieving the qualifying mark. But just by virtue of having done that previous event. He, he, he's actually still on the track. He's already laid it out on the track uh, here. He, and honestly, and I mean, whether or not it was advised or not, I mean, I'm assuming the coaches go through these, these random con these conversations to run or not to run. But it, only, it, sh it, it shows well as to the mecca of the athlete that, that he is, his ability to deliver and certainly, I mean, Come the day, come the man. You put it, you put him to the test, Leslie. He definitely, he definitely delivers. So, um, a com a congratulations to him as we get ready for another event. Event number fifty-six, the girls' two hundred meters dash in the under seventeen category. The lane assignments as we see them for St. Davis Track Blazer, Tashana Bascom in one, Kash Kashanti Mitchell is in two. Christiana Charles occupies lane three. Kayla Christopher runs out of four. Kedonna Douglas is in five. Nestle next to her. Rihanna Thomas sits in lane number six. Dania Modas is in lane number seven. And Rachel Etienne occupies lane number eight. Lane assignment for next event on the track. Event number 56. The girls 200 meters dash in the under 50 category, Les. Well... The games record here 23. The games record here 24.99. Kina Thomas from Karaku, established in 2017. As we got to go down trackside for a medal presentation ceremony, and uh, we'll be right back with you as soon as the live action resumes on the track. goes through on the 17. Third position, Akedon James, St. Davis Track Blazers, 31.64 meters. Second position, Jelani Barnes, St. Davis Track Blazers, 35.19 meters. And the winner, Kamal Hazard, South City Rising Stars, 35. Point four five meters. Medal presentation for event sixty three. The boys are shot put on the seventeen. Third position represented St. David's Track Blazers, Jelani Barnes, eleven point eight four meters. Second position from Runners Athletics, Bivontre No Nelson, eleven. 0.87 meters and your winner from the South City Rising Stars Kamal Hazad 12.14 meters
event medal presentation for event 64. The girls are zero open. Third position, Alina Glud, St. David's Track Blazers. Second position, Akeda Maxwin, St. David's Track Blazers. And your winner, Jam Jamilia Nicholas, St. David's Track Blazers, 34.53 meters. Medal presentation for event 71. The girls, 1,500 meters open. Third position, Amaya Henry. Maya represented finish line, 5 minutes, 30.04 seconds. Second position, Amaya Samuel, 5 minutes, 25.23 seconds, also representing finish line athletics. And your winner, Anna Lisa Brown. Winner, Boca Secondary, 5 minutes, 23.19 seconds. Medal presentation for event 72, girls 800 meter run under 17. Third position, Kenya Philip, St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew. Two minutes, 44 seconds. Second position, Alian Gidhari, St. David's Track Blazers. Two minutes, 33 seconds. And your winner from Fusion Athletics, Ariana James, two minutes, 32 seconds. Medal presentation for event 73, the boys 800 meters under 17. Third position, represented Boca Secondary, Nicholas Frederick. Second position, represented Fusion Athletic Club, Andrel Mitchell, two minutes, 2.11 seconds. And your winner, just, and your winner just completed, just finished winning the 400 meters, Keelon Moses, St. David's Shark Blazers, 201.49 seconds. Medal presentation for event 74, the boys 800 meter open. Third position, Antoine Blackett, Fusion Athletics, two minutes, one seconds. Second position, Tyrone Jacob, South City Rising Stars, one minute, 55 seconds. And your winner from this Ace Track Club, Michael Francois, a record-breaking performance of 1 minute 53 seconds. The winners for the boys 800 meter open. That concludes the medal presentation. We want to thank Mr. Blackett for assisting with the presentation this afternoon. Girls high jump open. Third position, Zania Bain, finish line athletic. Second position, Kayla Williams, St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew. And your winner, with a jump of 1.45 meters, Akira Morin, St. David's Shark Blazers. The winners for the girls' high jump open. Now that concludes the medal presentation for this section of the session. We want to thank Mr. 
Mr. Daniel, for assisting with this presentation. Viewers, we welcome you back to the live coverage here of the Arisa National Championships 2023. Before we go into the live track and field action, we're going to have that interview I spoke to you about with some very important information that we want to share with you. Many of you are benefiting from the live and, and, and beautiful commentary and uh, broadcast from TNR Communication. They've been bringing a number of the social and sporting events through the length and breadth of Grenada. And next week, Thursday, they're going to be back again here at the National Stadium with the National Primary, Primary School Games. And of course, the big one, Intercall 2023, TNR Communication. And uh, this year, Intercall is going to be of a different format in terms of the broadcast. And with me now to discuss the coverage of Intercall 2023 is the Executive Director and the CEO of TNR Communication, none other than Richie Olivier. Richie, welcome to your own studio and <laughs> microphones. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, um, Leslie. Good afternoon to the all the viewers, followers of uh, TNR Communications, all the good people who have been out there give, giving us all these uh, good compliments over the last uh, year or so. So good afternoon, and thank you, Leslie. Uh, and thank you for being here. Richie, that's the man himself, Richie Oliver. Richie, Interqual is going to be different this year in terms of the broadcast. In the past, we know how it was done. All the media houses came, they covered. This year is going to be different. Tell us what are some of the differences, first of all, in the organization of the broadcast, and then we will zero in on some of the specifics. Yes, well, the intercall this year has been um, given to a central broadcast unit by the principals committee. Let me, let me just say that first. So we have, have, have gotten the, the rights, basically, to do the um, do the broadcast for intercall so there will be one broadcast unit and that will be tnr communications yes and we we are hoping to 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 give you give you a different perspective this year of um, the intercall games we'll be having quite a bit of different camera angles um the mix zone and all that so we are hoping to cover intercall in a very comprehensive way the in the past, we, we we saw most of the attention given to the to the at the athletics and what is happening on the track. But this year, I think there is going to be a loud time so that when you have the high jump and the discus and the short put going on, you, you the, these events will be able to get enough coverage this year. So you won't hear you you won't hear. Like you might, like you might actually see just now. You, 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 you won't hear them saying, "Let's go back to the track," and because, and and you and a field event is in progress. That We're gonna come back to that, Richie, as we have an event in progress here, the 200 meters under 15 girls, and in the middle of the track here, an athlete here from the track blazers, as Kayla Christopher. Christopher, it is in the lead here. Kayla Christopher from Track Blazers has some good challenge from Cadena Douglas from Boca. But Christopher is going to win this one. She has the wobble, wobbling head technique. She pumps her fist into the air triumphantly too. But uh, Kayla Christopher of Track Blazers, she came in with a time of 26.03 seconds. And uh, she wins comfortably in the end over Kidona Douglas of the Boca Secondary School. So Richie, we just want to go back again to intercall coverage. You mentioned all of the additional features, especially with the camera work and the additional cameras, the roving cameras, the people in the mix zone and covering, giving the field events more attention that it has gotten over the years and even at these games here today. And there are a number of things. I'm sure the drone will be out as well too. Yes, definitely. The drone, we, we, we'll be using the drone, particularly on the, um, on the last day to give persons, you know, a, 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 an overhead perspective of the, of the amount of persons here. And in, in some instances, um, while an event is actually um, um, being, um, being run off or, or whatever the case might be. But I want to speak a little more about the, the field events. The field events have not gotten the coverage that um, some persons would like to see in years gone by. So we are actually hoping we are going to have commentary, running commentary on the field events. You'll be hearing the names of the athletes that are doing the throws and the jumps. 
and you will you you will have two or three camera angles on on the field event that is happening on the um, on the field yeah right and then after this event richie i want us to come back to talk about how can viewers access the coverage that TNR Communications is going to present sure. for Intercall 2023. Yeah, sure. And while we come back to that, just to give you the lane assignments for the upcoming event, the boys 200 meter dash on the 15. In lane one, we have Ethan Ogist of Finish Line, lane two, Vecchio Hines of Shaper, lane three, Rishon Daniel of MVP, lane four, Anthony Charles Finn of Track Blazers, lane five, Delron John of Altitude, Lane 6, Omarion Richardson of West Hall Secondary. Lane 7, Nathaniel Alfred of South City Rising Stars. And in lane 8, Christoph Kalist of Altitude. Under 15 boys, 200 meters. The game's record, 23.06. Ethan Sam, 2021. So they're up and running. Nice, clean start here in the boys under 15 200 meters and looking good already is the athlete in the middle of the track here looks like delron john from altitude on the outside it looks like delron john from altitude here and uh, coasting across the finish line here in the 200 meters under 15 boys Delron John of Altitude. Could have returned a better time. He really, really eased up towards the finish line. Not to show the reason for that. But Delron John here leading this pack and looking good. And then just turning it off altogether in the finals here. And coasting over the finish line. Needs to work on that explosive finish as well. And we look to see what time Delron John of Altitude would have returned. He came in with the second fastest time of 24.37. And we look forward to see what timing he brings back. We'll get back to that in a while, but we still have Richie Olivier here with us, the CEO of TNR Communications. And we're speaking about Intercall Games 2023 and the additional features. Richie, how can viewers access Intercall Games 2023 on the, the, the live stream and on the broadcast? Yes, well, Leslie, this year the Intercall Games won't be on social media. It would not be on YouTube or Facebook, like how we are looking at these games presently. We are we'll be doing the the Intercall Games this year on the pay per view, and it's 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 going to be available on tizik.com. That is t i z i q. dot com tizik dot com, and on the first day, patrons will be able to pay a small fee of $7.99, US dollars. That's $7.99 US for the first day. The second day will be the same thing, $7.99. On the third day, it, that's the final day, it will be $12.99. 12 dollars 99 and there's a package, there is a package that you can buy also, which is all three days, that you get for $25 US. So it's, we, 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 we at TNR Communications, we are trying to keep it very reasonable for patrons. This is the first year that the games are going um, pay-per-view. And we know what it is like out there for, for persons who have grown accustomed to seeing um, intercall games on social media. But we promise you, you that the, the fee that you have been charged there, the coverage that you will be getting at the end of it, I think some person might actually want to appear somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, for the benefit of the viewers, and just before we go into the next race, can you just repeat those those charges for the people view again? Yes, on the, the first day, it's $7.99 US. The second day, it's the same thing, $7.99. On the third day, it's $12.99. And there is a package price, which is all three days for $25 US. And again, like I said, it's available on Tizik. They are the, the, the providing the streaming, T-I-Z-I-Q, Tizik.com. So yes. viewers, you hear it here, Intercall is going to be pay-per-view. $7.99 for days one and two, that's just about 21 EC dollars. And the day three, which is $12.99 US, is about 35 EC dollars. 
and then you can check the package for all three days at 25 us dollars which i make it to be somewhere around 60 dollars correct for all correct. three correct. days Leslie. So that's how it's going to be, and that's um, the professional approach to intercall games and the coverage. Yes, and yes. Uh, I can tell you, and I can back the quality of the coverage of TNR Communications, the quality of the camera, the camera work, uh, the producers, the Blondel and company, the cameramen are all and, very and professional. And let me just speak a little about that before this restart, Leslie, so we can finish here. I just want to, you, you know, without uh, guys like Blondel and Nazim, Colin, Reggie, Kirk, and quite a few others who will join us for the intercall games. There is no TNR communication. The long and the short is these guys, um, I call them shareholders in the business because they actually make it happen. They, they make it happen. The, the technical team make it happen. Richie, what's about persons who might be in the venue and want to stream the, the event as well? Oh, well? Okay, we'll come back yes. to that, Richie. Okay, great. The girls 200 meter dash under 20 about to be started. We will see Flanders, Bain, Philip, Dominic, Shante Augustine is there as well, Roberts, Henry, and uh, Batiste. Shante Augustine in lane five from MVP. Kenisha Dominic in four with the fastest time coming into the finals. There they go. The start of the 200 meters dash for under 20 girls. Shante Augustine looking good as well, but so too is the athlete on her inside, which is Curdy and Philip from MVP. Looking good is the athlete 251, Kenisha Dominic. Kamisha Dominic it is, is going to win over Shante Augustine. And it is indeed Kamisha Dominic. Shante has to settle for second. A battle for third and fourth there. We are with the official result. But from our looks here, it looks as though it was Kamisha Dominic of Track Blazers who would have won this one. The battle continues between Kamisha Dominic and Shante Augustine. Kamisha Dominic winning this one handsomely or convincingly over Shante Augustine in the 200 meters for under 20 girls. 25.21 by Kamisha Dominic. Shante Augustine 25.50. The character qualified mark here 24 seconds flat. So both athletes outside of the character qualified mark. And again, the record held by Nikelia John, that's the game's record, 24.4. Richie, to go back to the last point, I was asking you the question about persons streaming the intercall games from the venue. Well, Leslie, let's go here. Now, I see some persons speaking about, um, for locally, locally, it will be available on free-to-air and on cable. That's television. It will be available on free-to-air television and it will be available on cable. But take note, it would not be available even on so social media from these different mediums, the different um, broadcast house that is responsible for bringing it on TV locally. Now, we, are, we, we will be embarking on an education program to educate persons as to what they can and cannot do for the three days of intercall because we want to let persons know that it it it, it is against the law we, we have we we have done carnival over the last few years and we have um, basically spelt it out to persons you cannot go into the venue and broadcast the event live you cannot record a race or and, and put it out there in social media two and three minutes afterwards. There is a moratorium. There will be a moratorium on these things until after intercall. Right, so Richie will come back to that right. because there's going to be a scotcher on the track now. That's the 200 meters under 20 boys. We will see here Shaquin Thomas from McDonald College. Josh M. Sylvester, who placed third in the 400. He's in lane two. Emilio Bishop, who was impressive in the 100 meters. He is also there in... Or in the preliminaries, he's in lane three. Rickel Telemark from Fusion. He comes in with 21.69. Elisha Williams would give him some tough challenge out there in lane five from Track Blazers. Tegan Peterkin is also there in lane six. Samuel Green is there as well from Fusion in seven. And Joshua Greenwich in lane eight. Some of the fastest boys at secondary schools are here. It's an intercall preview, so to speak. And uh, we look forward to see what uh, Telemark can return. He already established 
and uh, qualified for the character um, qualifying mark of 21.5. Uh, there they go. The 200 meters, a false start it is. They will be called back. And that's the anxiety, anxiety that you have when you have all of these quick athletes in one event. Thomas, Sylvester, Bishop, Telemark, Williams, Peterkin, Green, and Greenwich. So Telemark comes in with 21.69. We saw him slowing down with about 60 meters to go in the preliminaries. Elisha Williams, who also slowed down from Trailblazers, comes in with 21.72. Then we have Emilio Bishop, 21.98. Josh M. Sylvester, 22.01. Tegan Peterkin, 22.05. And then we have 22.57 from Shaquin Thomas and 22.76 Joshua Greenwich. So these are all very competitive times. And we expect that fall starts would happen in events like this where these athletes are so competitive. We saw them in the 400 meters, Peter King getting the better of them with 46.97. And uh, here they are again battling in the 200 meters. So Telemark won the 400, Elisha Williams was second and uh, Josh M. Sylvester was third. Let's see if there can be any change in the positions. I'm very doubtful of that. But there might just be a Tegan Peterkin who might want to send a signal here that he's back. Telemark, the obvious favorite. He's running out of lane four with the white and red stripe and the red headband. He has Elisha Williams on his inside. There they go. It's another false start. This time somebody would be DQ'd. Unless it's an equipment malfunction or it's an, an error by the starter. It's going to be interesting to see. We hope for the sake of this event that nobody or no one is disqualified. But that is the kind of interest and anxiety that this event is having. Let's see what happens here on the replay. If we can pick up who may have just gone ahead of the gun. It looks as though lane six here, and that looks like uh, Tegan Peterkin from lane six from the replay we've just seen. It'll mm -hmm. be unfortunate for young Peterkin who is coming back from injury. No card has been issued yet. One of the officials approaching lane six now and dishes out the card to Tegan Peterkin. So it's a green card, he's not yet disqualified. And uh, any athlete who jumps the gun now would be disqualified. So it's good that we have all eight athletes still in contention here. Peter King would have to hold definitely, all the athletes would have to hold. They're gonna have a third attempt at it. 200 meters under 20 boys. This time it's a nice clean start here. Let's see when Telemark would make his move. Telemark comes up the turn good, but he has a strong challenge on his outside from Elisha Williams. Elisha Williams emerges from the bend in the lead. Is Telemark going to push him hard? Elisha Williams in the lead here. Telemark has his work cut out for him. Williams is going to win it. Elisha Williams wins it over Telemark. Show bolting as well. A surprise victory here for Elisha Williams. He recognizes the applaud from the crowd. A surprised look on his face as well. Elisha Williams for the win here. What a run indeed. Commensurations for the rest of the field. But not the best runs here by Telemark. Williams coming off the bend in the lead. Glances over his left shoulder to see where Telemark was. Couldn't see him. And he continued to use his power, his strength. His determination, he was not going to give up. Telemark conceding towards the finish line here, recognizing he was defeated. And some showbolting as well, an attitude from Elisha Williams. 21.29 and qualifies for the character, character standard 21.50. Telemark just outside of that. But we do believe that Telemark can go faster. Congratulations to Elisha Williams. 
avenging his defeat in the 400 meters 21.29 and that would also qualify him for the Carifta Games an impressive run by Elisha Williams from St. David's Track Blazers Richie, yes, just yeah. to put a final wrap on the intercall uh, coverage, you were saying that some of the local media would also be broadcasting the, the, the game. So yes. the local fans, you don't have to worry too much if you can't afford the pay-per-view. Um, some of the local media houses have yeah. purchased the rights from TNR Communication to broadcast the games. And that's correct, Leslie. So persons don't have to fear. If they cannot afford the... the the pay-per-view, you, you look on TV, on free-to-air, or you, or you look on cable. And, and, and Leslie, um, I just want to say this. this. This has been the trend. If you look at Champs in Jamaica, um, Champs in Jamaica has been, um, has been on pay-per-view um, since last year, I, 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 I think, and they're on pay-per-view again. And our prizes are, are, are very competitive. Our prizes are very competitive. You'll be getting quality a quality um, and broadcast but I just want to let persons know I mean we 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 have seen what it is some person would want to go live and do what they have to do but we we will be taking the the trend here to educate persons we do not want persons to get into trouble because we have put system in place we'll be tracking we'll be tracking all persons who are going live through algorithms and all that so we, we know, we, we will know who you are when you go live, you know. We will know who you are when you go live. And if persons have to educate themselves, we have an act that governs these types of things in Grenada. We have an act that governs that. And we don't want to bring persons into, into any, you know, any, any, any strange things, I would, I would say. Let's put it strange things. So persons have to be educated as to what they cannot do. And we'll be embarking on an education drive in the next two weeks to let persons know that. Well, thank you very much, Richie. And uh, we hope that the, the viewers will subscribe to the pay-per-view um, um, facility, especially those in the diaspora. But local uh, track and field fans, you need not worry. Some of the local media houses will be bringing it to you. I'm sure that would have been a concern that you would have had, especially those who may have found it uh, not affordable. Although Richie did mention that it is quite affordable at only what twenty one dollars. Twenty one dollars is, and we quote we quote the US because it's it's the the provider, the, the person that, that is providing the platform for us to do the pay per view, has quoted us US dollars at, at seven dollars and ninety nine cents, and it's that that's just it. It's twenty one dollars EC roughly, you know, so 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 that's it. Thank you very much, Richie, for sharing this uh, important information. As we get set for okay, the Leslie, boys, thank you. Thank you again. And again, TNR Communication. Remember, primary school games next week will be live on TNR Communication and the intercall, of course, on March 28, 29, 38. The next event is going to be the boys 200 meter dash 20 plus. There was no preliminary for this one. We go straight into the finals. And we believe that the games record may just come down here because we've had some impressive runs. From the athletes out of Ace, Troy Mason, Adam Peters, Sharpen Charles from Trailblazers. He's also going to be featured in that one. So we expect to see in lane two, Trevor Andrew from Altitude. In lane three, Adam Peters from Ace. Lane four, Troy Mason also from Ace. Sharpen Charles from Trailblazers. Zimali Felix from South City Rising Stars. And Corey Joseph from St. David's Catholic Secondary. These are the competitors in the 200 meter dash for 20 plus boys. The record here, the game's record 21.43. They're up and running here. Let's see what Troy Mason can do. He is one of the athletes we expect to break the record in this event. Ed Adam Peters is also there on the inside. The two athletes from his club is there in the pink shirts but it's uh, Troy Mason here with some strong challenge on the outside from Sharvin Charles from Track Blazers but Troy Mason wins comfortable Adam Peters has to settle for third and Sharvin Charles of Track Blazers for second there is your winner Troy Mason of Ace 
we look to see what time uh, he has returned here but coming off the bend uh, he had very good challenge here from Shavin Charles of Chuck Blazers but after they straightened into the home straight his show strength here and speed was able to surpass that of Shavin Charles and he really powered his way through to the finish line to win in an impressive time of 21.07 seconds a new games record it's also a stadium record beating the old ma sorry the stadium record is 20.16 so 21.07 is the games record and that has been held here now by troy mason he did 21.08 before and he has gone a hundred of a second faster to establish a new record that's your record holder there for you troy mason winning the 200 meter dash for 20 plus boys Kado is back with us in the chair and Kado you've just been able to witness an exciting finish and a record breaking performance in terms of the games record for Troy Mason of East Track Club an additional $150 to him um, compliments of friends at um, our friends at Arisa so of course the prize indeed he has earned it and quite an excellent excellent run there and certainly remember Randy you that Arisa given $150 as an added incentive to any records that's been broken. And uh, certainly prior to that, I um, know while you were here and you can you can you had to have you had to allow yourself a more measured disposition for the two hundred. I was on the outside. We tell you Mike, Elijah Williams. And again, I was heading back to, to, so to my seat. So was it you we saw jumping up and down? And <laughs> we saw we saw this UFO, so to speak. <laughs> well, I can say to you, if it was me you saw, you wouldn't be able to identify me. <laughs> but indeed, a very good run by Elisha Williams to, to upset, what we call an upset, because Telemark was an obvious favorite here. Mm -hmm. Elisha Williams redeeming himself, having lost the 400, 400. meters to Telemark. I was rooting for him. I was rooting for Telemark. Honestly, I was rooting for him, but certainly come the day, you, you, you come the man, Elijah delivered, sets up quite a, a multi, multi, watcher, multi watcher in anticipation for that what she's going to give for the next time they meet. So again, it, it's going to be bragging rights, they, they, they won up on each other, so to speak, and the next yes. time they meet, I'm sure, is going to be a clash of some the sort. The winner takes it all, it's going to be a titanic or a mega clash, if you, if you say so. Uh, when you have it in any of these prints, um, Leslie, where you get two, the, the judges, for whatever reason, the status have to recall a race twice. It tells yourself, you know, there's something. Maybe you have to ask yourself, how did that affect um, the mental space of either one of those athletes? Um, Telemark, whatever. They, but either way, it all goes well for when they meet. They want up on each other either way. The next event seems to be the HEP Girls 800 meter dash. Um, we should see Brunel Thomas from South City Rising Stars, Alia Gidhari, St. Davis Track Blazers, Letitia Williams from Stars, and Andy and Courtney of Boca. That's the 800 meter dash in the heptathlon. And I, was, I couldn't help but we have to continue to highlight that, um, Leslie, the inclusion and a lot of these multiple, dis, multiple, multiple disciplines, the hept, the opt, um, the decathlon, the inclusion of the huddles, which for some reason I don't think I've seen for the day. I can't recall seeing the huddles for the day. It was actually in the first day. I saw them, well, yes, so there was, there was then, right, but either way, you can't help but recognize and continue to highlight the fact that the sport athletics is growing and it continues to be a really, 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 really great job by a lot of the local coaches. The lot of these athletes have been able to embrace the multidiscipline. Um, multidisciplinary at, at, um, events like the Hept and the Octon and all of these stu stuff and it helps also to build these run these um, athletes and probably produce more Lyndon Victor and his brother his, his name is failing me now um, come on Leslie Kurt, on. Kurt Felix Kurt, Kurt Felix yes who have certainly held their own in the last couple of years in, in the, the, the decathlon which is the 10 events 10 events as a multiple discipline um, event and you see you know, a lot of the younger athletes, they now embracing it and recognizing that maybe me, I too, I can hold my own and I can make, make a name for myself at any given day. The lights are on. The excitement continues. 
under the under the lights at the national stadium wherever you are we thanks for being part of this tnr communication production but certainly you don't want to nothing beats though leslie the atmosphere that is conjured up and the euphoria and the excitement of being well there we the have it itself. i was just about to comment on some of the shots that we saw of the the spectators in the stands and uh, the victory for Elisha Williams, we saw the St. David's party here. Yes. And I'm sure you, was that's an where you were, right? <laughs> you, you're still trying to figure out what is it I was up to, right? <laughs> I wanted you keep baiting me so I can, so I, I, I can disclose what I was up to. <laughs> so the girls, the four competitors in the 800 meter heptathlon are on the status orders now. Short, short fields, very limited field. Thomas, Gihari, Williams, Courtney. And we wish we could have given you the update on the HEP girls. This is the final event yes. that they're undertaken now. And in many instances, sometimes the, the, the time that they, they, they return in the final event would determine the winner. And we wish we could have given you that to, to create the anticipation of who oh. the overall winner would be. As the race unfolds, but in the absence of that, we certainly would have could appreciate no doubt that it's going to be another exciting run. Um, from these young ladies that have, that have given quite an account, an excellent account of themselves over the last two days, um, yesterday and today, as they go for the final run. Kado, quite an girls. appreciable crowd has built up here. Yesterday we saw some good numbers as well, and today, as we see a cross section of the, the fans who are here, and uh, we know of the love for track and field in Grenada, and the fans are really come out here. We know there's always a large posse from St. David's. A large or posse. From St. David and also from St. Andrew. There, and, is, and there is a hunger. There is a hunger. And as I said, it's, it's part of the post-COVID pandemic. While some would argue that it's, it hasn't quite yet, it's, it's still here. But that, but that absence of athletics for the, for the two years that we've had inside of COVID, it has left a void and a hunger and for, the, for the event. Um, for athletics and so people are just happy just to be out to be able to support their family and just support the athletes as it is so the athletes are still waiting for the start of the event their final event in the heptathlon let's see and i said in the absence of knowing what the current point st the standing is it sort of takes away from being able to ascertain um, who's just running for academic purposes, uh, who is probably just running for the for all the tea that there is that there is in China. But wherever you what they're running for, whether it's a tea in China or just for academic purposes here, it's coming to you live inside from the national stadium. It's the Arisa National Champs and certainly we're getting ready for and they helped girls eight hundred meters dash, only four athletes, um Bernal Thomas, Aliyah Gihari. Letitia Williams and Andy and Courtney. Well, they're up and running here. It's two laps in this event. And already, the athlete from the South City Rising Stars, Brinnell Thomas, goes out hard and uh, has maybe a 20 meter lead over Andy and Gidhari of Boca. And then there is. Uh, from SAS Letitia Williams who is currently in the third position so in these types of athletes the, the positioning is not as important as the time the that time. they return because yes. points are awarded based on the times uh, returned by the the athletes and it's so important that persons understand that in looking at the race to have an appreciation of exactly um, what strategy that they're going to use but well, Brinnell Thomas looks pretty decent as a, a hip athlete in the 800 meters. Generally, what you tend, what you see happening is that these competitors, this is actually the the weakest event at the amateur level. But she's keeping a very steady pace here in this 800 yes. meters, and it looks to be maybe one of her favorite events as well. Quite a steady pace as she stretches the rest, the, the rest, the rest of the pack. Um, some good 40 meters ahead of them as she heads to the back stretch approaching just around the the 300 meter mark as she continues to make her way a, a lonesome trek um, down the back end of the of the arena the, the remainder of the athletes pretty much at a pedestrian pace indeed but um uh, brunel thomas here uh, um, with a very consistent approach 
and uh, distancing herself almost 100 meters ahead of the rest of the, the, the three competitors. And uh, she's running for a good time. She maybe has her eyes on a particular map, knowing what position she is in the event. But uh, she's looking at a very decent 800 meter runner. She, glanced, she glances over the left shoulder to see if there is any competition. Realizes there is none. She is going to nonetheless put out her best effort and sprint towards the finish line. And uh, Brunel Thomas of South City Rising Stars. A uh, very strong performance in the final event of the heptathlon, the 800 meters. And uh, she's going to lay it out all on the track here now as she wins comfortably and would look to see how much points she can get. From SAS, Letitia Williams is going to pick up the second uh, position in uh, that race, it seems. And then we have Andy and Courtney of Boca and uh, Aliyah Gidhari of St. David's Track Blazers. But a sprint to the finish here by the athlete from Boca, Andy and uh, Courtney, as she goes past uh, Letitia Williams of SAS. And uh, Courtney here again, going to lay it out all on the track to pick up the second position and to earn some valuable points. Letitia Williams from SAS is going to take the third position. And of course, the fourth competitor in the race, Alia Gidhari from St. David's Track Blazers, will finish in the fourth position. So there you have it, the completion of the HEPT 800 meters dash open. Again, we can remind you that um, in these cumulative events, it's very often not just about positions, but it's about time, accumulated points over the course of the event. And certainly, with the absence of us knowing exactly, um, as we continue to highlight Leslie, the absence of knowing their positions prior to the final event, um, the, the, prior, the final event, you certainly you know, interested to know exactly what the final outcome is regarding the event. But again, we say congratulations to um, the winner um, of the of the of the event, and we give them. All so we're looking at the final position. Um, Gihari and this. We move now to the next. So the next event, which is the it is in uh, the boys, the octathlon, um, which is a combination of eight events. Uh, we have the boys 1500 meters dash. The lane assignments we're looking for them in the in there. There is Isaac. GBSS is in there, so too is SAS. MVP Track Club is in is in there, just the same. Fusion is in is in the mix. It's for the 1500 meters dash, as they do in pursuit of accumulative points, and it's important that we continue continue to highlight this in these in these events. It's about accumulative points, and the points based on the times, not necessarily the the position. So you're looking for a great time as they literally the start of the boys 1500 meters in the octathlon. A, a total, Leslie, a total of eight events that makes up this combined, uh, this combined sport and discipline. Eight grueling events that tests that test sorry that tests your your ability as a as an athlete if not your manhood everything that makes you who you are and uh, it's definitely a test of fortitude of these artists their strength their level of preparation well it's a brief pace to this one the 1500 meters in this uh, heptathlon event octathlon event i beg your pardon the field stretched out here. We will try to get, uh, it looks as the athlete from Boca Secondary, that's in the, the lead at the moment. Followed by Sass. At Shimmer Fleming, it looks like here from Boca, who's currently in the lead. But it's indeed early, er, early, early, early days yet, as they try to separate themselves um, the question always comes down to the strategy, um, understanding uh, the technique, what is your, your, uh, your opponent, what is their strength. And uh, these two are going to probably just decide, let me see how we, I can, we can pace ourselves while there is yet time as they continue 
for to move towards the completion of yet another round. Um, completing another another 400. Looks like Aviel Williams of SAS, who's the athlete in the second position who moves into the lead now. It's all happening here under the, the lights of the National Stadium. Um, as you go deep into the evening, late into the evening on day two, the final session of the Horizon National Champs. We continue to see that's Avian Avian Williams. Williams from SAS. He continues uh, just to slowly um, continue to make just to, to take himself on us at a steady pace um, down uh, at the back stretch, followed by the athlete from Boca, um, which sure. is Shamar Fleming. Um, but his young Aviel Williams and his lonesome self as he continues to the top of the guess approaches just about. So we have to continue to keep the eyes as you hear the bell. So the bell indicating as final lap. And certainly once you hear the bell, you then have to decide. But it's Aviel Williams. Aviel Williams as he literally continues to Manipulate the, this field as it is, as he continues to manipulate the field, as he continues on his final 400 meters, um, with not much of a challenge or resistance, um, or any need to be worried as to some magical comeback from any any of the athletes in the field, barring a major breakdown from him. Um, but it's young Aviel Williams, and he is just literally, as he heads down the back stretch. He heads down the back stretch the, uh, at about the 250 meter mark thereabouts, heading towards the the 200 meters. As he continue just to stretch himself, understanding where he is in terms of position, having really stretched the field, the field quite thin. It is Young Williams. It's in the boys 1500 meters dash open, up toddling, uh, as you see lapping the again the GBSS athlete there so from sas it is williams young williams as he heads towards the home stretch as he goes by just about 100 meters to go leslie and just for a little bit of showmanship and a little bit of bragging wise he just touches it a bit just to show that listen honestly guys i had this under control from day one as he crosses the finishes finish line now and there was no doubt um, uh, um leslie that he had this one under control. Well, that seems to be his obvious stronger event. Um, having all that energy left back that he can sprint across the finish line in that manner in which he did um, and get in some valuable points, that must be Avil's strongest event in this uh, combination event. Indeed, indeed. And it would be, as I said, it, it would be good for us if we could have had a complete um, tally sheet to see where these athletes, they, that, where they are positioned. Um, but she said, congratulations to him, well done, as he completed their victory in the boys' 1500 meters open dash in the Athotlan, which is in fact a combination of eight grueling events um, that really takes a toll on you, Leslie, no doubt. It takes a toll on you at some point, um, especially doing these two events, these eight events over two days takes it really requires a lot out of you at, at any level it was actually jordani lewis of sas so there were two sas athletes there but jordani is the one that was the eventual winner um from sas so good run indeed uh for jordani um obviously it looks as though it is a strong event as we mentioned and uh, we see the athlete here from gbss just ambling on and he's going to finish. He's just going to make sure he finishes the event. Mm -hmm. And of course, maybe not his strongest event as he competes over these eight events. And it always speaks well of athletes when you see, recognizing while the, it is just for academic purposes, but the whole question of them completing the race, um, the, the, the race, Leslie, is a piece of a maturity and being able to say, listen, while I may not win, 
but so at least I'm here I'm finished. What well, normally happens at this stage is that the crowd is going to spur him on and he's going to change that gear and there we see here he's going to sprint for the last uh, 20 meters or so. All is never lost. All the, is the never fans lost. love it, they love to bring home the athletes in those situations and uh, he responds to the call from the spectators. Indeed deserving of an applaud that of course he's he literally stayed with it to the end. He stayed with it. There's some athletes you probably tell themselves, you know what? I call, I call that a day. Um, but so that was um, Isaac from GBSS. But we. So, so that was the final Giordani, event in right. the yeah, Jordani Lewis of Sass, who was the eventual winner. And um, that was the final event for the combined events in the octathlon for the boys, the 1500 meters. And uh, it's a, a usual thing they do when they complete this event. We saw the girls doing it a while ago, and the fans here appreciating this, the raw strength and determination of these athletes over the last two days as they competed over eight events. Eight events, Les just under 48 hours it takes a lot it's a multifaceted discipline and that requires strength speed it's, it's a combination of all what the different athletes would go through you literally have to bundle all of that into one man and tell him go out there and deliver at the highest level indeed it requires a lot and we say hats off to the athletes um, that is one of the athletes that has to be carted off I think after two days, after two days, less at eight events, whatever. Well, some athletes don't even get to the final event, eh? Much less. So we have to really applaud uh, these athletes who would have competed over two days, maybe even less than two days, um, eight combined events, including jumps and throws and sprints and uh, the longer distances, the 1,500 meters, as in, in this case. And so it really took a lot out of the athletes. It takes, it, it takes a toll on you, no doubt. I mean, and you'll never understand that which is just required unless you've had, you've, you've participated. Here we have Anderson Peters, is, he's back. Is this his third throw? Well, this is I the third time we've seen him on the runway, so it could be his third or we may have missed we a couple. We may have missed, but the first two throw, um, distances wasn't, was way below par. Um, 80.92 and 80.50 meters. Um, so let's see if he can at least, even with just academic pursuits, he's able to throw. Again, mm. the trajectory of the javelin, not the best. We would look to see what time or distance, sorry, this throw is. It does not look like a big throw in my estimation. And... Uh, I guess the technique is just not perfected today by Anderson Peters. I'm sure, sure whatever it is or isn't hap that isn't happening, uh, the coach, Coach Paul, would be there taking notes and they would go back and they would do, um, well, there we have it, 75 thereabout. Nowhere close to what we know that he's capable of throwing. Um, because we've seen him at the international level. Uh, certainly, it's just not clicking today. Maybe he's missing that competitive vibe, vibe, um, Leslie? I don't know. Some athletes just have an off day with the technique. And we also have to look at the environmental circumstances, the conditions, the approach, the, the wind speed, the wind direction. And sometimes you just don't get that sweet spot, that feel-good spot that you, you execute as you, you want to. And maybe that's what is happening with Anderson Peters here. And in, in his event, all it takes is just you, you, get, you click once. And that could make the difference between a gold medal, a victory, or a defeat. Uh, because for some reason, as you said, he's not clicking as you expect him to right now. And again, for those of you, wherever you are, we want to say thanks for being part of this production. It's a TNR communication production. And certainly as we, we, we offer you all the elements of this two, two days, in fact, yesterday and, and today, we provide you two days of athletic porous inside of the National Stadium. The Ariser, 
national champs, uh, which certainly serves as a precursor in terms of selection, that is, for uh, the for Karefta. A number of records being broken. Um, Arisa, Arisa provided an incentive of $150 to any, anyone and breaking a record. Uh, we've seen a number, a number of records being broken today. Um, some of the middle distance races and even some of the, the, shorter, the, sh the shorter distances as we get ready for the relay. And certainly you can well appreciate that the relays, they really and truly conjures up some really, really, really great excitement. Some really great excitement um, when it comes to track, when it comes to track and field. Um, but we get into start, we see a full house, and you get ready for the starters list. In, it's going with in just a bit, uh, but it is relay time, and certainly when it comes to relays, some people are saying, well, as maybe we're wrapping, wrapping things up, but let's see where we are as we continue to provide you full coverage here at the National Stadium. Again, we say thanks to Arisa as the title sponsor. Um, I think from all indication, it looks that should be event number 65. Um, it should be event number 65. The girls combine girls on the 11 and on the 13. Um, where I look for the official, get for the official um, confirmation on that. But it should be event number 66, which means we almost to the end. And certainly, so it should be event number 66. As soon as I get some confirmation, we am going to let you know. But it should be MVP, McDonald College. Event number 68. Event number 68 of the girls 4 by 100 meters open. Your lead assignment, Boca runs out of two. MVP is in three. St. David's secondary. St. Track Blazers, that is, is in four. Um, South City Rising Star runs out of lane number five. Um, finish line is in six. And in number lane number seven, you have Convent in St. Andrew. There you have it, the lane assignment for your event on the track. Event number 68, the girls 4 by 100 meter relay the 4 by 100 meters relay and certainly as the evening winds down here quite a decent support um quite a little bit less than some would argue than yesterday and you can well appreciate with yesterday being saturday sunday uh, maybe different very challenges some people may have opted not to but either way it has been two excellent days two excellent days of the Arisa National Championships. We are getting ready for event number 68 in the girls 4x100 meters open relay. And Boca is in one, MVP, St. David's Track Blazers, Salt City, Rising Star, Finish Line, and Convent St. Andrew. That's the lineup for the next event on the track of the Arisa National Champs 2023. The girls 4x100 100 meters relay, Leslie, and the less you will appreciate that when it comes to the relays, there's always not a hidden, there's always open excitement about, about the relays. You know, you come to the, the sports meets, and when it comes to the shorter distances and the relays, there's no if but, but there's always heightened anticipation. Well, the relay is always very exciting, and uh it's a tactical event as well. The batter transitioning and well, that's exchange a, that's is a an critical element, area. Yes, element to the success. You can have the best team on paper, but if you don't get that transitioning right, you don't get a transitioning right. So they're off and they're off. It is the girls 4 by 100 meters. As they see, they continue to make. There is Boca in the MVP, Track Blazers, South City, Rising Stars. As they make their way down the down the back stretch, uh, continue in the MVP is there. Track Blazer is in there. They make the second hand over. Uh, some nice clean passing in most by most parts by some of the athletes. 
as they head towards the the third and final hand over um in there mvp is still in there finish line is in there but is mvp mvp in the middle of the track number four that is motoring away and it's a really really a clinical victory for them not much to in terms of con of contention for them uh, but it's an easy win there for mvp as they literally did what they have to do in the girls 400 meters and um, 100. Not much of competition there for them, Leslie. Well, anchoring for them was Shante Augustine. And uh, what I thought was impressive for MVP here was the batter exchange. The batter yes. exchange, it was really, really clinical. And um, Shante may have lost a little time by changing from left to right. As we see many athletes do that, including the great Usain Bolt. But a clinical performance here by MVP to win comfortably in the end by a handsome margin as well in the 4 by 100 meter really open in the time of 48.97 seconds uh, are we going down 48.97 seconds uh, first place for mvp um, south city rising starts 50.77 um, finish line 51.39 um, st david's track blazes 51.53 boca 53.09 and Convent St. Andrew, 54.01. The completion there of event number 68, the girls 400 meters open. And we were making a point just before the start of the relay that the exchange of the battle is so critical. But it, what is also critical is how you position the athletes in the event. Some athletes are better on the curve than on the, the streets. And so the coaches need to know the strengths and weaknesses of the athletes. Some are better starters, mm -hmm. right? And so that is also a critical area in terms of the positioning of the athletes on the various legs of the event. But a good run by MVP. I thought they were the superior team. And it showed up on the track as well. Shanti Augustine anchoring them home with maybe 60 meters ahead of the rest of the field. So there, there you have it. Again, we continue to say what is in critically important. What is critically important in these relays, in these in these relays, it's your ability to have a smooth transition, and all legs, uh, when it comes to the pass on the baton, and the team that is able to successfully um, demonstrate the ability to get it done with the least obstacles and challenges, they often turn out to, to be the ones, as we've seen on the international circuits. I mean, the squad it looks good on paper, but if you can't get it right on the day, then it messes. It, me it messes. You, you have to up. get the batter around the track. You have to, and not just getting it around the track, but avoiding uh, the the loss of time, valuable seconds on the exchange as well. Indeed, if you enable you and those, and you you suddenly you see, you know, the sort of techniques, and you see the skill level being demonstrated very often. You watch the individual athletes, but when you when you see them in the transitioning of the baton, then you get to realize you know those that have trained together. It's not just about putting the best four athletes together, but it is the best four athletes that understand. Uh, the only person that probably used to stand up and wait for the baton was Usain Bolt. And even him, some of his best of days, he knew he had to run for his life anyway. But the evening continues to stretch along as we continue here event number 69 at the boys 400 meters is this the the boys 400 meters it, it is and open sass is in there south city bolt is there san david shark blazer boker is there We'll see how this one pans out. Your overall thoughts, though, Leslie, on the officiating of the games? What you've seen thus far? We'll take it as soon as we get to completion. It's the boys for 100 meter under 20. And uh, Any nice lineup here. We have Racers, Sass, South City, Bold, St. Davis Track Blazers, Boca. And uh, it's going to be a close one here. Let's see what happens here now. They're up and running. Uh, South City Rising Stars making up the stagger nicely here. Sass is also looking good. 
A little fumble there by Sars, but uh, still in contention. South City Rising Stars looking good. Sars seems to be in second position at the moment. Uh, Sars inches closer. Good transition here by Sars. Sars seems seemingly in the lead now. Closing the gap nicely on South City Rising Stars with the final handover to go. Uh, Sars fumbles badly here. So too is South City Rising Stars. Uh, but uh, South City Rising Stars in the lead here. Sars trying to make a challenge for it here. But a very poor batter transition in on that final leg for Sars cost them the event in the end. South City Rising Stars, the eventual winner. And again, the point is well made that getting the stick around the track in the most efficient manner is what can make uh, uh, the difference in who wins and who comes second. Indeed, we continue to highlight it that it's not just about running, but it's about ensuring that you deliver the baton and getting the techniques right. Uh, so, it's a, so the boys 400 meters. But I love what I saw 20. from the SAS athlete on that third leg, except for the batter exchange. He really, really eat up some, some track and caught up the athlete from South City Rising Stars. Don't it's very shot. unfortunate that uh, uh, they didn't get the stick smoothly uh, across and lost some valuable time there, allowing South City Rising Stars to advance on them. But a good race indeed, South City Rising Stars, the eventual winners 43.54, Stars 44.08, and Boca came in third at 44.71. And we continue to say, no doubt, after this is today's exercise is all done and completed, that the teams, the individual coaches, they would go back and start looking at what they can do. Maybe as they transition from the clubs to the school, the individual coaches would be trying to assess what they saw, what they didn't, what they didn't see, and and certainly would be see to try to attempt how do they reassess and reevaluate their plans for when next these athletes they meet. So South City Rising Star. 43.54, SAS 44.08, Boca 44.71, um, Race 45.62, and Bolt. And we continue, we continue, Leslie, to see that continuous presence of Boca. And it's almost like the rebirth, the rejuvenation. And it augurs well for athletics um, while many of the athletes are represented by their clubs. But for those who are representing the school, Boca being one of them, for years they they were no show. But in the well, last it, recent years, yeah, they come, the, they come in into the recent the past we've seen them not only in track and field, but I also want to say in football. Yes, they were actually featured in the finals of the the boys football competition, intercall football competition this year, and last year I think also they were into the finals. So it's not just track and field, but. Uh, the sports program there something has received some kind of injection, I would think. Something's happening. And uh, kudos to the coaches up at Boca Secondary School. Something positive is happening up there, whatever it is. I hope that they continue to do it. And then maybe what we can do is maybe see them lending that support to the other schools as we continue with the growth of track and field. Well, the young ones are out here and they're enjo they are enjoying the games and... Uh, getting some coverage as well. Um, we're going to have two long events coming up, the 3,000 meters for the under 17, to be followed by the 5,000 meter open run for the boys. And uh, these are the two events carded next. And uh, so we're going to take you through that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick short break and we're going to come back with some more track and field action. As a matter of fact, there's going to be a medal presentation ceremony. So we're going to take in some of that and come back when the action resumes on the track. Presentation and transformation. He's, uh, he's joined. He joins the Minister of Sports, the Minister with responsibility for Youth, Sports and Culture, Honorable Ron Redhead. Minister Williams will do the first set of presentations and he's going to present for event 52, the girls 100 meters under 17. Third position, Kamali Phillip, finish line athletics, a time of 12.83 meters. Second position, Alina Dikoto, 473 NVP, a time of 12.55 seconds. 
And the winner from the 473 MVP, Talia Samson, 12.36 seconds. The winners for the girls 100 meters under 17. As we recognize the boys 100 meters under 17. Third position from the St. Davis Shark Blazers, Mikhail Redhead. In a, he ran that in a time of 11.09 seconds. Second position from, test, also test, from test. the St. Davis Shark Blazers, Tyreek McSween. 11.03 seconds. And your winner. From the M473 NVP, Ethan Sam. He ran that in a time of 10.70 seconds. Your winners for event 53, the boys 100 meters under 17. Medal presentation for event 45, the girls 400 meters under 17. Third position, Emma McIntosh represented the 473 NVP. One minute, 4.9 seconds. The second position went to Kamaya Telesford from the St. Davis Track Blazers. One minute, 3.18 seconds. And the ultimate winner from the South City Rising Stars, Shefona Hostin. 56.43 seconds. Medal presentation for the boys 400 meters under 17. Third position from Altitude Track Club. Kyle Ned. He ran that in a time of 52, 52 seconds. The second position from the 473, 473 MVP. Quanel Pierre, 51.51 seconds. And the winner from the St. Davis Shark Blazers, Keelan Moses, 50.96 seconds. Medal presentation for the 200 meters under 15 boys. Third position from the St. Davis Shark Blazers, Anthony Charles. Anthony Charles Finn from the St. David Shark Blazers. He ran that in a time of 24.30 seconds. Second position from the finish line track club, Ethan August. And your winner from the Altitude Track Club, Delron John, 23.29 seconds. The winners for the boys, 200 meters under 15. In the female division, 200 meters under 20. Third position, Zania Bain, finish line athletics club. 26.74 seconds. Second position, Shante Augustine, 473 NVP. 25.50 seconds. And the winner from the St. Davis Shark Blazers, Kemisha Dominic, 25.21 seconds. We want to thank, uh, we want to thank Honorable Andy Williams, for the Minister of Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation for assisting with these presentations. We know thank Minister Ron for doing the 200 meters under 20 boys. In third position from the Fusion Athletic Club, he ran a time of 21.79 seconds. Samuel Green. <laughs> Second position, Rikael Telemach, Fusion Athletics, 
1.56 seconds. And the winner from the St. David's Shark Blazers, he ran in a time of 21.29 seconds, Elijah Williams. In the senior men category, the boys 200 meters, event 62. Third position, Adam Peters, Ace Track Club, 21.84 seconds. Second position from the St. David's Shark Blazers, Shavin Charles, a time of 21.58 seconds. And the winner from the Ace Track Club, in a time of 21.07 seconds, Troy Mason. <laughs> A medal presentation for event. Thank you, guys. Medal presentation for event 75. The boys triple jump open. Third position from the South City Rising Stars, Glenroy Charles. He jumped a distance of 13.01 meters. Second position from the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. A shade date, 13.27 meters. And the winner from the South City Rising Stars, Kenny Horsford, 13.39 meters. Winners for the boys' triple jump open. The long jump on the 17 mil, event, event 51, third Testing. position. Anthony Charles Finn from the St. David's Track Blazers. He jumped a distance of 5.56 meters. Second position from the South City Rising Stars, Michael Campbell, 5 meters, 5.70 meters. And your winner from the Altitude Track Club, Christophe Scalise. A dis uh, he jumped a distance of 5.82 meters. The winners for the boys on the 17 long jump. Medal presentation for event 66. The girls 4 by 100 meters really under 13. Third position, Bolt Track Club. Second position, sprinters. And the winner. And the winner for the 4 by 100 meters on the 13 female. Velocity Track Club, 56.12 seconds boys are four by 100 meters under 13 event 67 third position bolt track club 58.96 seconds Second position, Runners Athletics, 57.06 seconds. And your winner from the McDonald College, 55.51 seconds. The winners of the boys 4 by 100 meters under 13. Medal presentation. For the girls, 200 meter under 15. In third position, Rihanna Thomas, South City Rising Stars. Around the time of 27.49 seconds. Second position from the Altitude Track Club, Christiana Charles, 27.06 seconds.
And the winner from the St. David's Track Blazers. She did it in a time of 26.30 seconds. Kayla Christopher. Thank you very much, Honorable Ron Reddit, for assisting. That brings us to the end of the medal presentation. Present the presenters, Minister of Sports and the Minister of Mobilization. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. Your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami. A Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. A Ryza now offers chip cards also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Arisa Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit arisacu.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Arisa Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. Good evening again, viewers, and we welcome you back to the live coverage of the Arisa National Championships here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in St. George's. We just witnessed there one of the medal presentation ceremonies. We have event number 79 coming up. That's the boys' 3,000 meter run on the 17. And uh, so we have 13 athletes registered for this event. We see only six of them on the track. And that event will start in a short while the 3,000 meters for the under 17 boys. And Kado, <laughs> another long event that uh, requires a lot of uh, conditioning and stamina and form and strategy as well. And, uh, and Tristan, I've seen a lot of so many junior athletes and it would be interesting to know from... Well, it's an under-17 event. Under-17, I'm saying in terms of the number of, ev the number of athletes that's there, I'm wondering what could have possibly been responsible for that. But on the 17, the 3,000 followed. We then be followed by the 5,000, and then we come down to relays, um, and then cap in the evening. Uh, but certainly, it's one of those events that I love to see on the international stage: the Kenyans, the Ethiopians, um, and I'm happy that a lot of our athletes are now getting and it's been introduced at the junior level, giving them an an an, an, an opportunity to go out there and. Have some fun, literally, uh, because one of those grueling events that if you, you're not conscious, you tend to forget it's, it's actually happening. Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time to complete the event at, at this level. Um, uh, so 3,000 meters, they call to the starting line. Similarly, some of the athletes may not have been ready. They're going to have a restart to it. No rush, take your time, gentlemen. <laughs> well, the you're, up and you're for a while. And uh, Boca secondary. With a brisk pace, a brisk start. And sometimes the strategy is to go hard, then relax and recuperate, and then go again. But a pretty decent pace here to start for Boca secondary. Mm. 
It will be interesting to know <laughs> what the coach and staff uh, would have instructed him would have instructed him to do. Uh, Boca's secondary match with the, the, the person of Federicks, it seems. Yes, um, but we'll see what the pace, what the strategy is. I mean, Leslie, they will be over there for quite a while. And certainly, he will, will see, he'll take the best out of you in terms of conditioning and everything else. Um, as you grind away, grind away in the boys 3,000 meters on the 17 boys. There's Fedrix from Boca, Roberts from Marisi from Race. And there's Kyle Alexis also in there. Um, so Mafila was originally 13, has been reduced to eight athletes. Nicholas, Roberts. So for those of you just joining us, we say thanks for being part of the conversation. Kyle Alexis, Jordan Hazard from, from South City. Carlos Whiteman also in there. It's early going in the boys' 3,000 meters um, as you plan the evening out with us here at the National Stadium. And we'll be followed by um, the boys' 5,000. Well, Kado, um, we see maybe some early signs of some cramping from the athlete from Boca, but they have six laps to go um, in this event, so it's still some time away from the Quite end. And uh, two athletes pulling away from uh, the rest of the field. And uh, keeping a, a good steady pace is the athlete from Boca Secondary. But you look at him as he moves, he, 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 he comes, he makes his way down the back stretch. Uh, you see a bit of grit and agony on his face. Seems as though he's in a bit of discomfort, no doubt. And uh, that's Nick, Nicholas Fedrick from Boca Secondary. Um, Early days yet. It's the boys 3,000 meters as he looks over his left shoulder to try to get an appreciation and a gauge for where the rest of the field is positioned. As he continues to make his way, it probably it will be interesting to know what's going through. It's always interesting what's going through their going through their minds as they as they. With five more laps to go, they're just about to complete another lap. Five more laps to go. It's the boys 3,000 meters. Boca is in, is, is, in, is, is in there. South City is also in there. As they pull away, Leslie, from the rest of the field, um, probably as they go down the back stretch, maybe they may to ask a few each other a few odds and end questions as to well they're moving in packs of two there's a lead pack of two and then another chase pack of two but moving into the lead now it looks like an athlete from the fusion track club and uh, Boca is still there but uh, again these two athletes look pretty comfortable up front there's a second two athletes that's uh, leading the follow-up chase pack. They continue to run in tandem with each other as they complete another lap. Fedrick from Boca. As they head towards the... There is Yazid Richardson. He's there from McDonald College, actually. That's the second athlete that is there alongside the athlete from Boca. So that's uh, Yazid Richardson from McDonald College. He's the one in the sort of an all-white outfit. If you're just joining us, what is it you're looking at in progress as the boys 3,000 meters um, from McDonald College out front? It's Yazid Richardson. He's followed by Boca. That's the, the person of Nicholas Fedrick. Um, 
Richardson. So sort of pulling away a bit from pulling away from Williams, who they they ran shoulder to shoulder for uh, the greater part of the last of the last two laps. Um, but each one of these athletes just trying to position themselves um, while gauging their competitors. The question of conserving energy. As but yes, it looks very comfortable up front. Um, Cadeau, um from McDonald College. Um, Nicholas Frederick looking comfortable as well. And these two have established a commanding lead over the rest of the field. And uh, yes, it is moving gradually away from Nicholas Frederick. Some 1200 meters to go as they. Well, they have three more laps to go. 1200 meters as you called it and the pace is picking up definitely by Yazid I think he's backing his ability I mean those kind of races you have you have, you have to you have to have confidence in your in your ability I mean he has a, a generous lead on on Nicholas from Boca um, and it's interesting that Bo that Nicholas is the one that actually initiated that push and Yazid responded to it, and now he is a bit of, what you say, a bit of control. Uh, he just looked back, looked over his shoulder to have an appreciation as to where young Nicholas Mboke is, and saying to himself, okay, I have you where I want you, I just need to maintain form. And he seems quite consistent. Um, he doesn't seem in any way winded, or and, is there anything that's asking too much of him? Um, Frederick isn't asking any of anything of him in any way, form or fashion. Neither he says the rest of the field. And he's not in any way worried about them. If ever there's a threat that he's worried about, it's Nicholas that is some 80 meters or so behind him. Yes. So it's the boys 3,000 meters. Um, Yazid Richardson from McDonald College in pursuit. Carlo, I don't know if you recall McDonald College over the years producing several excellent long distance yes. athletes uh, uh, we, we recall many of them especially in the female category they had several of these very very um, outstanding female athletes well and, and, and indeed they have they have been pre produced uh, to the point that they were intercall champions and for then they had those 400 meter athletes right yes and even young joseph who was good at the 800 meters as well but the leslie and and and, and the whole lineup of them when McDonald College was dominating um, Intercall, it's a rich history that they had back in, in, in that era. But I just want people to appreciate that when you say Leslie, that you're not referring to yourself and you're not insinuating that it's you, this Leslie that you. Just, just you leave it as to. Leslie Cardo. I'll be good with that, right? Leave it. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we see he has it here lapping one of the athletes, and maybe he's coming up to lap a second athlete. He's going to take the bell lap, so he has one, one more lap to complete. 400 meters left here for Yazid. He looks back to see uh, where is Richardson from, uh, as has Frederick, sorry, from Boca from Secondary. Boca. He's nowhere in sight. He's lost him somewhere. I wonder what happens when they, they pass each other, they've lapped each other, they're passing them. You're probably tempted to maybe say something a bit, a, a bit cheeky. So but there is uh, Frederick now, just going past the finish line there, but uh, that's the athlete that is up front. Richardson, Yazid Richardson from McDonald College, uh, doing his final trek down the backstretch. So let's see what he has left, Carlo. Let's see when he's going to make that kick, because he looks so comfortable there now. He looks as though he has a lot in the tank still, and he's picking up the pace, he's looking I'm back. I'm not sure who he's looking for. No sign of tired at all, Cardo. And I'm sure he has some left in the tank for a final kick to the finish line. Does he do a bit for, give us a bit of showmanship at the end? Let's see. Or he just comes up with a constant, steady stride. Uh, the club crowd, they applauded him as he heads home. It looks quite solid in, in, in his run. Um, Maybe that's, that's the only thing he's lacking in, 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 his, in his race strategy, that final kick to the end. But again, he wasn't pushed. He really didn't have any competition. And look at that, a walk in the park for a young Yazid. 
Well, no signs of being tired. Like mom just sent him to the shop, and he delivered the goods, and he's going and to he's play with his friends now. He's going to play. He's going to play with play with his friends. Well, maybe that's what a Sunday show looks like. Uh, takes off his 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 foot gear, and seems quite comfortable. Uh, listen, but then you're probably thinking, Leslie, uh, on the 17, these youngsters, they they have all the energy that 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 they need. So it's just been whispered to me that that could be Stephanie Ferguson's son. She has been a phenomenal athlete for uh, McDonald College it's over it's the, the years. Blood. It's in the blood then. And so it's in the genes. Yeah, it is in there. Um, an, an impressive run indeed by Richardson. And here, oh, wow. He did not even, well, we, we have young Williams. That's, that's Nicholas uh, Frederick, Frederick from sorry, Boca. Boca. And I'm not sure if they've recognized, but he did not, he, he has not crossed the, Whoa. Well, they're coming in very tired indeed. And it's unfortunate that Frederick. That's exhausting. They have just been. They have just collapsed before the finish line. He's quickly whisked away from the track to yes. receive some medical attention. And that was some good vigilance there by the medical team to be that alert and vigilant to give him the, the attention he deserves. And we have to applaud them that for the last two days. And they've certainly they've been equal to the task of responding to whatever the needs are on the field in terms of attending to those uh, to those athletes and we say kudos to them well here you have this is the final athlete this is of course the showmanship as they usher him home the final athlete in what has been the 3,000 meters on the 17 boys and then it has indeed been a grueling Sunday afternoon for them uh, we say congratulations to young Richardson, to young Richardson. Um, this at least has to be helped up, and it's one of these at these events that takes the best out of you. It really takes the best out of you. It shows. It brings into question your strength, your conditioning. Just over seven laps around the track, and these athletes are going. They may have participated in some other events as well. No doubt. And it's actually the second day of competition. But I think um, Young Yazid demonstrated something completely different to most of the athletes in the race. He, he won and it was just as though he was ready to take part in another event, you know. And that's how comfortable he was at the end of the race. Indeed, it will be good to be following as we get a chance. We hope we get a chance over the years to follow these athletes as they grow and develop and they expand on it on 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 their trade maybe for time yet to come we may be looking at some of our more long distance runners as we, we move away from the four thousand from the 400 and we see the likes of young um richardson who probably maybe one day so we again we just want to highlight the, the rich legacy that mcdonald college had with the with these events the stephanie stephanie ferguson the uh I'm trying to remember her name now. She 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 lives in the Victoria area now. Um, um, but she was phenomenal on the track as well. Even uh, P.S. Kim Frederick was a long-standing, uh, long-distance athlete from McDonald College in her earlier days, representing Grenada as well. The legacy, the Sarana legacy Patterson, continues. That's the name I was trying to remember. She was also a phenomenal athlete from McDonald College on the track. Anthony Dog Charles. I can see way you. back. I can see you're doing well, that you're keeping up with your brain food, Leslie. Yeah? <laughs> Some say the mem that the memory is failing you. But I, I often say to them, not the Leslie that I know. Not the Leslie that, that I know. So that was the completion of the boys' 3,000 meter run on the 17. We're going to have, an, we're gonna have another grueling event, the 5,000 5, meter boys open. And I'm sure the likes of Tyrone Jacob and others will be there. Shaquem Williams, always there for South City Rising Stars. And uh, just to give an appreciation to how the evening is going to pan out. Uh, we just saw the completion of the 3,000. We then move into the boys' 5,000 meters. And thereafter, we get into um, really mode. And certainly thereafter, we, we pull the curtains down. And what has been two really phenomenal days of track and field here at the Athletic Stadium, getting um, a view across a section view of the 
matched our supporters, fashion and in high demand when you come to these games, um, Leslie. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to gauge whether or not some of the ex ex outstanding fashionary pieces I've seen there, if that's in any way has anything to do with you. By any chance, by any chance Leslie? Or you probably prefer not, not, not to comment? You prefer not to come. <laughs> I see. It. I see. It. You. 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 You try to give. Make sure you give me the most professional response that uh, that I possibly can. Uh, but certainly, the last two days has been really, 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 really great. I know some folks. They probably thinking uh, that you know, school tomorrow, work tomorrow. Uh, but let's see. We look at the lineup for the event number seventy-six. Um, Jay Phillip from Bokish, Shakim Williams, Leveron Thorn from Ace. Um, Jacobs, yes, as you called it, um, is from South City Rising Stars. Is there Jay Phillip from Boca, uh, Brent Edmond from CAC? Um, there's also uh, Kyron Henry from South City is 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 in the mix as well. So the next event on the track is going to be event number 76, um, the boys 5,000 meter run. Another grueling, grueling event. But certainly we say congratulations to. Um, young Richardson from McDonald College and we can safely say the legacy continues and certainly and there is great promise though Leslie not just a legacy but great promise in what we've seen I see I see a very bright future in this young man I mean the manner in which he ended the race right the the comfort that he had throughout the race there was no grimace on the face there was no sign of uneasiness and he finished as though he didn't run anything yet. And, and there's a lot of progress here. That's talent that we definitely need to harness and to foster. And certainly, as we, when we, we, we the, day would, the day would have ended, we certainly hope that the different coaches at the schools and clubs will be looking. As you see that, we see the um, coach Denise um, from Track Blazers, who certainly over the years has been a talisman um, a, a Wells has offered really great support um, for their endeavors at tracking at St. David's Track Blazers. And certainly you would hope that she will continue, not just that I know, she's rather unselfish, um, Leslie, when it comes to what she offers. But we're getting ready for um, six athletes, six athletes again. So there they go, the start of the 5,000 meter run. The record for this event is held by Rion Radic, 16 minutes, six seconds. He established that in 2006, but the national record goes back as far as 1981, Morris Bull Williams, 14 minutes, 58.23 seconds. Rion Radic now a FIFA referee, and he would have established this uh, games record here in 2006. So Tyrone Jacob is there. He's always here for this event. Um, Shaquem Williams from South City Rising Stars is a regular feature in this event as well. But we also see an athlete here from Ace. We will try to momentarily tell you who's the athlete from Ace. I um, mean, this race could be Leveron Thorn. It looks like Leveron Thorn. And uh, there's also yes, it is. an athlete here from SAS, and that looks like Miguel Cape. Miguel Cape. Early days, Jacob from South City Rising Star. Well, Jacob is a, a favorite here. So too is uh, Thorn from from uh, Ace. Thorn has been very good on the road and has won a few of the uh, road races that was that were held this year. And uh, Tyrone Jacob, he's been a perennial contender. He is from the days of GBSS. Yes. And he continues to run for South City Rising Stars. Thorn receives a lot of inspiration and coaching from Kendall Simon. And uh, you recall Kendall Simon would have dominated um, this event here, has gone on to win, I think, a bronze at Carifta as well. And uh, that's his mentor. You know what is the excellent and I'm happy with the day? And that's yet another, another facet to what the, the clubs um, offers these athletes, um, Leslie, that because traditionally an athlete he's finished with school, and that was the end of him and at, and athletics, providing of course he probably keeps up with it for his own personal interest. 
But no, the club is, is offering them a lifesaver that they can say, listen, while my secondary school days are over, I can still be um, do enjoy what I like, athletics, and be part of a club somewhere at some part, some part of the island. So again, we continue to highlight the importance of the club structure uh, that has yielded quite well for the development of sports and has contributed to the personal and collective development of many athletes, if not, or by extension, of the sport. So that's Jacob continues to um, establish himself as, as, we, as Tyrone Jacob from South City Rising Star uh, in what is the boys 5,000 meters um, with still some 10 laps to go and so um, I'm trying to think Leslie 10 laps I'm trying to f picture myself out there Leslie well you'd have been on the on the on the, on the capital already you have been flat out on the track already Cadeau I'm not sure what you might have been doing. The medical team would have been at your side by I now mean, as well. Uh, Leslie, I'm not. I'm not really sure which. which what is it? How you <laughs> determine that all on your own? But if that's what if that's what you're offering me, you I know, think you'd have been on the track just doing coverage, right? Media coverage. Well, Nothing else. Well, that's what I was saying. <laughs> you seem to think something. Other <laughs> you seem to think otherwise. Uh, but we continue here to enjoy uh, the ambience that lends itself to really what has been a really great day. Of athletics two great days um, in, in in fact um, two great days when we see a number of um, really really um, exemplary exemplary performances the one Leslie Wilde has been a lot and um, for me but one of the events that stands out in my mind it's the 200 meters the 200 meters finals um, it just created the sort of excitement that yeah, the I build up was there for it and you tell yourself, you know what, something has to give in one, in, in, in one, in one of these events. And I think part of it too was the fact that uh, Telemark won the 400 meters over Williams, right? And um, he came in as the favorite in the 200 meters as well. And uh, Elisha Williams was not going to have any of that on the day and really ran a very strong race to qualify for Carifter as well uh, with a blister in time. And you saw his reaction at the, at, the, at the end as he crossed the finish line, you know, thumping his chest and the gesticulation as though to say to Telemac, listen, bro, listen, bro, you've got your own plans. You've come with your plans, but I've got plans on my own for this event. And he certainly is left. He left today with the bragging rights of saying that, of course, he is the fastest over that he won. And he got the better of Telemac um, at, at uh, the Carif at um, the Arisa national champs 2023 we continue to keep our eyes peeled on the track as we in prog in progress event number 76 the boys um 5 000 meters run open well we see a change in the lead now lebron thorn is there shakim williams from south city rising stars moves into the second position tyron jacob recedes to the third position but um, Shakim does not have that kick towards the end as Tyrone has or, or Thorn. Uh, as you see, Tyrone moves back into the lead here. So it's part of his strategy maybe to go, to relax, to recuperate, yes. come again. Shakim is in third. And uh, Shakim is going to run that pace maybe throughout the entire race. That's, that's his style. Um, it's going to really be, because it's going to be a battle really between Tyrone Jacob and uh, Leveron Thorn for the, the, the two top positions in this race. Well, as they continue to the cat and mouse, they continue with the exchange of positions. What, what uh, could have been interesting here is that because Tyrone and uh, Shakim belongs to the same club, they could have uh, discussed a strategy. Run and turn, yes. To get uh, Thorn out of the race, you know, to push him hard in the beginning and, and, and hold back or take turns at pushing him hard. Um, but it seems as though it's uh, an individual contest here and they, they have no real strategy to outfox or to, out, to outdo um, Thorn in this event. We see, we see a lot of that from the Kenyans, the, the Ethiopians, and the Moroccans when they run those, these distances. They really, they really tag team. And, and that's where it's, in fact, when you see the pursuit 
is that or the glory is not about the individual, but it's that of country. Um, where they decide, you know what, let's see how we could take and maybe them out. Maybe that's what they're doing now. If you look at what's happening, yes, Tyrone is looking back. Maybe he's looking back Your for turn. Shakim. Yes. And uh, they, 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 there's, a, there's an exchange in the lead ever so often between all three of them. So there is some strategy that maybe they're just beginning to employ to see who could um, outdo the other in this event as Shakim moves Most to the lead again. And uh, Tyrion holds back now. You can see the relaxed um, posture from, from Tyrion here now. But Leveron Town is going all there by himself. Doesn't have that strategic partner, so to speak, to, to deal with the, the, the strategies that is being um, put out here by the South City Rising Stars. Well, in the whether there's a strategy, yes or no, they continue seven more grueling laps in this the boys 5000 meter run open um everyone is in there so to his jacobs as they continue to play catch me if you can Tie. there's the other cat and mouse, cat move and there mouse again. game as they probably just said maybe they whether they were they planned it or not maybe it's a strategy that's unfolding right in front of our right in front of, of our faces this is probably the i think what has just happened that tyrone is is telling us that that race is going a little bit too slow shakim is not pulling his weight as he ought to and he opted to go out a little bit harder to see if leveron would follow him leveron did not take the bait on that occasion tyrone then begins to slow down and then uh, they, they catch up with him again so there's a mind game that has been played out there sort of a psychological warfare so to speak Mm -hmm. And it augurs well for, for the, the athletes up front and the strategies and to see who will be the eventual winner. For the fans, um, it's interesting too to understand those dynamics and to, to try to, to figure out the, the strategies employed by those three at the top. Indeed you have to because if you're home and you, you, you're, following the, you're following the event, it doesn't offer the exci excitement of a sprint. Uh, but certainly they are tacticians in their own right as they lobby for position back and forth and ultimately they're trying to establish where the other one their their position what is it they have and they can should i be the one to set to take the lead should i be the one that's going to agitate the the, the other man to do something out, outside of character again but they continue to um exchange positions um jacob now um assuming the frontal position as they head towards the closure from yet another lap there is we continue jacobs is in there leveron is in there the three nicely bunched together um they for the leslie for the greater part they've been shoulder to shoulder except sporadically when for some different reason like we see now when maybe somebody there's is opt-in maybe to do something a bit uncanny yeah, they've been like that for most of the race. But I still think at the end it's going to be determined between uh, Tyrone Jacob and Levron Thorne. Those two know each other very well. Um, Tyrone has won this event here at National Champs before. Thorne uh, has been dominant on the road. It's a different complexity altogether between road and track. And uh, he has an opportunity here to make a name for himself on the track. That's Levron Thorne. Well, I'm not sure if, if the record they run in much of an issue for them, but I remind you that as title sponsors, um, Arisa, they they were given $150 as an incentive to anyone that breaks a record on at the meet. Well, we don't even have enough clock. Um, they're certainly off the record pace, and um, be the games record or the national record. Rian Radix was phenomenal in that. Um, I've heard the stories of Maurice Bull Williams and uh, the, the pace that they're going here now definitely off the record pace. Well, let's see as this one they continue. This is the wrong the fifth and five there's the five laps to go as the two continue on what is has been for the greater part a quiet Saturday stroll as they chip away and and on the back stretch. And it continued with the interchanging of positions. Um, and that has been the modus operandi for the two, for the greater part of the game, um, for the race. Um, 
Well, they have three and a half laps to go. And at some point in time, somebody would have to make that initial move. Something somebody's got to give. The question is when. Um, certainly, but we do know when it gets, when we look and see how it unfolds as they, can, they move towards the completion of a, another lap. And we wait for them to get into view in just a bit. Jacob, as they continue. Not much of a challenge to either one right now. They just continue to appreciate what's happening. And have, as they complete a, another lap. It's a race against themselves. The boys. 5,000 meters run open. And it's, it's all happening here inside of the Kirani James Athletic Stadium for what is a closing session of what has been two excellent days, Leslie, of the Arisa National Championships. And while Arisa, indeed, they've been the title sponsor, we can't in any way discount the support that the, the other commercial partners they have given to the meet. Absolutely, and the role played by the Grenada Athletic Association in organizing and executing uh, the event. Um, notwithstanding, there have been um, some organizational challenges. We still were the beneficiaries of exciting races on the track and some good performances in the field as well. We're going to highlight some of these outstanding performances later on when we put a wrap on the two days of events. And uh, we still have an event in progress that could be a very exciting one in the end between the two leaders of the 5,000 meter event. That's Leveron Thorn and uh, Tyrone Jacob. And they're coming up to two, meter, two, two, two laps to go. So they receive the signal now for two more laps. And uh, neither of these athletes really making that kick and trying to outdo the other. Um, Shaquem Richards has been pulled away. Couldn't keep up with the pace by these two at the, at the top. That's Shaquem Williams in screen here now, motoring along. The pace has really picked up by those two up front. That's Leveron Thorn and uh, Tyrion Jacob. Ace versus South City Rising Star. A race, a 5,000 5, meter race that has been literally reduced to, well, a final just 800 meters. Let's see, as they go down the, the, back, the, the back stretch, um, Thorn from Ace, biding his time, so too is Jacob, as they try to determine what's the next or when that next strategic move will be. I think when the bell goes to indicate the final lap, we will see a move made by either one of them. Tyrone, I think he backs himself, he knows his ability, he has a, a fairly decent kick towards the end, so too is Thorn, but definitely the pace is picking up. The bell has sounded and we can see the legs turning over a little faster now. They're going to pick up the pace, the fans are getting into it as well. They're becoming a little louder, understanding that it's just one lap to go. And uh, Kado, we can see the arms moving a little faster now, the legs turning over faster. So officially 400 meters left in uh, this exercise. It is Thorn, Jacob, as they Jacob move is shoulder making to a shoulder. Move. Jacob seems to be making a more definitive move here as he moves into the lead and nice. picks up the pace nicely. With about 200 meters to go, Jacob is pulling away from Thorne. Let's see if Thorne is going to respond to this challenge and how would Jacob combat whatever challenge that is going to come from Thorne. 200 meters remaining here. Another athlete is lapped. Jacob is picking up the pace nicely, but Thorne is in close contention. They're looking at each other here. Who has the, the speed and determination and endurance? Tyrone is looking over his shoulder. It looks very comfortable here. Thorne is giving it all he's got. But Tyrone, Jacob is going to win this one, it seems. As they head to the finish line here now, Jacob wins it. Uh, Thorne comes in second. And some distance back would be Shaquem Williams for the bronze medal. 
I think you, I mean, you, 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 you couldn't have scripted it better. These two at least, they knew, knowing each other. And as you said, you could have seen t Jacob, of course, he always backed himself, understanding, of course, that he has the final kick. And, and you saw it. And, and you get the sense, though, Les, that if he was pushed further, he was going to dig a little bit deeper. And he came across the finish line. Les ready after a 5,000 meter run. It seemed as though these, gen these gentlemen, they just went for a little, a little, a little walk and gingerly. But I'm they, happy, they, I'm they, happy they, to they, see back. Kado Shakim Williams speaking of the bronze. He has been at this event year after year after year, um, uh, got himself involved in the club. And uh, that those clubs are really doing well for those athletes who would have left school. And um, a major factor we left out that the clubs played was during the COVID years, when there was no track and field event, the clubs is who really held on to these athletes and provided some support for them in their preparation on the track. So the, the event is still in progress. The 5,000 meters open for boys. Unofficially, it's Tyrone Jacob of South City Rising Stars. Lebron Thorne from Ace in second. Tyrone Jacob, 17 minutes, 0 0.8 seconds. Thorne, 17 minutes, 1.7 seconds. Shaquem Williams picked up the bronze with seven, in 17 minutes, 29.8 seconds. The top three finishes. Miguel Cape of Sass was fourth with 18 minutes, 20.9 seconds. These are the top four finishers in the 5,000 meters open for boys. While we get ready for the relays, I, I'm getting there's still an athlete if my, if, is there, or have we completed the full cast of athletes. But either way, f moving away from the 5,000, we, we we're down to the final two relay events. Final two relay events, Leslie, and what would be and the 4x400 four meters open for girls and uh, the 4x400 four meters open for boys? Well, the ultimate, the penultimate, and the ultimate events of what has been a really, 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 really exciting and excellent two days of track and field here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Um, certainly. Um, Leslie and I will do, we'll, we'll go through the summary for you. Uh, but certainly this is the official end. And I mean, his legs are just giving way under him, as you can well, as you can well appreciate. But congratulations to Tyrone Jacob of South City Rising Stars in a time of 17.008 seconds. Um, Livron Thorn from Ace 17, 01.7 seconds. And Shaquem Williams, uh, certainly as Leslie intimated, has been a perennial contender, and you you, you couldn't overemphasize Leslie the contribution that the the club structure has offered to young Williams. To he's here, he came and been able to deliver, and he had another another at an at at a national level. For those of you, wherever you are, yes, you, I know you're probably thinking, what next? Two more events to go. And certainly we bring the curtains down. And what has been a really exciting two days. Um, you see the best of the lot here at the event. Um, a, mix of, a mix of events um, that certainly has done really, really great for uh, the return of the championships. Last year, uh, we, there was only one day. It was a, an edited version. Uh, to, certainly in 2023, uh, we have two full days and the only thing that's going to beat two days of track and field, Leslie, is going to be three days of intercall that waits, awaits in the wings. Well, the, the stage is set for an exciting intercall 2023. I was saying the stage is set for an exciting intercall 2023. I was speaking during the break to some of the coaches downstairs and uh, they're looking forward to the level of competition. So although they were not uh, really supporting any particular school, mm -hmm. but from what they are seeing throughout the season, it's going to be a very competitive um, intercall between the athletes, not necessarily between the schools, but between the athletes, as some of these athletes are returning very competitive times throughout the season. So the girls are on the track and getting ready for the penultimate event, which is the 4x400 four meters open. And we should see here athletes from SAS, St. Joseph Convent, St. Andrew, sprinters, MVP, finish line, South City Rising Stars, and uh, track blazers. 
Uh, Boca Secondary is also listed to compete in this event. The lineup has the, and not just the lineup, the penultimate event of the day. It's a girls' four by four hundred meters relay open, and we expect this to be yet another exciting event. So sprinters is there in the green. They're out there in lane one. MVP seems to be in two. St. Davis Track Blazers three. Then we have Boca, South City Rising Stars. And on the outside there, it seems to be finish line. Well, it has started the penultimate event, the 4x400 meters open for girls. And uh, MVP, 473 MVP, already out in blazing glory. Boca Secondary. Is it Boca Secondary or South City Rising Stars? It looks like South City, South Rising, City Stars. Rising Stars. MVP Frontline. As they motor down the back straight, it is South City Rising Star. MVP trying to make a push as they head uh, towards the final 100 meters. Is MV MVP South City followed in, in a bit back by Frontline. But it's MVP. A uh, motor in a way that's going to do uh, provide the first handover of what is a 4x4 four four, uh, pulling away by some increasing the distance of 30 meters or so as they do the first fine handover. So this is the lineup at four. It is MVP, South City Rising Star, Track Blazers. So too is Frontline in there, followed by Boca. But it is the athlete from MVP, some 40 meters or so, um, as she continues to hold her, her, her line steady, hold her line steady as she motors down the back stretch, some 200 meters or so to go. It is MVP, MVP, as she heads towards the 100 meters a meter mark. MVP is there, trap blazer, trying to eat up on some of the grounds that she has given up. Um, MVP is there, um, but the, here comes, here comes um, South City. Um, obviously, MVP, the athlete from MVP, tiring, legs given up under her as she makes the first handover, um, and certainly she has given up on some of the grounds that she that she that she gained quite early, as we do the second handover. <coughs> Quite a reduced gap as they go down the back stretch. Still MVP, uh, but certainly that distance has been eaten away. And that looks as the athlete, well, is a changing of the guards. Changing of the guards, MVP. She has traded places with the athlete. Hel you recognize that one, Leslie? It looks like it's not a SAS uniform, but here she is, MVP, clawing, clawing her way back. She's clawing her way back. It's that cat and mouse, catch me if you can. Whatever you do, I can do better. As they work, make it for another handover in an event that MVP has literally been in charge of for the greater part of the of the well, race. it's Shante Augustine for MVP on that final leg. And it's going to take a Herculean effort, Kado, to catch Shante Augustine here. But let's see what happens. Catch me if you can. As she makes her way down, down the back stretch. So about just around the 300 meter, to meter mark. It's running quite steady stride, maintaining and keeping her form. Um, heading towards the 200 meter mark. Augustine, the gap seems to be closing between herself and the athletes that's in hot pursuit and uh, they get to just about the 200 meter mark let's see what's it's going to be does she have the legs to to maintain form or is she going to be reduced into second place not sure what quite happened there ah uh, at least she's collapsing and it's shante augustine who is literally running away quite in a quite a smooth stride as she makes her way home shante augustine from mvp um, a victory for MVP. Uh, I'll be quite curious well, Kando, to see what happened. I hope it's not something too serious, but uh, I pray God it isn't. 
Um, it's going to be interesting replay when we look back at the tape to see what eventually happened there. But uh, comfortable run in the end for Shante Augustine of MVP. Um, it's, I'm not we, that the replay is probably going to provide us with an opportunity. You saw, you saw frustration on her face. But she went out very hard trying to catch up with Shante Augustine. She actually went past Shante Augustine and thereafter just collapsed on the track. Um, we're not sure if she was able to get up and complete the event, but uh, a good run indeed by the quartet from MVP. So as we look back here now, with about 150 to go, she was on the shoulders of Shante Augustine and looking to go around her on the bend here. Shante Augustine remaining very calm and composed. And uh, just around this point here, is when I think she would have collapsed on the track. So I think she must have had a misstep of some sort there. Yeah, it's a misstep here. Her, she just lost her rhythm. And uh, with the energy that she was pushing out, putting out, trying to get past Shante, who was holding a very steady challenge, I think she was just outwinded and, 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 and collapsed there. So um, definitely no fault of Shante's. Um, Shante maintained her her stride, her composure, maybe oblivious to what was happening around her as well. And we hope for the athlete's sake it's not anything too serious. And she was able to get up and complete the race. Hopefully, we, we, we hope that was the case. You always, it is always disconcerting when you see an athlete go down for whatever reason, uh, whether it is just through rare frustration or through injury. Um, you certainly would always want to wish the best for them in what was the penultimate event of the day. But we say congratulations to Shanti Augustine and her team from MVP. So we want to apologize to the viewers on the Arisa uh, Facebook page, just in case you may have lost, just in case you may have lost the coverage for a short moment. We we did have to do a reset on the Facebook page. But those of you who are on the TNR Communications YouTube page, you would not have had that issue. And so we want to apologize to those viewers on Facebook who may have momentarily lost. Uh, the coverage. So we continue. It is down to the final event of the day. It's the boys. Four by 400 meters really open. And certainly um, this one, the four by four, um, Leslie, at any sport, sported meet, is always creates a spectacle. Um, it conjures up excitement, emotions, um, swells, and people, friendships are, are made, enemies um, <laughs> are reinforced. Well, I know uh, some people go to sport events, the track and field events, just for the 4x4. Just by for four. the 4x4. Four four. And, and that has really provided a crescendo and a, a, a sort of a climax to the events. And we can go back and call several 4x4 relays at different at levels. intercall level, at different levels. As we see the start here to the boys, 4x400 four meters open. Ace is expected to dominate that one with the likes of... Uh, uh, Michael Francois, Kieran Charles, uh, the athlete here would have broken the record in the 200 meters. That's Troy Mason and others. And we expect that this should be a very comfortable win for Ace Track Club in the 4x400 meters. Well, Ace holding his own own as they get to the, the 100 meter mark. It is Ace being stretched by South City Rising Star. So Sass away back. That's Troy Mason there. We saw him earlier on running a blistering uh, 21.07 seconds to establish a new record in the 200 meters. Getting some strong challenge here. And that looks now like uh, Adam Peters it is. Could be Adam Peters, yes. Adam Peters uh, for Ace. Uh, South City Rising Stars gave a good challenge here. But of course, it's the athlete out of Ace that is motoring away down the back stretch. And uh, certainly uh, for the final, motoring away down the back stretch in what is the final event of the day. The boys, four by 400 meters. Ace in, in, in pursuit is South City Rising Star. Can he pull back on the stagger? Oh, but of course, it is Ace as they continue to pull away, motoring away some 50, 60 meters or so as they make the final handover on the final event, on the final day of what has been 
uh, two great days of athletics pores inside of the national stadium ace being chased by south city rising star well it looks like michael franco here he already ran a 46 a low 46 in the flat 400 meters we still have not seen kieran charles yet so there should be another leg on this one kado but what a commanding lead here established by ace track club they have dominated this event at national champs for quite a while that's michael franco indeed he won the 400 meters and the 800 meters um, a national athlete has represented Grenada in several international meets and getting as far as the semi-finals and uh, handing over finally it's not Kieran Charles here for Ace but nonetheless Ace has a commanding lead maybe almost 200 meters as a fumbling the exchange here between the athletes from South City Rising Stars and then Sass also fumbling on the baton on the final handover. Well, but look at the lead established here by Ace, almost 100 meters. And it'll be interesting to see what time uh, they can return here. The game's record, 3 minutes, 15.3 seconds, established in 1998 in a combination between Boca and Tam CC. And let's see how this Ace team would respond to the record challenge here. Still has a lot of energy, is Ace, and really, really sprinting for that record time let's see what happens here a good run indeed by ace i'm gonna tell you what the time is momentarily the flash time was three minutes 16 seconds which is going to be outside of the record time but a very very strong run indeed by the athletes the quartet from ace the likes of troy mason adam peters michael francois and i'm sure in the back of their minds they had the record in contention we're going to give you the official time on this one, but a very, very impressive run by Ace. No disappointment at all in this one. In, in the, the race, there was a hype and the delivery. It all uh, literally crescendoed. And literally, as we expected, Leslie, you, you, you hinted it, you hinted to it quite nicely. And bringing the curtains down. And what has been two excellent days, two really, really excellent, phenomenal days of track and field inside of the um, Kirani James Athletic Stadium. Uh, congratulations to Ace. We still so the official time uh, for the boys 400 meters is 3 minutes 16.24 uh, for Ace. South City Rising Star 3 minutes. So sorry, Ace is 3 minutes 16.24 for South City Rising Star 3 minutes 26.31. Sass 3 minutes uh, 30.17 seconds and Walker 3 minutes 39.78 seconds. Leslie, two days. It has really, really, really been fun-filled, energetic, and we've come moving from what was an edited version last year coming out of COVID. We will return this year for the Ariza um, National Champs, and indeed, after two days, successful hosting of the event, no doubt, Leslie. Well, Kado, I've covered these games for several years, and I tell you one thing that I've noticed over the years, which was different this year, is that it was difficult to identify uh, a potentially good athlete who would be the next rising star. But I can tell you over the last two days, I've seen several of these athletes that have shown serious potential. And uh, some of them have gone on here to make the character standard, which is good. And some of them have established new records, especially in the... 20 plus category and we would like to highlight uh, highlight those as well um, obviously there's going to be the final medal presentation ceremony and and closing exercises but before we get into that i'd just like to highlight kado and maybe we can have a discussion on that some of the outstanding performances over the two days and i hope i've not missed out any of the major ones we saw for example in the boys 200 meters in the under 17 category um the character mark being 22 seconds Ethan Sam was able to do 21.71 seconds. Ethan Sam from the MVP Track Club. And he also did 10.70 seconds in the 100 meters. So a good two days for Ethan Sam and really living up to the expectations that most persons came here to see. Also doing well in the under 17 category was Tyrick McSween from the St. David's Track Blazers. He also qualified for the 200 meters in 21.99 seconds. Again, the qualifying mark here established by the GAA is 22 seconds. In the boys 400 meters in the under 20 category, that was a cracker yesterday. 
and as Conrad Francis was saying, we had about four athletes who ran sub-50, and the standout athlete there would have been Rickel Telemark, 46.97, Elisha Williams, who ran a 49 in the, in the under-17 cat, under category a couple of years ago. He had to settle for second running, 47 plus. Right. And uh, young Sylvester from SAS, also in the 48 year, picking up the bronze medal. But a very competitive set of athletes in the 400 meters. And Rickel Telemach from Fusion. In the girls 400 meters in the under 17 category, Shafonia Houston continued to do well. And although in the finals she did not go uh, better than the time she did in the preliminaries, she was able to do 56.43 and qualifying within the Carifta standard established, which is 56.50 seconds. Um, she was just off the mark in the 200 meters. And then we had the blister and run in the 800 meters, uh, the 20 plus, by Michael Francois, 1 minute 53.15 seconds, uh, a, a game's record, eclipsing the old mark of 1 minute 55.33 seconds and then we saw Troy Mason mm -hmm. again in the 200 meters 20 plus establishing a new record in 21.07 seconds and Elisha Williams qualifying for the character games in the 200, 200 meters on the 20 boys the event that had you on your feet downstairs uh, uh, Kado, running 21.29 seconds and what was interesting about that particular event is that Telemark, who won the 400 meter 400. event, was a sort of a favorite going into the 200 meters, and they really was out of gas towards the end. And coming off the bend, Elisha Williams was in the lead and was able to use his strength and raw talent and speed to maintain a lead over Telemark and run in 21.29 seconds. So these to me were the standout uh, performances. Indeed. Um, we saw some good relay events too, especially from MVP. Um, and in, in that under 20 girls category, uh, the 4 by 100 meters, I thought it was an, an impressive run as well. And all in all, I think these athletes here really stood out uh, amongst the others. And if we missed any, we, we do apologize to those athletes. But from my well, we own uh, 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 calculations and tabulations here, I think these athletes were, were the standout ones. We can't forget, though, and while it may, may not have necessarily been the two races that would have been top of, top of our list in terms of dynamic, dynamic excitement, we cannot lessly forget the 300 meters, the 3,000 meters on, this, on the 17 boys that was won by Richardson's from McDonald College. And certainly, uh, we say kudos and hats off to, uh, to Jacob. And for those of you who missed it because of the interruption in, in the feed on Facebook, yes, that the three, the 5,000 meters in the male division was won by Tyrone Jacob. Uh, yes, but I really, I would think if it were to punctuate the evening door, I mean, certainly Telemac, Elijah, excellent. Uh, the Shifana Houston, they were exempl exemplary, as you can expect. But certainly, if you ask me, though, the race that stands out in my mind is that of young Richardson. I mean, the way he executed what is, isn't a traditional favorite distance, the 3,000 meters. I say, while yet there is hope for a 400-meter quartet and the supporting cast of two, maybe as we look, as we look, as we look forward, with having four athletes that went sub-50, I'm probably thinking in years to come, maybe young Richardson can be the next bright prospect in those long distance races as he did. He wants emphatically that 3000 meters. Well, Cardo, I have to agree with you here that Yazid Richardson of McDonald College was very, very impressive. And uh, what impressed me most was not the race, but how comfortable and relaxed at he the was end. at the end of the race. Yes. He just strolled up the track as though he nothing. went to the shop, as I said, you know. <laughs> He must have and, uh, to the shop. he would have inherited a lot of that from his mom, Stephanie Ferguson, who is also viewing the, 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 the broadcast. And um, she must be a very proud mom here. Uh, and if the folks from McDonald College and St. Patrick on a whole must be very impressed with this young man. So it's a name that we're we going to track and we, we're going to look out for in years to come. Yazid Richardson, um, it's, it's a name to keep on the radar as well. A very impressive performance. But all in all, I thought it was two days of great competition. We were, we, 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 we want to apologize that there were no commentary on day one as we did today. 
And uh, for those of you who are out there or, or unable to come along to the stadium, we hope that we were able to bring um, the games as, as, as exciting as it was to you. Just we do point. apologize for uh, the inadvertent mistakes that we would have made with the names and the clubs. That, that, is, that is normal. We have changes in the races. Sometimes the uniforms get us all mixed up. And sometimes the paper before us does not call it as accurately as it is. So we do apologize for that. But nonetheless, we thank you for your comments, your feedback, and we're happy to bring it to you from TNR Communication. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a very short break and then we're going to come back with just some closing and wrap up uh, comments at uh, Arisa National Champs 2023. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smile so and the way you tell me, it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible. I can pack my sack. I can take the long road. Cause it's okay to look back if I am scared. I know you're there. Ooh. All right, sir. Together there's no limit. What we can do Arise uh, With no wings Fly Arise uh, And we're so high Enjoy the view Arise uh, Look no wings Fly This is Arise Your financial freedom Your future St. David's Track Blazers Kiel Batiste He scored a total of 4,186 points. Second position, Jordan Lewis, St. Andrews and Lincoln Secondary, 4,284 points. And winning, winning that event, representing the 473 MVP, Joshua Richards, 4,000. 822 points. Medal presentation for the 4 by 100 meters really open. Third position, finish line track club. Second position, South Rising Stars. And your winner represented the 473 NVP in a time of 48.98 40, seconds. The team NVP, your winners, the girls 4 by 100 meters, really open. Event 69, medal presentation for the boys, 4 by 100 meters, under 20. First po set third position, Boca secondary. Second position, rep representing the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School, Texas. And your winner. Represent the South City Rising Stars. The winners of the 4 by 100 meters, under 20. Medal presentation for the Heptathlon Girls Open. Heptathlon Girls Open, third position. Andy and Courtney, Boca Secondary. Somebody there. Somebody there. 
Second position, Brinell Thomas, South City Rising Stars. Somebody's there already. Somebody will collect it, somebody there. And the winning that event, amassing a total of 4,386 points. Alia Gidhari, St. David's Track Blazers. Medal presentation for the four by 100 meters really open. Female, the third position, finish line track club. Four by 400 meters open, finish line. Second position, South City Rising Stars. Second place in the four by 400 meters really open. And the winners of the 4 by 400 meter really open. 473 NVP. Medal presentation. The 4 by 400 meters really open. Third position, St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School. Second position, the South City Rising Stars. And the ultimate winners in the 4 by 400 meters open in three minutes. 16.24 seconds. The Ace Track Club. Medal presentation. 3,000 meters, boys under 17. Third position. Jordan Hazard, South City Rising Stars. 11 minutes, 12.94 seconds. Second position, Kyle Alexis, South City Rising Stars. 11 minutes, 5.15 seconds. And your winner from the McDonald College, Jarzid Richardson. 10 minutes, 5.42 seconds. Medal presentation. For the boys, 5,000 meter open. Third position. Representing South City Rising Stars, Shakim Williams. Second position, represented the East Track Club, Levon Thorne. 17 minutes, 1.73 seconds. And your winner, a special moment here for Levon to Tyrone Jacob, South City Rising Stars. 17 minutes, 81 seconds. We see a one 5,000 meter at the other. Let me get a photo of the three, the winners of the 5,000 meters on the podium along with Mr. Williams. Guys. The final medal presentation for event 70. Boys javelin throw open. Third position. Raven Telesford, St. David's Track Blazers. 
60.11 meters. Second position, Cameron Thomas, St. Davis Shark Blazers, 61.20 meters. And the winner, representing the St. Davis Shark Blazers, a throw of 80.92 meters. Mr. Anderson Peters, the winners for the javelin throw open. Thank you, Mr. Williams, for assisting with that medal presentation. In the meantime, we are seeing these winners, these winners to report, report to the center field. Sanjay Simon, Keshan Cobb, Leah Rose Charles, Jonathan Labari, Elijah Williams, Elijah Rose Giovanni Daniel, Killer Christopher, Ethan Augustine. Hosting Ethan Sam, Kamisha Dom, Rikail Telemach, Troy Mason. We also request Michael Francois and Rikail Telemach. Nathan Hille, Cameron Thomas. Nathan Hille, Cameron Thomas. Because all the athletes who broke records, the athletes who broke records, please report. Please report center field. Ariza wants to give you your prize monies one time. Sanjay Simon, Kishan Cobb, Leah Rose Charles, Jonathan Labari, Elijah Rose Benjamin, Javonic Daniel, Kayla Christopher, Ethan August, Shefana Hostin, um, Kamisha Dominic, Kyle Telemach, Troy Mason, Michael Fonsor, Port. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you'll be there. Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you share. It's a pleasure to present the divisional champions for this, the Arisa Credit Union National Championship.
A director, Miss Petlin Cooper. Director Riser Credition will do the first set of presentations. The honor nine female champion from the St. David's Track Blazers, Sanjay Simon. Sanjay Simon, the under nine champion. Congratulations, Sean, Sanjay. The under nine male, the under nine male athletes. Keshon Cobb. Keshon Cobb, finish line athletic. For Keshon. Thank you very much. Keshon will be. We move on. On the seat. The winner for the under 11 female category, under 11 female, Leah Rose Charles, St. George, South St. George Government School, Leah Rose Charles. The under 11 male, Jonathan Labari, finish line athletics. Fusion athletics, sorry, Jonathan Labari. Telemark will receive on his behalf. Thank you very much for assisting with the presentation. Mr. Kimani Cooper. Daniel, Mr. Kimani Daniel will assist in the presentation for the under 13 male and female. The under 13 female divisional champ Elijah Rose Benjamin, St. David's Track Blazers. Sanjay will collect on behalf of Elijah. The under 13 male from the St. David's RC School, Javonic Daniel. Number 13, male. M presentation, divisional champ. Under 15, female. Out of St. Davis Track Blazers, Kayla Christopher. Sanjay, Kayla. The under 15 male from the finish line athletic club, Ethan August. Ethan August from the finish line athletic club. <coughs> under 15 champion.
under, 50, under 17 female from the South City Rising Stars, Shefona Hosting. Divisional champ, Shefona Hosting. The under 17 male, Ethan Sam, 473 NVP. In the meantime, we're asking Michael Francois. The under 20 female champion. From the St. David's Track Blazers, Kamisha Dominic. Troy Mason. Troy Mason. The under 20 male divisional champ from Fusion Athletic Club, Rikhail Telemak. Twenty plus male category out of the eighth track club, Troy Mason. Thank you very much, Mr. Daniel, for assisting with those presentations. We have a special presentation for the most outstanding performance. And this, this award is sponsored by Digicel. The most outstanding junior performance. This presentation will be made by Mr. Conrad Francis, president of the Grenada Athletic Asso Association. Most outstanding junior performance. These athletes will be presented with a cell phone from Digicel. Rikhail Telemak, his 400 meter performance of 46.92 seconds. We're gonna do a Antwerp presentation and Digicel will do a more grand presentation later on. We also want to present for the most outstanding senior performance. Most outstanding senior performance in the 400 meter senior male race. Michael Francois, Ace Track Club, 46.3. Six seconds. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis. The ultimate presentation. This presentation will be done by Mr. Bob, Mr. Linda and Bob, the chairman of the Arisa Credit Union Board. The top three teams in third position, 
473 MVP, 94 points. Second position. Second position, South City Rising Stars, 130 points. And the top team in this year's 2023 Arisa National Championships, scoring a massive total of 166 points. St. David's Track Blazers. Top team at the RIS, uh, Credit Union National. <laughs> St. David Shark Blazers, 166 points. Bob, right? Thank you very much, Mr. Bob, for assisting with that presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you. The General Secretary of the Grenada Athletic Association, Ms. Desiree Stephen, will do the vote of tax. Good night, everyone. On behalf of the Grenada Athletics Association, I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank God for allowing us to have this meet over two days for the first time in a number of years and to ensure that the activity was injury-free. To our title sponsor, Ariza, I want to thank you for once again coming on board and sponsoring this meeting. So we're going to be putting a wrap on the two days of exciting athletic competition here at the Ariza National Championship. Joseph Cado, Leslie Smith, um, it has been an exciting two days, Joseph. Indeed. We saw some... Um, very competitive races, exciting performances, outstanding performances, record-breaking performances as well. And towards the end, the individual champions in the various categories were awarded. Some special awards to Rickel Telemark, Michael Francois, and uh, Troy Mason, uh, and quite deserving as well. But your thoughts on the two days and your, your final comments as we put a wrap on things. I think overall it's been two successful days. Um, a successful Arisa as the title sponsor, success for all the other commercial partners that has been part of this great exercise, uh, success for the Greater Athletics Association and all its supporting arms, a success for track and field on the whole, and um, the fact that we've come from a post-COVID period, um, we moved from, from an edited version last year when it was just one day to 2023 where we can have, we've had two successful days great conditions the heavens smiled on us no doubt and we're able to be here we see some really outstanding performances individual performances and um, team performances from track blazers and certainly some standout breakout performances from a number of athletes i think it, it augurs well for athletics it augurs well for the sport and i think certainly it sets up a quite a mouth watering anticipation for the next event, major event on our sporting calendar, that of Intercall and by extension, character, Leslie. Well, in my own estimation, I think we had two very, very good days of track and field. The future looks very promising for these youngsters. Mm -hmm. We saw some indeed brilliant performances and we highlighted them. And I think we in the right space and the right path at the moment. So on behalf of the entire broadcast team here at the Grenada National Stadium, uh, our camera crew, Cullen Dragon and Reggie Joseph, the streaming and audio man, Nazim Benjamin, the technical director, Blondel George, and of course, our executive producer, Richie Olivier. We say thank you for joining us and being part of this uh, very interesting and exciting broadcast. Mm -hmm. We encourage you to stay tuned to the Facebook and YouTube pages of TNR Communications. There are going to be lots more exciting track and field events throughout the season. The National Primary School Championships is the next one up on the lineup. Yes. And then uh, the much anticipated Intercall Games 2023 as well is going to be happening. And on, on the pay-per-view stream, so remember it's tizik.com and there are some exciting packages there that we encourage you to subscribe to for Intercall Games 2023. So on behalf of us all here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium, we say thank you for viewing and so long on behalf of Joseph Cador 
I'm Les Dismissin. Thank you and see you again next year right here at the Kiryani James Athletic Stadium. So long, everybody. The reason for your happiness, peace of mind, and smile. The caring companion that supports you with your goals. Your ally in the fulfillment of your dreams. Think of us as someone you share your life with. Your friend Ami, a Ryza mobile and internet experience, keeping you in touch and in the know on your journey to financial freedom. A Ryza Credit Union, your financial freedom, your future. The safety and security of your information is always important to us. Ariza now offers chip cards, also known as EMV cards, which provide enhanced security for your purchases and are globally accepted. The new Ariza Credit Union Visa International Debit Card continues to have the traditional magnetic stripe with the additional security feature of a chip and can now be used at both chip and traditional magnetic stripe terminals. For your added protection, always keep your PIN private and store your chip card safely in a RFID pouch. Visit arisacu.com to learn more on how to protect your account information. Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future. When I need shelter, warmth, security, I know you Something in these moments lets me know you care. Maybe the way you shield me, maybe it's your smiles, and the way you tell me it's okay to try. Now I'm invincible, I can pack my sack, I can take the long road, cause it's okay to look back. This is Ariza, your financial freedom, your future. Transform your life with Ariza's suite of loan products. Own your own vehicle, education, land, or home and anchor your roots. Start living the life you deserve by applying for an own-your-own loan at reduced interest rates. Simplify your life and consolidate all your debts by applying for a Simplify loan and open doors to new beginnings and explore more opportunities to shape your future. Call or send us a WhatsApp on 423-4987 or email us at loans at arisecu.com today to continue your journey towards financial freedom. Terms and conditions apply. Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom. Your future.